Woohoo! I realize, uh... Oh yeah, we've got our Halloween outfits on. Let's just... It's, it's close enough, right? It's close enough. It's close, close enough. enough. Close enough. I need to make the new one. I'm not in a Halloween outfit. I am sitting in a pumpkin. That is just a I'm general, just a vampire. Like, that's just... Just a fall-ish sort of gourd slash squash. Is it because like, you've fallen into a pumpkin? Uh, I climbed in here of my own free about it. will. Yeah. You look pretty chill and happy about I'm it. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. It's a, it's a nice place. And plus, if I'm ever, if someone ever, if, for instance, Mahler comes up to me in my pumpkin and says, Rags, I need you to watch two episodes of She-Hulk for the stream tomorrow, then I can just duck down in my little... My little pumpkin hat becomes a lid, and then I can just retreat from the natural world with just my little feet and my tail sticking out, and that's it. I can just stay in my safety pumpkin, and I don't have to watch She-Hulk anymore. And yet, you didn't do that this time. You actually watched the episodes. I actually, I watched them today. Oof. I, I put them off to the last moment. I was, I was like wrapping them up. When you had messaged and said, hey, we need to do an hour late. Like, I was, I really don't want to watch this show. It's really I bad. was also uh, leaving it because I only watched it yesterday, like, <laughs> evening. I, which I think a new episode comes out today, so. Like, I, yeah, it yeah I, I am equally one to, I think I watch them when they come out. And then I'm like, I do the nota notation part and I'm like, I'll leave that until real close to the actual time we're covering them. So that it's all fresh. It's not at all because I'm trying to avoid looking at them. That's not it. Why would you say that? Um, but yeah, we're live. Everyone can see us. The, the, the chat's doing great. We've got lots of bread memes already. I know exactly what that is now. I'm not confused anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you still do it, that by the way. Sorry. Right. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Every just about every show. There, there've been one or two that I've missed because you know you get a guest who's like, well, maybe we shouldn't do this one. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, this is like do it on. It's just too far out of their wheelhouse that you'll scare them off, sort of thing. Is it? Red yeah, is nice. I've, I've... I I ask them. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, do you want to do you want to do this bit? Like, it's highly offensive, but it's really funny for me. I don't know if it's funny at all, but it's I I crack up, and uh, most people say yeah. I'm always surprised. <laughs> like, why would you want to read this book? <laughs> <laughs> just you know, it's just how things go. I guess it's different different ways to swing in different parts of the internet. Obviously, we have uh, had an an, uh, an old man read out uh, essentially porn before several times on on the show, so we can relate to strange things happening. Uh, it's virtu It was virtually porn, yes. Yes. Um. Which, by the way, rags. I'm still waiting for when Jay Longbone comes for us about that third movie. It's gonna happen. Can you believe they made a third movie? Maybe they made all of them at once, like a Lord of the Rings, and then oh yeah, they, they just. They could have made them all consecutively. Peter Jackson. Wait, what movie? Porn. Yeah. Uh, it's called 365 Days, I think. Oh, yeah. I wanted to watch those because, like, they're. Oh, the, the critic rating is like zero, but the, the audience rating sounded like 100%. <laughs> That's because very In horny films. ladies with really, really, really bad Isn't taste. The like initial that. plot line is like a guy kidnaps a girl and says, yeah. "Like I'm gonna have you be my like girlfriend against your will for a whole year, and then I'll give you the chance to leave, but you won't want to because you'll love me by then." <laughs> it's like <laughs> she's wow. essentially kidnapped and coerced by a very rich, I suppose, very conventionally attractive Italian mobster man. Yes. Yeah. Who doesn't want to have that happen? Yeah, so that's that's I've had that happen. That's a lot of people's fetish as it turns. It's a that's a, a lot of ladies have that as a fetish. Well, yeah, they made three of these movies. <laughs> they made three. <laughs> Wicked, yes. I guess. Absolutely. By the way, mm -hmm. real just not at all my thing. There's none of that. I I could identify it for what it was. Didn't do a goddamn thing for me. And yet, oh, I'm I'm gonna watch the them. The sex scenes were just like awkward and just so. I don't know. I they they was they were so unimpressive. Though I've said this before, but we were like, I want to know what happens next. I don't care about the porn part. Come on, let's go on with the plot. <laughs> like legitimately, yeah. like what happens to the mobsters? Like, 
Oh man, that sounds like uh, they created a compelling story right there. They've they, no. they got you. They hooked in. Oh, and you're absolutely the porn part not. is that bad. Oh. <laughs> the porn parts are just scattered in there. Sometimes with very odd distribution. Mm -hmm. So you'll have like a bunch, and then there will be a huge stretch where there isn't anything, and it'll just be done. I I don't know the the decision because you, you would think that if you're making a porn movie then or a movie with porn in it that you would distribute the porn in a way that keeps people interested and invested you don't go very long stretches without any pornographic content in it because people might lose interest and they might right. think why am i here you know i mean i know why i'm here but now that they're not showing the porn why did i do there's porn on the internet why did i come here in the first place i need oh, to well. rethink my life you have to rethink being friends with Jay Longbone, right? That's that's our that was our fault. Absolutely, we yeah, reward her over. with films like Final Destination, and she she gives that back. And it's like, okay, well, you know, well, friendship. She is did. Weird, I guess. She's the one who recommended Karen, though. So, oh yeah, she gets ten billion yeah, points. She for did that. get. You get a lot of you get a lot of Some all the good goodwill, faith yeah. that you had built up with Karen. It's fucking gone. Which, by the way, good old EFAP chat. You got three days. Uh, oh, and you'll see. You're gonna be oh. seeing Karen Eve movies. So excited. that's how we're opening her Halloween up. Is gonna be Karen. <laughs> this is the kind of like the kind of porn where it's like, oh, your cock is so big, put it in me, and you're like, oh, Clip that's it. just it's so clinical and just uh, that's so uh, so conventional. Even Karen, I was like, Rex, that wasn't a porn. That was just no bad. Karen wanted the the BBC. Yes. Uh, I think that was an angle they were going with. I'm, it's going to be fun watching that over because it has actually been a year since we saw it. Uh, it has. That's amazing. We're different. The movie. Now. Wait, the movie Karen. Yeah, because yeah. we, we're doing this that's crazy the... thing now where like we we record all of our Halloween content a year before it comes out every year. We're actually recording our new sets already. They're already going well, aren't they? Rags and fringy, don't you think? I think so. They're going along pretty well. Yeah, I'd say they're coming along pretty uh, well. This be set of films to, to go through. And all of you uh, can get as to what year. it may be. But it is a yeah. horror franchise. It's all spook spooktacular. It was very spooky. Um, but yeah, hi everyone. This is EFAP. Which one is it? 206. Jesus. Hello everyone. Just keeps I didn't on going. want to start our She-Hulk discussion with talking about porno but here we are here we are yeah it happens life takes you places um we uh we f we have a very very special guest today and i say that earnestly because i believe you're one of the oldest and most consistently requested guests ever we just never got around to it because the the, the big time to have brought you on was when we covered uh captain marvel and it was um it was legal eagles video where he defended her oh when uh, <laughs> hey Rags, you remember that? That was that was like three yeah. years ago. <laughs> Listen, it's okay to assault this man and break his body. He did touch your map, and mm -hmm. you are indestructible. So you know, if you weigh these things together, justice is in your favor. And, and you go, didn't she girl. also steal his jacket and his motorcycle? Yes, or yeah, something. She coerced him into <laughs> yes. She, she under pain of you will lose. I will destroy your body. If you do not give me these things, and uh, and he was and like, well, to be fair, he, he assaulted her, and that is something you could argue because he touched her map, and it's just like, wow, what a great guy yeah. you are. <laughs> you now, if we think the like a lawyer, an indestructable woman, <laughs> she <laughs> was fun with proportional actually, force of yeah, extreme that's violence, because um, like, does it even qualify as an assault when she's invulnerable at that point? <laughs> uh, possibly, I don't know, like, but oof. Maybe like harassment or something, like when you annoy someone. Yeah, so it it is technically any unwanted touch is technically a battery, but like there's there's sort of a a lunacy aspect to it where courts are like, come on now, like you you touch someone on the shoulder in an inoffensive way and they they react in an unreasonable sort of response to it, like that's not. You're not going to get charged with battery at that point. It doesn't justify physical violence. If no. someone brushes you in the mall, like while they're walking <laughs> past, and you walk battery. up and just kick them in the groin, the sentence is death. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys only um, if, it's, if it's a woman? If you yeah, you better watch out. Those lady shoulders, especially with those suit 
jacket things they wear that are horrifically unattractive with the big pointy shoulders. Oh, oh yeah, they can oh, kill people with those. That's, yeah, or that's poke how they. Eyes out. That's why they wear them. They wear yeah. them so they stick out further to to get you to battery them. Uh, have you yeah. guys seen those I've got clips? This all figured out. Because uh, I know that none of us would watch sport. <laughs> no, but like, have you ever seen those clips where the, the footballers, like someone will walk past one of them or do literally not even touch them and they will notice it as like a, a form of, ooh, and then just fall over and start yelling really loud. Go, ah, I'm, I'm broken. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, oh, yeah. There's, there's players are infamous for their acting and pussiness. There's montages yeah. where, like, yeah. <laughs> didn't even touch him. And the, uh, the best part is that little split second where they're like, am I going to? Yeah, okay, I'm doing it. <laughs> just yeah, they, start like, rolling they look down, look back up, like, ooh, this is a chance. Bye, bye, Bill. I cannot believe you would talk about the 2006 World Cup champion Italy that way. I mean, mm. very, very rude of you. <laughs> I've seen so many of them. They're so funny. And it always used to be weird because oh, like, really I watched more rugby than I did football back in the day. And rugby players just uh, a lot less common, that is, because rugby players would actually be damaged significantly, like regularly. And then they'd just be like, okay, I want to, like blood is gushing from their skull. And they're just like, all right, I want to go next. Come on, come on. Like, ne next ball. Let's Have go. Have you seen, uh, there's this one where it's like two guys. I don't know if, I don't know who it was. Like, I think it was like a manager or like a coach and a player. They like came real Born close, me. and then they both sort of tapped their foreheads, <laughs> yeah. and then they both they both decided, you know what, I'm gonna milk this for everything. Yeah. This for oh everything my god, I this can. is a porno. Oh no. No, they just <laughs> both can't describe this. No, in front of stop all these it. people, stop. That's, they got that's, in close that's more, together that's and more, milked that's, each that's, other that's, for all they could. That's more your problem than mine, Rags. Okay. True. Um, this is madness. I'm pretty sure rugby. I know what clip you're talking about, where they yeah, it's they, like they, they, they're getting closer and closer and closer because it looks like yeah. there's about an inch or half an inch between them, and then they both go, ah, oh, yeah. oh, I'm dead now. Exactly, oh, geez, both, you killed me. <laughs> what is the, what is that good called then, when man. they? I I can't believe I've forgotten the name of what it is when football players specifically pretend that they've been injured. What's that called? Um, were you uh, going like feigning an injury or? I can believe it's, it has a specific, specific name word. because of how often it's, they do it. It's a flopping? flop. Yeah, yeah that, flop. that's what that's I've always right. heard it. Flopping? Yeah. Or, a, or a dive, yeah, taking Look, a dive. The, the flopping happens when you're done milking each other. That's, that's what happens there. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, these sports terms. You know, this is an inappropriate right. relationship between a manager and a player. The diving <laughs> and flopping until... I guess it's two just... Healthy, um, strong, young players. Now, I don't doubt that people get injured playing football. Um, I just, it's just that the, the, um, the reactions that you see for these fake ones. They're hilarious. Like, compared to what tends to happen when somebody sustains a serious injury in another sport, like in AFL or in, yeah, in, in rugby. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah. When they're rolling around on the floor, flailing, kicking, and screaming. Because, like, I don't know, they hurt their leg. <laughs> it's just, strategically, it's just a really good move if it results in getting rid of an enemy player, right? It's just like, oh, sure. fuck, we're ensuring our victory now. But it's also like, yeah, but you but look I like mean, a complete cock. It's like, yeah. And especially <laughs> now with our video, you know, with all of the cameras that are recording everything, like, yeah. you can't fake it. Like, when there's... An, it probably <laughs> the, should be, like, gum, if, there's try. if there's no contact, you should probably just be banned forever. <laughs> like, I don't think that should be tolerated. Well, yeah, like, because it's, it's, I... So Everyone knows what you're trying to do, and it's really fucked up what you're trying to do, you know? I yeah. think, so, to offer a mild apology as a, as a former shitty soccer player, since we're in America, uh, soccer is the name, but um, the one thing I'll say is when you're running and someone does, like, clip your leg, and you're, you're like, full-out sprinting, and then you, your leg hits the other one, you fall, and you reflexively grab like your ankle is broken because you think it might be. And then you figure out like 10 seconds later, it's like, oh, actually, no, I'm okay. And you get up and run like that. That kind of happens. But the, they, they do like milk it quite a bit more these days, especially. Yeah, it's the yeah. strategic play. Get, get a yellow card, get a free kick. And, uh, and, and then, you know, maybe that's a scoring opportunity. But, but there is that like brief second when you get absolutely taken out and you're like, oh, shit, I'm dead. Like my leg is broken. And then you're like, oh, no, nope. It just hurt for two seconds. I'm good now. Uh, but it's <laughs> yeah. That's I can imagine that there are times where it's like, oh, did I actually? Oh no, okay, I'm all right. I guess there's a difference between that and then like 
the 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 one second hesitation <laughs> where they're like yeah. am i gonna do it am i not gonna okay no i'm doing it and then as soon as they do it it's like well i have to commit now i'm in too deep i've decided i've made this choice i have to follow through i'm oh, amused there, there's one clip there's one clip where a guy he walks by another guy doesn't even touch him like they're not even close and the the guy he walks by just grabs his face and goes, ah, oh, and falls over like yeah. he got punched. Oh, and it's extreme. like, come on, man. <laughs> there are really we, funny ones for this. Like, they just hope, they just hope the cameras didn't catch it, I guess. Like, yeah. Uh, I think one of the ones I really, oh, damn, now I'm thinking of two I really like. There was one where the guy pretended like he got tripped over and was rolling around, but because nobody was paying attention, he just immediately jumped back up and started playing again. Yeah. Like, as if not. <laughs> Because it was like, oh, this isn't working. I better like you actually know, play this game. You know what it reminds me of is if a yeah. child is like crying and the parents know that it's not for real, they just want attention. They just they carry on the party. Everyone carries on. The kid eventually just goes, oh fuck, okay, <laughs> like I'll, yeah, I'll just rejoin. Just give up on it. Yeah, I think the yes. second one I saw was a guy who was um maybe like a good one or two feet away from somebody behind him. And he just, like, fell over. They were chasing the ball, and he just, like, fell over as if he'd been struck, like, from behind. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he was. You know, some guy, a visible guy, maybe. a ghost. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what, ghost. wasn't that the, the Sixth Man or whatever, that shitty basketball movie with the, the kid's brother died and would help out on the basketball court oh, as Air a ghost? <laughs> I think I've seen that. No, there, the dog has to replace the dead brother. Well, there was that. There was another one, though. I think it's called The Sixth Man, where, yeah, the, the one player dies, but then he comes back as a ghost and, like, helps out on the court. It's, oh, it's so I funny. feel like that's very unethical. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this How is very unethical to have, to have Matt, spectral assistance during your basketball game. Yeah, the, yeah the, chat, the chat knows. Marlon Wayans, The Sixth Man. Yeah, that's the, that's the one. I know that actor. When was he in stuff? Like, it's been ages. Still doing uh, he was in... He was in White Chicks and all the scary... They, didn't they just do a scary movie, Six? Did they? Did they? I didn't know I, that. Did I, they? I figured scary movie had just stopped outright, but that's interesting. I, th I think it had. Let me check. I think I just saw a scary movie, Six. Uh, it's got a trailer coming out. Well, or it's got a trailer you know? out. I think. Our, or maybe wait, Wikipedia a... says the last one is five from 2013, but maybe they're making a new one. Maybe. Maybe it's maybe it's just a lie. Uh maybe scary it's movie just no, it's a lie. Scary movie six, twenty twenty two, uh on Chloe Moritz, Finn Wolfhard, Kiki Palmer, Casey Simpson. Wow. Anna Don't Ferris, Sean Wayans, Marlon Wayans. Do oh, so they're really trying to like revitalize it kinda of then with all those actors. Good for them. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's pretty scary cool. Scary movie one and three. I liked them. Ones, they're the ones I. Liked. Good luck. Before we, before we move on, I just like to point out that Mahler, when you, you, when you mentioned rugby, my mind instantly went to the little robots that scoot around on the floor and clean. <laughs> I was thinking, oh Roombas. Oh, and yeah, exactly. I thought when you said rugby, that's what you meant because I now, just hear the word rugby and I think of Roombas. Now that I've connected, I think rugby them. is a fan. That's a fine thing to call them if you were to, if you were to call them rugbies. Yeah, I think that like would work. the little because they're they're like on the rugs and they're like little bees. They just go around working, you know, all day. They're little rugbies. Now that you've and said you could that, paint them in yellow and I'm a little robots. We've been talking about sport. How could we not mention? Um, I, wait, is it, is it just different names for, uh, cause it's Robot Wars over here, but for you guys it was something else, right? Well, we have, we have Battle Bots, yeah. and there's Robot Wars, yeah. And then there was American that movie, one British one. that movie Real, Real Steel? Steel <laughs> with, uh, That's not quite yeah. the same oh, yeah. thing. Dude, Jackman, the robots that box each other. Dude, I always Rock thought- Rockham Robots. But do you guys, uh, did you guys ever watch the, the actual, like, Robot Jocks back from the 80s? Robot Jocks and Robot Wars? I've seen clips uh, of it, I never watched Robot Jocks. I think though. I've seen, I've seen clips, but I have not seen the movie. I used to Robot love Jocks, watching it's a, it's Robot Wars. It's a masterpiece. We, we talk, we talk about this, like, once every so often, but, um, I just, my, like, my favorite was Hypnodisc. Fucking legendary robot. It just spun a huge disc and just tore things apart. And then it was like the most interesting way to win too, because you just see robots getting gradually like they're losing health until they stop versus the flipper robots that just flip and then it's over. And you're like, oh, 
Okay. The um, do you remember the episode of The Simpsons when Homer pretended to be like a robot and then fought actual robots? Do you remember that one? Is that that sounds extremely dangerous? It that was like a battle. Why? It was. It was I think it was a parody of those like BattleBot shows where uh, like Bart wanted to create one, so Homer just made a robot, but it was just him inside of it, and he fought <laughs> all of these robots. But like the injuries he was sustaining were insane, <laughs> like fighting them with buzz saws and. I think, look, yeah, it was, it was, that was a funny episode. Hmm. I figured I would just front load my Simpsons reference for this episode. Oh, we got to talk about, yeah, you're right. You did mention this before we went live and I realized like, oh yeah, some people are going to ask about it. We should probably do it. So it has been announced very, very recently that Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is returning mm -hmm. and it's going to be in, in Deadpool, Deadpool 3, 3, which is going to Marvel be in the Studios. MCU. Yeah. So. Why? We can... <laughs> Because it makes money. Because it makes money. So the the it's less the Logan less Ash. cynical. Oh, go go ahead. I was just gonna say that the less cynical way to look at it is like, man, Deadpool and Wolverine teaming up. That sounds pretty great. But then the more cynical part is, ah, uh, yeah, money. <laughs> like, yep. Yeah, a I lot mean, of you know, money it's... to be made from that. I think everyone Logan knows. was such a good capstone for it, in my opinion. I, I liked Logan a lot, and I, I don't ever want to see Wolverine again. So there's a lot of arguments right now about that, and it's like, I think even the creators are like, we're not touching that timeline. Different universe. Mm -hmm. So Because the X-Men universe itself is already very confusing. The thing is, like, what even, like, I, I, I don't mean to shit on Logan, but where did it even sit timeline-wise? A little bit confusing when you try and put all of the... Because, right? like, I think one X-Men 1, 2, and 3 were considered part of Logan's history, right? I, I don't know, because <laughs> I'm pretty it, sure that... It exists I'm, I'm pretty outside sure. of all time. <laughs> I think, because I think, I think it took parts... Future past, I think is, uh, yeah, I think what they wanted to do was selectively pick the parts they wanted to keep and then get rid of the parts that they didn't want after Days of Future Past, but, like, I don't know how that works now, though, with, like, Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix, which are, like, meant to be in the same timeline as Deadpool, I think, and Logan, but, like, I just don't see that reconciling. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> I don't know what the timeline is anymore. Yeah, um, so a lot of people are like, damn you, you gave him a really great... Uh, and, and I think some people were kind of expecting, like, let's do it, let's recast him, and let's see what we can do. Get, and everyone keeps talking about getting a short guy, because um, uh, that's one of the complaints people had when they first cast Hugh Jackman, but then everyone was like, actually, I really like him. <laughs> Even if he is tall, who cares? Uh, but, you know, gosh, he, he, can, he can probably put bums in seats, as, as they may have said. So. And, I mean, they have to do something, yeah. If Hugh Jackman's on board, it's like, yeah, why wouldn't they? What is going to stop them? And the idea that it's like, well, you know, story integrity. Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, good old and Professor I mean, X. He, he uh, Patrick Stewart said he wouldn't be coming back as Professor X either after Logan. And it's like, yeah. well, well, I guess truly he is, is Professor are, X. I mean, compared yeah. to what they did with him, it's like, surely it would be, well, more screen time. But, you know... I uh I don't what's what's everybody's opinions on the Deadpool movies here? I like them. Yeah, they're fun. I don't know that I'm gonna like Disney's. Um I well that so that's the thing. I like the first two Deadpool movies a lot. I actually really like those films. Um but now yeah, it's Deadpool 3, many years later, under yeah. Marvel Studios. But I'm pretty sure that um like the product, like the production side of those first two movies is tied up in it heavily. Like even though it is Marvel Studios, it's not just Marvel Studios. It'll be like Ryan Reynolds' production company, like other producers, and maybe that means something in terms of like preserving something that existed before. Um, the, I don't know. The, De Deadpool reminds me a lot of Guardians of the Galaxy, and like these. They were not great movies. They were fine, right? But they they were fun. Like they nailed the comic book sort of feel to to each of those franchises and I liked that a lot about them. The thing they've got if Deadpool's going to be Disney down though to PG-13 and be completely oh. it'll it will it will suck. Like Well, yeah, I was going to say they'll sap the R rating and the fun out of it, which are two 
well, they only have individual um, elements that they managed to marry pretty well in those and, films. And Logan think, was yeah. also rated R and extremely violent and gritty. And yeah. it's like, okay, you can you can translate these two R-rated franchises. You know they'll sell tickets. You know they'll sell DVDs. So just keep it rated R, please, Disney. For the love of all, make something useful in your life. That would be great, well, but they won't. <laughs> Deadpool kind of existed, the first one existed at a kind of interesting time. It, it's sort of a, I think that was a film that everybody sort of could recognize as like, you kind of exist out of like the, the uh, I guess the established formula and mold of these, um, of these other films that are happening. Uh, like maybe that's even a benefit of not being part, like that if you were in the MCU, it never would have happened like this. Like, the fact that you were with a different studio at a different time and got to be, like, totally separate from everything was a benefit. But what does it look like when you have that and you now want to integrate it into the sludge pipe? What are you going to lose? Because you're probably going to lose something. I don't know what you're going to gain from this, you know? Except for maybe access to more IPs, but, like, what good is that if it gets sanitized and watered down and stripped of uh, its identity, which is yeah, a real possibility. A lot of people are saying Ryan Reynolds would never let it go below an R rating, and it's like, well, just what are the scenario where Disney are like, either make it below R, or you're not getting a Deadpool three. Simple as yeah, that. Yeah, what happens there? And it's like, surely you you'd understand as well as everybody else. Well, as Ryan Reynolds, like, maybe it's better that we get it than not getting it uh, uh, with an R rating. It's like, yeah, good mm -hmm. luck with that, because um. They've gone back on R rating things before, right? They've said that they will, and then they didn't, or at least um, wasn't there wasn't there weird about Doctor Strange two being uh, a horror movie with much more uh, overt violence at one point? I think the more I think a recent one is you know that like Werewolf by Night special thing that they're doing. I've heard the of one that, yeah. that Michael Giacchino is directing. Apparently, they thought that was going to be R, but it's not. Mm. Um, uh, though I think the argument they cited is oh, black and white helps or something. It's like oh, okay. Like, I'm curious. And I think Very there was also scary. um Thor Love and Thunder, Christian Bale was meant to have a there was a deleted scene that would have been R rated, but it got Damn. cut. And yeah, Doctor Strange as well. There was that One video scene? that got like there was a fight it's scene just... with Wanda with like decapitated Kamataj, Sorcerer, but that got cut. Yeah. Like they could say it's gonna be R, but that doesn't really mean anything until like the film things change. You can intend for something to be R and or like PG thirteen and then it changes depending on the production. The the reality yeah. is that, like it is a Marvel Studios film and there is a brand there in the same way that like Disney is a brand and there are expectations there. And I don't know how much like general audiences are gonna be reset I, I don't know. Like there's probably a lot that goes With into making these decisions. keeping in mind that I love Logan being free to be in an R, R rated thing, uh, the character I mean. But uh, you know, they They've got a guy who they're hoping probably to... They're going to package him back into PG-13 if we're not lucky. And they know uh, that like he can sell... He, he, he's, he, he like, you know, un, almost unfortunately became so popular that he overshadowed all the other characters in the, uh, <laughs> the X-Men original trilogy and then got himself his own trilogy, you know, to, to, to varying successes. Um, and so it could be that again, right? Like, the idea... What, what I'm saying is, like, if Disney were like, oh, yeah, Ryan, you can make it R-rated, that's fine. Without some bean counters being like, uh, I don't think so. We should be, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, we should be using this opportunity. Yeah, you know, it's, it's marketed as violent, but we'll just... We'll do the, the PG-13 violence. Where maybe we'll blow up some aliens. We can blow up some robots and aliens. Yeah, the what's not red, right? Yeah, fuck them up. We'll have, yeah, we'll have Logan <laughs> chop a robot and aliens in half, and blue blood and oil will go everywhere. Good enough. Can we just get rid of the MPAA by now, though? Like, what, what the hell purpose do they even serve? The ratings are, they're still inconsistent. I'm still confused as to what constitutes our ratings. And then, of course, like, the, the only useful thing they've done uh, in, in recent memory is they they gave Blonde an NC-17 rating, and that makes me want to see it. Like, that's the only thing, though. Everything else about the MPAA can lick my nuts. I'm so fucking tired of them. That is a very R-rated like, comment. <laughs> I, that's true. I've always been curious if it's really robotic or not, or do they just sort of wing it when they're watching? Like, or do they have, like, a big checklist? Well, I think that there are certain rules, right? So PG-13 film, you can say fuck once, but no, lo yeah. no more than that. And there's, like, Get certain... Get your one fuck, women. that's right. Yeah, pretty much. Um, which a lot of don't Marvel movies it. don't even use. They don't use them at all. I, I'm pretty no. sure there's no Marvel movie. And I think because um, there's different ones as well. Like I think Disney has its own internal like rules, like no smoking or anything. I think I'm not sure. 
I, I, I don't smoking's know. Like some just, companies have their own rules as well. Smoking's just been obliterated from film when and, they, um, uh, and games. There's the, 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 the everything yeah. kind of. Um, do you guys remember there was a controversy? There's been a couple of these, but I remember uh, Graves had his uh, cigar removed in League of Legends and. Players were incredibly upset. They're like, wow. give, him, give him the fucking cigar back. <laughs> like, um, McCree one, kept his cigar. Think, uh, Don't in touch Australia, cigar. the uh, the classic. Or they renamed him Johnny like, Cowboy or something. What's that? Like, what a, they renamed him Cole Cassidy, I think. Right, McCree. Cole oh, Cassidy. Overwatch Two is coming out in like a week, isn't it? It's coming out like real soon, and nobody cares. Oh, yeah, that's right. That game I'm never gonna play is gonna come out soon. Yeah. What happened? Remember what happened? Because Overwatch Blizzard's was like, fucking shit. Yeah, Blizzard's right, terrible and they can't right. do anything good. They're still hobbling along, aren't they, Blizzard? <laughs> I think, um, yeah, they are, I guess, right? Like, I, well, I, they, yeah, I remember Diablo, I Diablo that, uh, Immortal, Diablo. and Overwatch 2. You know, you said, uh, I saw, I remember I saw on a bus a Diablo Immortal post. I was like, oh, yeah, Diablo Immortal. <laughs> I, I mean, everyone's favorite. Yeah, no. Everybody's like it it's it's easy to make fun of, but the the fucking unfortunate reality is you know that game makes them more money than anything else that they make by a long yeah, shot. Probably. Like yeah, it is yeah, a lot of people who will just throw money at it to see those numbers well, go up. I think um something that I find pretty uh frustrating about the way that this topic is discussed is I think some people may well have come to the erroneous conclusion that like single player games like God of War make more money than live service games like like not um, even like it's not even, not even close. close no it's it's um it's the reality is that live service games are pretty incredible from a profit standpoint if you can get a successful one perpetual income huge profit margins because it's digital assets so you, like that's like a 100% profit margin more or less you know Artificial it's about as close to that, that as you can control get. exactly you control the you decide what's legendary, you decide what's rare, you get to control that, and you have a monopoly in-game. There's nowhere else that you can go. It's all an in-game system. And, um, I, I don't know why I've forgotten about the other one. <laughs> I, oh, well, the, I, uh, the other one, the most important one, in all honesty, is that since it's a mobile game especially, um, women play. Like, women yeah, play yeah, yeah. Like unreasonably a broad, a higher market. numbers. Yeah, mobile market's filled with the uh, women players, right? Don't they dominate? They do play an unreasonable amount more, of time for women. More so than more so than male players on mobile. Yeah, I think that the split is uh different. Because like if you look they at dump I guess, money like, into it like DSP, also, it's a lot of money, like a lot said, of money to be made from individuals. Someone in chat said it, and I'm inclined to agree. I don't really catch many people, if any, saying. You know, God of War is is proof that you don't need the live servicey type games. However, even I've been caught saying you don't have to do live servicey. God of War sells, and it's like, first of all, God of War is like pretty unique. There's not many of those where it's like, no, God of War like very deliberately cuts itself off from your ability to pay for more things. It's like, nope, you've paid, you've got it, that's it, that's we're done. Like, not many games do that because it's like, um. That's their job right now, game companies. They're like trying to find a way to be socially acceptable, but also make more money. And it's just like you could take this route. It's not gonna end well. And we saw a couple of years back what happened when they overreached the Battlefront Two, right? That was when they were like, yeah. "Oh shit!" And it's like pull back, pull back, pull back. And we for at least a couple of years, I'm not sure if it's still happening, where they would market it as being like no microtransactions in this. That was like a thing of being like check out our game. I don't know if they're still doing that now though. I don't now think it's like, it nah, now they're now they all they learned from Battlefront 2 was you can't sell power to Western yeah, audiences. Yeah, you sell cosmetics. If you, you sell, sell cosmetics, cosmetics and battle you can, passes, dude, you can even you can Ooh. sell those, and you just gotta get the price right. You can't do it for as much as they did. Um, I think you can even still sell like, hey, just plus one damage. How about that? Yeah, just license right. <sighs> so so <laughs> now that gaming's dead, <laughs> now that gaming's dead. Uh, um, well, so first of all, I was gonna say since uh, since Nick, you haven't you haven't been here for our previous coverage, and you uh, yeah. you do uh, what's it called, Lao? It's like some kind of system in life or whatever. For those who don't know, you like you like read and uh, I don't I don't know how to explain it to people. There's like the humans came up with this thing where you can like do you stuff, and sometimes the other humans will be like no, and then they put you in jail, which is really unfair, I think. Oh, I thought yeah. you were saying LOL, like League of Legends. Lol. I thought you meant that he was a League of Legends player. <laughs> that was, oh, dude, God, that no. was 
you just remind me of when uh, the copyright shit happened with uh, the cool cat guy and his like videos he would pronounce law as lol and it would just be like l a w l is that how it sounded <laughs> like he was saying it all the time but it was a very serious video cuz he was like he treats the law like a joke cuz he was i think he was pretty he was on <laughs> good terms joke, with probably. he was on good terms with ymas but he what he hated i hate everything and he was like completely inconsistent cuz uh, i think he benefited in the same way Tommy Wiseau did with like the the notoriety from YMS but then he was like no only YMS is allowed to shit on me no one else copyright Meh. and that did not go well for him you guys remember that that was a little thing that happened that I game. do remember that that was uh that was a long time ago <laughs> I was about to say was that 2014 <laughs> god that was a while I think ago. 2015 2015 2016 so yeah a while good times well yeah, Nick, you uh, you get all up to all kinds of things, all kinds of fun events on the old uh, YouTubes, and I've I've just been looking for the right time to grab you. And they released the, that that oh, Disney when released a law show. Can you believe oh, it? I mean, I law. guess it's a law show. <laughs> it's definitely a law show. <laughs> what do you mean? Law. It's almost as boring as actual legal work. That's true. So they did. Oh <laughs> they did get. They it got there. that accurate, huh? Nice. <laughs> Dude, it's uh yeah, I mean I'm I I'm a lawyer sort of cuz like I don't really do it uh anymore cuz YouTube's way more fun. Um but uh but no, I am an active licensed attorney. I could take a client today if I wanted to. Uh and I I talk about I started off talking about exclusively legal issues and really like struggled with with talking about anything else for a while because it's like, "Oh no, this is a law show." No, it's uh now I just talk about kind of whatever um comes yeah. to mind and law sometimes happens but um it's a uh, it's a fun gig well yeah i mean uh it's it's uh it's surprising where it'll pop up and it's uh i think there's been the sort of i want to say in the last maybe five years in total but a gradual increase of uh people's strong interest in watching people who are experts in fields review media for the thing that they're representing i've seen this for medicine uh definitely for law yeah for, um like forensics detective work or uh, musicians they're like oh well, like what chad does right you know, yeah yeah like, chad would be one yeah. medieval um Pilots. people love it because uh, it's really cool to see and, and it gives you an insight into how shit tv shows are i, I mean yeah how different they are um and now famously <clears throat> i'm assuming you know about this uh is is that they said as the the writers said they know nothing about <laughs> law uh, uh shocker <laughs> shocking yeah so it, i think it was specifically in relation to we had a plan to do like a multi-episode emil blonsky like court uh case but we realized we couldn't write compelling legal drama <laughs> holy shit <laughs> jesus as a statement, just like, oh, ooh, ooh, you've just highlighted something uh, that should probably recuse you from writing this show. And they're like, huh? No, or I don't at the very that. least, I don't know, like no. getting a legal consultant to help you out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, you know, like, even just reading a few Wikipedia articles. <laughs> yeah, like, that'd have been, that might have been something, yeah. Just, like, anything. There are, there are tons of law. so there's too many lawyers. One, we need, we need a culling, like a professional <laughs> culling of it. But, um, I feel the you same can, about podcasters. You you can writers. find yeah. <laughs> you you can find a lawyer who's out of work. It's not that hard. So just and who's done work and who's done probably good work, but they get burned out, they get tired, whatever, and uh, they could use a little scratch. So just hire anybody to help out with the very basic elements of law. And they have Disney money. They can afford yeah. bring on even two guys, you know, so they can check each other's work between episodes and be like, oh no, I don't think that's how that goes. <laughs> Fuck it. Three. Imagine that. Well, Three man, lawyers. Point, who, who's to say that they would have even listened to them? They might be like, nah, this this doesn't work like in any way, they shape, or form. Bring a guarantee you. Well, it's funny. The lawyer would be like, oh, you, you can't have um, she randomly submits perfume to evidence in order for them to smell it to know how good it is, and that's why she did it or something. That doesn't really work. That wouldn't happen. Then they're like, yeah, you don't understand why we're doing that. As a writer, I feel you have to understand that I know better than you as to why this is happening. It's very satisfying for the viewers. And you're like, oh, okay. I, agree. I can totally imagine or, that conversation happening. <laughs> or the, the very opening scene where she's practicing her closing argument, and then her paralegal, like, creams herself over <laughs> using the weight of civic duty. It's like, that's every closing argument ever. All of them use the weight of civic duty. I mean, 
I'm hy- I'm being hyperbolic, but ser- this is not like some unique concept that the writers came up with. Like, I mean, yeah, lawyers well, have figured it out. Something, to- that is, um, something that becomes like very apparent in the show, more so than like the overt breaches, like where they, they've just completely gotten it wrong to me is that they've totally failed to like capture like the, the um, I guess the broader like approach or mindset of, um, of, of like, they, they haven't captured uh, the way that somebody should be like perceiving the legal system and interacting with it or like how it informs the way that they think about cases or approach matters that they're dealing with. And, like that's they didn't get them to act like so lawyers, shallow. behave like lawyers, lawyer like lawyers. It's like actors pretending to be lawyers. And, but, but not even at all. <laughs> like, not even, not at even all. close. It's, uh, it, it's so weird. Like lawyers are, lawyers are people barely. And, <laughs> um, and a lot of people forget that because they, they think they're like these robotic uh, analytical machines. And, and sometimes they are, but, but those people don't, they're not litigating because they're autistic or whatever. And they don't go in a courtroom and, and work with a jury or a judge because they don't, you know, feed off of emotions very well. They can't read a room. They can't have a conversation. It makes them ultimately unpersuasive, no matter how smart or sharp they are. There's uh, certainly a ton of really good work for those attorneys too. They're just not in the courtroom thing. Like I, I'm not sure what Jennifer Walters is supposed to be in this show um, at all, because she's like supposed to be a good litigator, but everything she does is stupid. Like yeah. every single thing <laughs> wow. and detached from just general good interactions with people. She doesn't seem to be able to persuade or empathize with anybody in the entire show. This is very much a case of the show tells you that she's good at her job and you just have to accept it despite how many mistakes she makes. Like, in- insane mistakes. Yeah, and we're not talking about small mistakes. These are huge. No, like, we're talking about mistakes that would get her disbarred. <laughs> like, it, it's- and it's not just her, though. Like, so far, every attorney in the show, uh, except for the, like, the one guy at the beginning doing the closing arguments for the for the evil lawyer company or whatever, um... Every attorney in the show is bad and and exceedingly bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're bad with clients. Their their uh their representation of Mr. Immortal, which I guess we'll get to, is is abysmal. Like it's horrifying how bad it is. Um oh jeez. Well, yeah, because I was gonna I, say I if we, we we're gonna be covering uh was it five and six? Yeah, five and six. Yeah, I but think that's what we got. If we if we just want to jump a little through the the highlights of law <laughs> in the episodes just to get oh, uh, yeah. next takes. Um curious if it differs from ours, or maybe there's some extra details that we may have missed. But you know, one of the one of the things that w- were just interesting from the get go, I think, uh, was was episode one where Titania just bursts into the room, which by the way, we still don't know why she did that. Uh, or how she had all of the charges cleared yep on the television set i mean it's incredible she threw she threw a desk at a jury like yeah 12 counts of attempted murder yeah (laughs) as well as the assault that she was perpetrating against all of the guards uh the bailiffs and everybody like the fact that she's busted into the totality of the crimes is pretty insane, and there were many witnesses. It's over. You're finished. Why Done. did she do it? We don't know. She was avoiding uh, she traffic was court. Traffic court. Yep. Yeah, okay. That's it. That makes enough sense. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it wasn't even going to be this scene necessarily. That I was I was hoping to talk about. It was going to be following up. So, E Hulk is blamed for the mistrial as a result of saving the jury's <laughs> life. And then she is fired as a result. That is one of the most bizarre series of cause and effect I've heard in a while. Right. The, yeah. The uh, <laughs> it was, a, and she works for a prosecutor's office. It's like, wait, She's you, in the no, yeah, just for no way, no way, yeah. do they fire her for this mistrial? And that that's one of the only things they've gotten right so far. Because at the end of the show, I was like, this is a mistrial. Like, mm-hmm. there's no way you can have this this jury rule on this case in this way. It's got to be a mistrial. And then, of course, in the second episode, they open up with the the whole mistrial bit, and yet she gets fired by her boss at a bar while drunk. Oh yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah, DA. Well, I think that's she, how the DA's office present? usually does it. Was she not present, like when they were determining nope. whether it was a mistrial? She just wasn't there. <laughs> that was a she surprise. Was she was getting drunk in the bar, ringing. That's where she was. Oh it's yeah, yeah, case. right. Like 
<laughs> Why didn't that happen in the courtroom? <laughs> There'd be a motion. Your input is not required, exactly. lady. And then you'd yeah. argue about whether it should be a mistrial, and then it would be decided. But you would be there. You wouldn't just the, be. A... Or the judge might just sua sponte issue a mistrial. Like, okay, this got too crazy. There's no way this jury can do this after the trauma. Even if you don't want to blame it on a particular person, like the trauma of these events has made this. This is a mistrial. Uh, we'll we'll recalendar this thing if if the DA's office wants to pursue it again, and that that'd be it. Like. Either, either that or you have the motion practice. Like, did you, you raise the motion. You missed oh, the part ahead. where the judge would have said, this is all Jennifer's fault for saving lives. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, this, the Ms. Walters. I recommend firing her. <laughs> That's what you should do. It was, it was so weird. But, but of course, they're, they're playing on the uh, women have it so hard in the workplace that they get fired for other people's criminal conduct, I guess. Like, th that happens all the time. I mean, I, I, I've read a slew of stories just today about women getting fired while someone else commits a crime in their workplace and they prevent it. That's that's what happens constantly. So that was at least accurate. That's true. I was going to ask this you about... This show was um, basically a show for justice. This show is about justice for women. What about the, <laughs> the nature of celebrity within lawyers? Because she then tries to get a job and they all refuse her because of her celebrity status almost. She'd be too distracting in the courtroom. What do, what do you think about that? Yeah, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard and no law firm is that stupid. Because you don't have to put her in court. Like, having She-Hulk on your staff would be, uh, it, after the publicity especially, would draw people in. I would actually hire her and make her open a She-Hulk Instagram account immediately with our firm name plastered all over it because yeah. that would just bring in so many clients and so many referrals. Right, you know? it, like, it's a Kardashian it's effect. Right. When Kim Kardashian gets out of law school and, and if she manages to pass the bar or whatever, any law firm on earth would be, they'll be, they should be clamoring to hire her because she'll bring in so much money and they'll just don't ever let her talk to a client and don't ever let her practice law, but just have her advertise it on Instagram. Like, get a get a Kardashian and Kardashian bikini bottom and put it on her, and just just put that right on right on every social media thing, and they'll make they'll make millions of dollars. But yeah, you do the same thing with with She Hulk or any celebrity attorney. That that just that raises the firm's profile. It does not lower it or add risk. That was a dumb. That, they that tried to avoid uh, even dealing with it as well because she said, wait, so I didn't do the right thing? And he was like, no, 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 no. Saving lives was the right thing, but you're fired. And it's like, so, mm -hmm. so there was just nothing then. There was nothing that was to be oh, done. <laughs> yeah. Something that's worth noting as well is that, again, the show's perspective is she's a really good lawyer. So, that, so like anybody who wants to hire her doesn't even have to be concerned about competency or lack thereof. She's apparently pretty good at her job. Apparently, and she's yeah. also famous. Like, why would nobody wants to hire her? Because she saved the jury very publicly. She saved 12 lives, plus who knows how many more in the courtroom. Look, I, I'm, I'm an asshole on YouTube, right? And I get calls and emails and requests constantly to represent people all over the country. Even though I say over and over, like, I'm not, I'm not taking clients. I don't do that. It's just me. I don't have, like, a paralegal and a research department and all this stuff. It's... And and still, because of my uh, what I consider to be minor e celebrity status, it doesn't matter. People want that, you know, they do that. I would wager that Legal Legal is worth more to his firm doing YouTube videos and practicing law because I bet those YouTube videos, which reach millions of people with every single one, bring in just just an avalanche of clients. And so, yeah, that this. It's completely detached from the reality of how influence works and how marketable and, and valuable it is. Everybody on earth would want to be represented by She-Hulk, especially if she were competent, but it's even if she weren't. Funny you say all that, because they lose on both ends in the, if they want to create a world where her having done that means that no one wants to hire her. You're like, hey, that's ridiculous and doesn't match our world at all, but fine. Suppose if you could stick to that, and it's like, nope, she gets hired by uh, that law firm specifically for the reasons we've just been going over. The uh, Holloway yep. is like, we'll use you because you got, you know, attention as a as a hero, as a, as a people people need to see you doing all this stuff. Which, by the way, is really funny because he wants her to be in court as She Hulk, very public facing and stuff. When 
like she has to be a she hulk in the building with at most you'll have a couple of employees seeing her co-workers and stuff but um she even makes appearances sometimes where she's just jen and i just like i i wonder if it's all uh worthwhile not um trying to argue that she hulk and jen are worth seeing you know in the same way that um seeing tony stark or seeing him in his suit like it's um it's just something they didn't they don't take it all very seriously what i'm saying it's like they don't create a package for her they don't think about it ahead of time like you know with the whole trademark name thing uh when she oh meets my up god when she meets up with hallway about it he's like why did i see your name attached to like a perfume bottle when i was going down the road it's like you know a law firm that can't take care of its own issues no one's going to hire so fix this i'm just like wait you didn't check the trademark on her name when you were hiring her specifically for the sort of publicity of her name, like you, as a firm, you, you you guys weren't interested in checking that yourselves. It was an unspoken responsibility to be given to the woman. I guess so. Yeah. It, like she's it was, an idiot too, and, but you know what I mean. And it, it's funny because yeah, if that law firm was planning to market like the She Hulk wing of the the law firm, they would have trademarked it immediately. Yeah, like that would have been their go to. We're going to use this in commerce right away. And we're going to put it on her that the whole trademark thing makes me want to die. Every <laughs> single aspect of it is wrong. And I just oh. hate everything about it. Oh God, it pissed me off. That's fine. Well, since we're speeding got, through, uh, we will, we will get there. Cause Blonsky, I think is next, sorry. right? We, we, I, I got it. So there's like a clip that's been uploaded for the new episode oh, no. and there's like, a Yay. part that is, looks so terrible, like visually. Oh, do you want, do you want us you to see it? want us to watch it? We can yeah, do it right now. It, it, yeah, like it's about 17, yeah. eight, just just some really Well, wait, awesome don't, don't look at it. We'll put it in watch together. But also, is oh, this, yeah, how yeah. long is the clip in total? Oh, it's a minute. Oof. All right, we're going to have to, we'll have to take it slow. <laughs> like, or you can go, the, we'll go straight part, to that if you want, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's remarkable how bad it looks. All right. <laughs> just, watch together, it. everybody. All right, here we go. I can't wait. I thought I didn't have to watch more, but yeah. I guess I do. A bit rude of you, uh, for you to force uh, us to watch more She-Hulk, but hey. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of fucked up. I'll have to watch more because of you. Oh, that, that's not what you're doing. It's not loading for me. What is it doing? Uh, do, do you want to try and do it yourself? Because like, I am, I put it in and hit play, I but it will. won't. Let me give it a try. What's going on? Ooh. Better. Is it? Uh, well, I can see it now. Can you guys? Yeah, a guy yeah. just rolled into a car. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll put this. Uh, um, so, do you want to uh, take control of the thing, Fringy? Put us where you yeah, want. Yeah, sure. Let's skip ahead. It's there's a fight that seems to be going on here. What the hell? <laughs> All oh, right, because you got to pause, right? Because copyright. Yeah, we'll try and be careful on that one. Um, what's? I hate the what's... look of these two people. I hate it. I hate well, the aesthetic I of guess... the show. Uh, well, just wait yeah, for Dead not... man. <laughs> That's yeah. What happened to All right, here we go. It's. it's... Is it like a yeah. bull fighting a bullfighter? I. I'm not I, sure I what the fuck's or going or on. Or... It's I'm... like Manador. Oh. Does that look like? Oh, that looks oh, bad. Look at that. Look at that. Man, Let's that so like, how, save them. You do, how does the you do Prius a, look CGI? You, you do a little frame by frame of this ridiculous shot. Oh. So he's turning. Look at the direction he's turning. He's been flung from his horn. He's, it, he like <laughs> oh, turns yeah, he's, he flips. And then he rolls the opposite direction. Like the <laughs> physics is totally balked. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, wow. you're right. He, look at that. On impact, he changes direction. <laughs> changes direction. That's great. I love it. I wish I could go frame by frame. I'm not wow. sure if I can wash together. Is it with? Well, uh, apparently the women did the physics too. You, you oh. pull it up on YouTube. You, up you on know, there's a. Frame. So there'll be two frames. That's so <laughs> fucking act. funny. What the hell? There's got to be two adjacent frames where he's just that where the swap happens in the motion where you could just go back and forth and see two completely different images. You know, it's like yeah, they, it, it, the one guy was rendering like his his segment of of the throw and then someone else got the next part and they didn't consult. And so they just flipped him the opposite well, way for what, the landing. This is what really happened. This is what really happened. They were on set and they didn't give a fuck. And then. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, because, because what should 
happened there probably is that she should have turned in the other direction and maybe that would have worked. But like instead, they had her like throw from from the wrong direction. And so like as he's landing, it's like you've got to try and make him flip around but <laughs> then have the physics that would be the other way around. It doesn't work. It looks Wait, stupid. Uh, also, okay, so she stops him his left horn, her right hand, right? Yes. Facing away so. from the car. But then she would have had to, she spins him the entire way around to do the throw is how it would have to go. Like that doesn't make sense either. Yeah. Like, they just didn't care when they were on the It's set. so tangled yeah. up. Like, oh, the coordination's so bad. I almost okay. feel bad for him because you know that someone probably suffered over this shot and they knew when they made it. This is terrible, yeah. but hopefully it's fast enough. But... Oh, and no, also... it was this right horn. Okay. <laughs> how how strong gay. is she? Like, should he should he be dead? I don't know. Should a lot of people try to be dead? Like, those I guess guys he wouldn't be dead because like, he didn't throw her. She didn't throw him that far. I mean, from like from the head though, from the horn on his head. Oh, you like, mean like I the guess it's the. Not like, uh, you mean like his the leverage from thrown. around his neck would have been really fucky, probably. Oh, if mean, it were gritty, it, she would have just ripped his horn right out of his skull. Probably ripped his yeah, head off. Exactly. Maybe, yeah. Either either that or yeah. And then we think about those guys she fought in episode three, like. She threw one guy so high up in the air that it took him a couple of seconds to return to the ground. Yeah, and that guy was dead. That hurt. So he, yeah, that's that's like, that's. Ouch remember how him. strong Hulk is? Like with one punch, he was able to stop that Chitari eel. Meanwhile, and and she's what about he just as strong glued as hair him. to his arms and legs? Yeah, she's stronger than him. You bigot. Yeah. Look at the look at the hair that's just glued. Yeah, look at it. What yeah, is that? That's a good observation. Jeez. God, it's it's awful. It's like they actually it's just, really awful. They reached Look into at, the the drain. They they went to his house and reached into the drain and just pulled it out and then they no. just glued it to him. Because that's the how hair works. Yeah, that's it how just hair is works. like in this. It's just like in these very well defined clumps, specifically the on the. <laughs> they didn't totally just. Bad. They didn't just also, make him. Like a look at this focus here. Like she's she's like in focus when she probably shouldn't be. Like she just looks she looks like a like a transparent PNG. It's just stuck on the. Oh wait, the, the the Prius oh, looks CGI. Oof. They couldn't afford a real Prius. That's true. This is Cal. <laughs> this is California. Man, she's looking a little <laughs> scary like this. She looks. She look, have you guys ever seen that picture of the guy he's who's like, like which and he's got the big veiny neck or whatever? He's like, I have to post me. Yeah, that yeah. Me up right now. You can just see the like the constraints the of the budget constantly on? all the time, like in this show, that they didn't have enough money to do what they wanted to do. That or they just didn't know how to use the resources available to them. That there would be is, worse. There is an approach <laughs> that creators have when they are aware of their budgets. This is not one of those projects. No, because well, I mean, except for, for how little like, superheroing fact, goes on, too. Well, the fights are only ever like twenty seconds because if they were any longer, it'd cost too much money. But so again, I, it's a matter of like not using their resources well because Daredevil has had less money to make their show than this. Absolutely, they did. But you telling a story that's grounded, you don't need any crazy like CGI stuff going on. You can just have five people fighting in a hallway, and you can make it work. With some real talent and creativity, I heard. Uh, I heard from someone. the The rumor is that there's so many MCU shows being pumped out by Disney, and they all need CGI. That the artists are getting burned out and actually leaving, and so they're having trouble keeping up with uh, the quality and the output that's required. Mm -hmm. And they, um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, there could be some truth to that because it's so bad. This show is so bad. That was one of the first observations my wife had when I was sitting, we're sitting there watching the first episode and Hulk looks terrible too. Like they both look bad. They're both CGI'd awfully the entire time. It's like, how do you guys well, not? We know that it's not a limit. Like we know that the problem is not the technology because there are better examples that are older of like Thanos. achieving similar effects. Thanos, uh, Alita looked really good as well. Like there's a lot of, um, examples of cg characters that work well the problem it, it's it's basically what you pointed out the problem that they have is there is a finite number of visual effects studios there's only so many and there's only so many that are like the super duper prestigious ones that get a ton of work 
Um, they get more work than they can actually do, in all likelihood. Um, there's all these projects where it used to be like 10, 15 years ago, maybe you have like two or three VFX heavy movies per year. Now it's like 30, 40, maybe even like lots of films have even invisible visual effects, like really just like the background. You got like a green screen so they can put in the cityscape or something. That's all work. TV shows have it too. Like the, um, the volume of work has ballooned. It's insane how much work needs to be done and like how little time and resources a lot of studios have. Um, mm. And yeah, and then you have this problem. It's the same in the video game industry. You lose people. Those people, if they'd stayed in the industry, are eventually going to become the, you know, the leaders in the industry, like the people in charge. Um, long term, this has to be unsustainable. Because like this is not, this out, like this can't be sustainable. There's no way. Like, look at how it's already beginning to buckle and break. Like, yeah. how clearly Dude, at this point, I think they just time. want it done. They just want to get it out and then move on. Because it's just like... I think ugh. so, because nobody's going to rewatch these shows. No. Nobody's, um... Nobody nope. cares. Like, this is the last one, right? A few uh, weeks. Last phase four uh, TV show. This is the last TV show, yeah. And then it's Wakanda Forever is the last film, and then it's uh, phase five. It's official, then. The TV show... Like, phase four TV shows were a very piss-poor experiment that went horribly wrong. Um, well, they're going to keep doing TV shows. No, of course. <laughs> Iron of course, but um, keep going. you've even seen the sentiment for the the people who really, really sing the praises of these shows, even though they can't keep it up. They just can't. Uh, and, and no, they, they can't. I keep seeing I keep seeing video essays recommended on YouTube about people not liking the face. Yeah, I keep <laughs> dude, that them. shit's bizarre. So many of the people who are making those videos are people we covered who are praising all the fucking shit in Phase Four. It's just like, when the hell did you yeah. join the bandwagon? What the heck? We used well, to say this it, before it was popular. <laughs> How could you? It was popular, yeah. And now everybody's starting to realize, but it's like too late. You know, we've had what fifteen projects that have been garbage. One of the um, that even one of the biggest ironies, I think, is that we kind of uh, set the sort of like the death at Loki, the show like, that just annihilates yeah. the MCU. While most people seem to think that Loki is one of the best things that happened in Phase Four of those uh, kinds of people, it's just like, uh huh. Okay. Yeah, for a lot of people, it's Thor and, and stuff, but like that, it took that long. You think it's not even realize. Thor? It's just that that's the movie where they were like, it's too overt not to just feel it, even though it had happened already. Uh, Maybe right. Like it, it's hard to be willfully blind. Like Thor: Love and Thunder pries your eyes open. It's like, do you see? Do you yeah, see? like the leprosy has hit your neck, but it started at your fingertips. And you're like, oh, it's right. it's there that it's it's bad. It's like no, it's been bad for a long time. Mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't watched anything Marvel I think in Phase Four at all uh, until this. This and this is your fault I, entirely. I would apologize, but I think Chat very thankful that I did that to you. <laughs> we chose a different path. We got so much to talk about. Well, I, was I mean, say, if we're talking about the episodes with Emil Blonsky. How do you feel about Jennifer's whole approach to dealing with that conflict of interest and just her perspective <laughs> on taking on that case? Well. I mean, technically, uh, you can get a conflict waiver. It's up to the client to do so. And they, they to their credit, they got a conflict waiver. Um, you know, I, I guess. <laughs> so this, is, this is what I would, I would find interesting to hone in on. Jennifer Walters, in terms of resolving the conflict personally, seems yeah. a lot more interested in ascertaining whether or not he's a good person rather than determining if she can approach this impartially and dispense yes. Yes. her duties uh, as effectively as possible. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent true. Is is can because uh, there's there's two elements to the conflict. Can can I adequately represent this person? Do yeah. I think I can do that? Can I separate it from the from the issue? And then the other one is for the clients, are you informed and aware and are you giving informed consent to waive that, uh, that conflict? He seems exactly. to be like, he seems to be okay because he's, he's a reformed man, I guess. And he apologizes, but she's just like, is, is he actually apologizing? Cause if he totally says, sorry, then it's fine. And I'm all in, but, um, it's like, that's not, that's not your job. Your job is to act in his best interests and like, and and uh basically try to help him like regardless yeah yeah and, and, and she kind of doesn't <laughs> no she <laughs> definitely doesn't but it, it, that also as a reason comes up the following episode it doesn't get mentioned here at yeah, all and it seems on. to me like they later remembered on. that as they were writing this 
Yeah, like oh, due process. It's like yeah, that's pretty important. Yeah. Fuck, I <laughs> forgot. Know? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, because it seems like she takes the case. You know, you know the way that like um, I guess scenes work where where you're like, oh, he's a uh, he's a he's a, he's a good. He's a good guy. He's like, I, I'm pretty sure he's redeemed. He was doing all these things. He's like, I'm pretty sure. And then he's just like, you're calling me to say you're taking the case. She's like, yes, I am. And to me, it seemed like all the things she was saying, they were actually just sort of fluff. And that in reality, she's taking the case because she didn't want to lose this she job. job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she wants the job. Which um, Rather is really important to the character. Herself. Yeah, because well, she doesn't care about due process. She's not actually doing it because she believes he's actually innocent, deserves proper representation to get him out of this situation. It's just that she just wants the money and the prestige, which is really important to it. You, it's not that you can't do that. It's that I want the show to recognize that's what it's done. Mm -hmm. And that's what this show does throughout that I've like, it is, it, it is so self unaware of how terrible of a female Jen Walters is like, she mm -hmm. is, she is so many things that are criticisms of women. She is that just bundled up into a character and put on screen. Yeah. Like stereotypes. And, uh, she shows empowering to women. Yeah. It's, it's like, she's, she's vapid. She's self-centered and self-organized, self-motivated, which I, I guess is is okay, but it comes across to like this narcissistic degree. Like she's great. She can do everything. Um, and, and the weird thing is, and I'm not an expert on this, but if I'm not really? mistaken, it, no, in, no, <laughs> she Hulk uh, in the comics, I'm an expert on women. That's for sure. Oh, okay. But, right. uh, but no, like if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the comics, Jen Walters was like mousy and, and, kind of like you know she was competent uh but she wasn't confident and then that was the whole point of being she hulk was that she brought out those she's like the high testosterone version right like she's the self-assured thing and and that brought her the the ability to actually put her competency into practice and that doesn't come through here at all to me um it, as far well, as there's the no, there's no difference in her personality yeah that's sure. the same. she's the same um, person it's there's the same no person dichotomy. just taller and green and then she make, she gets frustrated at the, how she hulk is her window or rather her her portal into like getting everything she wants and that's how everyone treats her it's so unfair so unfair so unfair and then she's using it that way without uh accepting the fact that it's like should be a criticism of her it's clearly the arc they're going for it was a big old. Uh, they keep dropping hints that that's that's going to be the end of the season. She's going to love being She Hulk. Woohoo! We did it. That's going to be the big payoff. But um, up to this point, it's really frustrating that she's hypercritical of everybody for being interested in the She Hulk part of her when she is also using it to her advantage all the time, and she's aware of it. Right. Do you guys remember when um, it's in the wedding episode? So we'll cover it again. But uh, when she's like, "I really want to go to this wedding, not for any other reason than to be She Hulk and to have people say I'm pretty." Yeah, I wanted to be successful. It's like that's See, what that's your high what school reunions for. Is. This is what I mean. It's just like, what are you telling me, show? Like, why do you know what you're telling me, or do you, do you just <laughs> like I don't know? It gets it gets a little bit weird. There, what there are it? literal events that you go to to like rem like to show people that you're yeah no I made it. This is how I'm doing. Like those are fine. L like a high school reunion, right? Like you go yeah. back. It's like, yeah. Or like some alumni dinner at a college. It's like, oh yeah, here's what I'm doing now. What are you up to? You don't do that to overshadow your friend at their wedding. Like that's the most asshole thing. I know it's amazing. That's the if thing. I think they about wanted me. Then why the fuck am I going? I think they wanted to establish that her friend was kind of an asshole herself, but like they didn't do that before she turned up and was like, "Hey, everybody, look at me!" Woo! And she knew that's what she was doing. By the way, it wasn't like an accident. All of the female friendships in the show are one hundred percent accurate to stereotypical awful female friendships. We are, all of them. We've been highlighting this and like her paralegal <laughs> friend that the show loves. The show really likes that paralegal friend. She's awful for yeah. her. She uh, just, only ever is about the material. She just wants the money. The yeah, clothes, she never so. seems very concerned with how Jennifer feels about nope. her situation. It's always about what it gets them in terms of things. Like, look at our big office and our mini fridge. Isn't that cool? It's like, wow. And dare I compare that I, uh, to Foggy? It's like, oof. Did I, oh, yeah. the <laughs> did I hear, did I hear right also, like, there was just one quick reference of it while they were at the bar that her one, her friend's a lesbian too, right? Is she? It's, it's, it makes uh, Marvel Face 4, probably. I, okay. or something. I like, thought yeah, she might have been a lesbian at one point with the, um, Miss Book. 
whatever when she's like i want to take you out for a drink and she's like yes I oh, like, I, oh i was like yeah mm-hmm. finally this show's getting good yes <laughs> <laughs> and then and then but i'm pretty sure at the bar when uh when the guy approaches him like had two two women sitting you know in a booth at a bar and the guy's like walks up because you know that's kind of the guys do it boss yeah things. What? yeah and and they're like we are totally working here it's like you're at a you're working at a bar, at a bar. yeah go to a fucking starbucks you weirdos how do, but, how do you um, feel about the name of the bar legal ease do you like it <laughs> I actually like it. i i, I think like that's kind of clever yeah. yeah that's that's pretty funny one point for she um, think. yeah yep, you got one <laughs> There's uh well there's a bar I always go to when I go to Anime Matsuri in Houston because it's it's right in the same place it's called the Hearsay and it's like well I have to go there right like that's it's got a stupid legal name and mm-hmm. you just have to go so I actually am fond of the legal ease name of the bar but I'm pretty sure in that scene the the chick reveals that she's a lesbian and I think she's got a, a girlfriend even Oh okay uh, yeah I I can't remember it's hard to keep track of sometimes is uh I'm so used to Batwoman where everybody's a lesbian, so it's straightforward. But in this show, like, you get some straight people. Well, the villains are straight. In in Batwoman, it depends if they're a girl, they're lesbians, right? Oh yeah, I guess the girl, all the girls are lesbian. I don't know where all the people come from because all the girls are lesbians and all of the <laughs> it's males are straight, but they end up being in prison because she. Is it so hard to accept a fictional deeds. world, Rags, where people can turn into PNGs and float around to fly? Like that's that's pretty Wee. impressive. I don't think you can do that in that real is, life. That is pretty impressive. I just I don't know. So yeah, um, her accepting to do that for Blonsky it just uh, to me just it sets character every time, and then uh, how he doesn't tell her or anyone else all of the information that's going to inevitably come out or rather the, the the tape of him escaping and fighting in a fight club thing just happens to re- did they ever tell us why that happened to release at the exact same time as she became why? his lawyer yeah. no just i think it. we had mentioned why or if they would explain it i think i was the one who would who would ask if they would explain the timing i think it's purely just a coincidence to create drama within the show yep i don't think there's yeah. actually a reason for it Great. Yeah, it does. Coincidence. I mean, there would be, there would not be a parole hearing. <laughs> well, you, you, yeah. There wouldn't be a parole hearing for the enormous monster that cracked a city in half. What do you mean? What? Well, How you, I meant, what? I meant this would come up like at an, a, a criminal proceeding, and he would be sentenced to a a crime of escaping prison. Like he would no, yeah, have yeah. to go through the due so, process. There, there would be exactly. another court case. Something they do in this show, which was exemplified in the elf case, uh, is if Blonsky had escaped that cell, grabbed Jennifer Walton, just smacked her on the ground over and over again until she blew up into a pile of flesh, they would have judged him and given him a sentence on the spot. That's how they think the law works. They would have just been like, yes, this is, you but did the bad. A, a totally new matter. Like that there would be a new case. And then that whole procedure would play out. Uh, instead, it's like, no, we can sort of fudge everything together because it would get too complicated. But I mean, it's complicated because of the nature of the story you're telling. There's complicated stuff. Well, in the case of Blonsky, though, like, you think he's up for parole? You think he's getting any parole <laughs> hearing ever? I want to know what the original life. sentencing was because he's only now yeah. presenting that he was apparently like screwed over by the government and that he would remember that didn't really come up by the way she highlights it and, that... and she's like ooh and then that never gets said in his in the rest of it yeah that's an appellate argument not a parole argument <laughs> he would where that would be an appeals case where what how long has he been in jail? Why is he already uh, up for parole? Yeah, like, <laughs> so he's up for parole in 15 years. I'm pretty, like, it's pretty common for people. Like, if you killed one person, you got charged with first degree murder and convicted, you wouldn't be up for parole in 15 years. <laughs> like, you, you'd no. have to wait longer than that. And he, like, what he did, he killed multiple people. He destroyed a whole city. Well, I was going to say the he's property damage parole, would be absolutely intense, what he did in Harlem. And it would be it would be consecutive. It would not be yeah. it, uh, it would not be concurrent exactly. sentencing on this back because to back to back. yeah, when when you have multiple homicides and and extreme destruction and like just reckless devastation <laughs> that happened, it would be it would be you just keep going through them. So there there wouldn't be, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Well, no, why he's on parole. And I think I highlighted when we when we check it out, but there's this small clip that gets played in the almost the background, but there's the prosecutor that put him away on TV saying whoever would want to defend this monster is like a piece of shit because of the horrible things he's and then it gets turned off. And I'm just like, 
Can I see? Can we talk to that guy? Can we bring that character in? Let's find out about Blonsky's actual original case. Let's see what happened with it. Let's see. Let's see like the details of it because like this doesn't make any sense right now. It's just because he's like I'm a nice reformed innocent person, and it's just like okay, but like you got sentenced to the crime of having done what you did. I don't. I don't think that's gonna help after what you did. Like it doesn't matter how many years of good behavior you've got when you've done something like that. And it, it, it really, like, the much more convenient way to handle this from a, t a storytelling and legally accurate position would have been to do the appeals case. Because the appeals case would nullify all of it. It would just get rid of everything, and he would be able to go go free. But I guess they really wanted that resolution of, you can't turn into abomination again. You know, if you do, then you violate your, your probation or whatever. And it's like, why, why is... But but going through the appeal, being like, oh, yeah, the U.S. government actually asked him to do this. He was acting as an agent of the state. He should have qualified immunity for what happened. Uh, you know, those are the types of arguments that you'd want to see. Not like, well, he's really a good person with seven old women. He helped uh, a security guard with him. his marriage or something. Yeah. Like, oh. Therapy or something, yeah. But then, okay. again, like there, the was that, there was that. a groovy guy now. There is that problem like a of you committing a serious offense while you're in prison, escaping from prison. That's kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's but like he's groovy new... now. Ah, yes, but you know, we we need one witness to ex to just say, ah, it's not his fault, bro, and that's it. <laughs> that's that's all you need, and he's free to go. And like how he's <laughs> turning into abomination without like precaution and precision and permission, it's just like mm, that's probably another mm -hmm. crime. <laughs> like, I imagine. The point of this can't protect if it can't contain him yeah Even everybody got scared makes, he could have, well the argument jen makes is he could have escaped but he didn't it's like what's the point of the cell <laughs> maybe it's just escaped. the cell is just the best they could do and they're hoping that right. he doesn't maybe they it, it's it's like the the power limiter on captain marvel they like they need him to believe that he's limited yeah by they tell his, him his cell yeah they There'd tell be no him point. all the time in trying to escape because you definitely can't break through this. And he's like, I can't, like, definitely can't. No point in trying, trust me. Don't even waste oh. your time. Okay. Don't, don't even bother. Don't even bother transforming and attempting it right now. Because if you did that, you would just be... Embarrassed. You'd be wasting your time. Yeah, and right now, as you sit there in that glass box, you, you have so many other things you could be doing instead. So don't even waste your time trying to break out. You see the bed they gave him? Like this little mm -hmm. thin mat on the floor? Yeah, that's a bit mean. <laughs> like... Right next to the toilet as well. No need. Well, that's actually something I'd expect in a prison yeah. cell. But I just mean like you know they usually give him a mattress. Maybe that little thing is real Think comfy. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, well, it's I, it's worse than the portal cell. Oh yeah, I remember like how cell. um when they when when she had a list of uh people who were going to testify on his behalf and talk about how cool he was, it was just like a, a single page word document. Yep, <laughs> that was that was it. all of her notes for her case. She's a really good yeah. lawyer. Not like yep. she would have several binders overflowing with notes. No, guys, her mind oh, is like a references. steel trap. She remembers it all. It's up in her head space. Mm -hmm. That's how good she is at remembering information. She's just that but, good. That's just a credit to how good she is that she takes so few notes and brings so few references because it's all inside of her head space. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, then, she keeps and then winning. Wong comes so. in. Yeah. Well. Wong just opens a portal into a maximum security prison, just jumps in. Hey, I'm Wong. I'm here to I'm here to talk about uh I'm here to talk about how Emil is a good guy. Uh it was my fault. I forced him to escape yeah. prison. Oh, right, that's a crime, buddy. Oh, see ya. He also Please. violated the express rules of the prison every time he did anything yep. with the portal. Like yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's the incredible. fact that he portaled in, they don't know if he had a weapon on him or any sort of like any any contraband, anything that they would not want in that prison. He just portals in just without a, going a, through a, the security checks. He's un unregistered, unqualified. Like he's just some guy has just broken into the prison. Mm -hmm. This is intense. Yeah, yeah. And then to tell us that he has broken a prisoner out before, <laughs> it's like yeah, oh. exactly. And I forced him, which, I mean, we talk about the total, again, you broke someone out of prison, you broke into a prison, you apparently threatened somebody into doing things for you, like, to commit crimes on your behalf. Oh, Wong, you're in a- Very out of character, And you just admitted Wong. this in front of it. The one-two punch board. after Multiverse of Madness. 
As if he needed it. Yeah, it's, um... So, he's a fugitive for the rest of his life, but we'll forget about that in episode four when he shows Absolutely up in open we'll court. Absolutely, forget about it. <laughs> Again. It's only a lost show. It doesn't matter, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Fugitive from... What does... Just... I don't even know what that word is or means. I've never heard of it before. Yeah, I, lo I love how much he cares about, like, uh, the rules of sorcery. Um... But he doesn't care at all about the rules of anything else. Like, all the rules are bad, yeah. except for the rules of sorcery, which must be uh, abided by at all costs. For and I'm going to use the, the legal universe. system that I don't respect to enforce those rules. It's insane. Well. It makes no sense at all. And then, of, of course, he, he seems to be barely aware of what the law is. He's like, what book do you go by? And it's like, oh, the b book, of, book of laws. And he's like, oh... So, like, mm -hmm. as, as though he's an alien, that's how they treat it. It's really annoying. Um, but then yeah. simultaneously tries to use the law to get his way with the sling ring in a later episode, which is bizarre. And that just, um, I was going to say, uh, Nick, how long do you think it would take for the American legal system to be able to reformat the entire system to account for magic? <laughs> <laughs> Couple days. We, we, we still haven't figured out how to reformat it for the internet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we can't. There's no way. <laughs> it's so funny that he portals witnesses in at will and they just accept this. They're like, eh. yeah. Just portal somebody into a courtroom. Not like you gotta, you know, if there's any security in the court. Do you have ID? Who are you? Are you even an yeah. American citizen? Like, are you a magical what? conjuration? Are you real? Yeah. What we were saying are you, are you an religion? actual person? Imagine there was like footage of you just annihilating a group of people with a machine gun or whatever, and then you, and you're like, wait, 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 I got a witness, and you bring in some guy, and he says, I mind controlled him to do it. Okay, bye, and then leaves. You're like, well, yep. you're innocent. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, is it? Okay, that's he, was mind, he was mind controlled though, so yeah, you have to put and, that. And you know. The guy, the magic portal man, said, "So, are you going to doubt a man who comes through a portal?" No. I'm not. Yeah, from the from the strategy perspective of Jen Walters, looking at the you know bringing Wong in, you would ha why you would have him portal into the jail is insane because it it instantly shreds his credibility. You would have him show up, of course, go through all of the security protocols, the same thing she has to do. She has to be in there as not She-Hulk. She has to be in there as Jen Walters. And and that's that should be like a, a point of dramatic contention. And also like, stra like first of all, she should be worse than She-Hulk is because that's the character. But um, it should also just be the trigger that, yeah, this place really, really cares about the rules. And you're going to bring this guy in. Like I could see him portaling out. That would have been the good joke, but he should have been there and gone through security because she would have demanded that because you'd have to, <laughs> like you'd have to have Wong show up in the most credible way possible. Uh, and, and he doesn't like the parole board should have immediately denied everything. I hate um, it. Well, you should hate it. I think everyone's supposed to hate it. Cause uh, why else would you make this? horrible <laughs> except for the stated purpose in the show where it's like having wong turn up means people will like our show right like she may as well have said that, yeah, that, that was she did say it season <laughs> yeah she, she actually did say that like al almost yeah. almost verbatim she's like everybody loves when wong shows up Ugh, even though it's my show uh, how intelligent this show is it recognizes how shit it is that <laughs> makes it really good it, god it was so oh it's bad yeah Absolutely I hate honest. I hate all the fourth wall stuff. Yeah, I hate I it hate too. It. Not, they haven't I'm spent it well at all. Yeah, a lot of the time it's either. Did you like how? Because oh yeah, right. We didn't talk about the uh, the asshole DA guy uh, and his his case with the elf. Oh my right. god! The story, the story connecting. What did you think about <laughs> the elf case and um and everything that that entailed? Uh, first of all, that whole episode being just an homage to Megan the Stallion is the weirdest thing. I like everybody on earth, like everybody's like, Megan the Stallion's the greatest. And I'm like, who, who the fuck who is Megan the Stallion? Was my question. I, was like, I had yeah. no clue this person was a person. Person. It was. It's it. She's some rapper, I guess, or something. I don't know, like a knockoff Nicki Minaj. I, I don't even know. Uh, I just, I've heard the name before and know nothing about her, but everybody in the show, like 
the the little squirrely asshole DA, like that's who he goes to try and pick up as Megan the Stallion. It's like he doesn't look like a Megan the Stallion kind of guy, like to me. I don't know. I, I don't know if that was supposed to be ironic or whatever. But um, and then everybody is like just just fucking fawning over this woman. And it's like she's not that like this is not a universally up uh appealing person. You think right? she's like not her, Gal Gadot? <laughs> I actually I watched Death on the Nile. I happened to watch that today. That's the one with the cannibal, right? That's bring you help me out. <laughs> is, is that oh, I, I, I think I don't know. If there's like Arnie Hammer, right? Yeah, he, he, he likes cannibalism. Yeah. Wasn't that the thing? I was, I, uh, I'm pretty sure that's the big twisted web that I just don't like. I was trying to explain to my dad because he was just like. You know, uh, he, he was he was asking what what will be next for Poirot's adventures, and I was like, I'm not sure they get another one because this one didn't do very well because I think I think it got tagged a little bit by um, uh, <laughs> when he was, I was I was like, how do I explain this? Um, one of the main actors is in trouble really because of cannibalism. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. This sounds these days. like a mystery for Hercule Poirot, <laughs> the case oh, of the great. eaten man. You brought it up because Gal Gadot is in in that film. Yes, she is. Uh, I don't know if it's a spoiler to say she's the one who's and murdered. All the has human to be flesh to fill denial. Oof. Ooh. There's a couple of lines that I was like, oh, how didn't that one go viral too? But you know, they chose a good one. It's there's too many because I mean, you know, like the like there was that one in Wonder Woman 934. I need you to give me this stone. What was that? The <laughs> delivery. <laughs> what happened? Why Listen, okay, she's other? pretty, okay. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Uh, that L. Oh, yeah, I, I think um, I yeah, the, it, on the, the the cameo thing with uh, Megan the Stallion. I think I mentioned it before because I saw someone on Twitter said it was like it was like when the Simpsons had Tony Hawk on, and every single time it's like Tony Hawk. Oh my god, it's Tony Hawk! Like wow, Tony. Like they had to say the full name, and they just kept talking about how cool Tony Hawk was. It's mm -hmm. like that again, except yeah. well, if was, they just said Tony. Then you'd obviously like, be thinking of you'd be Tony like, Stark, Tony? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, Tony Stark, or like Tony, uh, the Tiger. Probably. Oh, definitely, I would think of that. Which one? Which Love episode is? Uh, do. Which episode hey, is Tony. the Elf one? By the way, the three, three, uh, three. Yeah. I think. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like how the Elf impersonated the DA guy to get into the meeting with his lawyer to try and get his lawyer to drop the case? And that. And then his like lawyer that. didn't. It didn't think about it like at all. Like, first of all, I hate that guy. I hate that guy so much. Like the way he talks is grating and irritating. Um, the delivery oh. of his lines. Uh, oh God, I want to strangle him. But um, yeah, th so the guy like leaves and then they know that there's a shapeshifter running around and there's no precautions. There's nothing about like client confidentiality. This is a law firm that runs a superhero division that has to be like, they know they're dealing with this stuff. Yeah. There would, they, you put protocols in place to try and verify everything. And when your client comes right back in one second later and has a complete change of heart on everything while they're dealing with a shapeshifter. I mean, I was like, Oh, it's the elf. Okay. Well, I got it. Yeah, the, dude, that's how everybody had the reaction. They're like, "Oh, okay," and then and then you immediately have thought like, "Oh man, they don't have anything to stop this." But the writers are like, "They won't figure it out." So what we'll do is have it be called by the guy at the same time. You can't talk to him on the phone and talk to him in the room at the same time. That's not possible. <laughs> what? Whoa. Well, unless he's calling you from inside the room, which you I probably guess. know. <laughs> you You'd would see likely that. notice that doesn't happen often. But I mean, man, it's kind of weird that like. Like, this elf has just committed several crimes. <laughs> Man, like, yeah, this is the care. thing. You, you litigate in the, 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 this one to try and figure out how to end it and stuff. Just, she just commits way easier to prove one straight away in front of everyone. Yeah, she like, makes sure there's loads of witnesses. Exactly. She walks out and pretends to be Pug. So it's like trespassing, fraud. Like, you know, <laughs> do, we, do we keep going? Yeah, it's... uh. And then when the thing with the judge, right? That the judge is like, yeah. now that I've ended the case with this guy, I'm just gonna throw on how much is it? Like, uh, sixty days. And in, 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 he doesn't even say which prison, like where. So sixty days. Sixty where? days. <laughs> like, yeah, it'd be. Where? I mean, contempt. Contempt is in county jail. That's where they would go. But they didn't like just say like, "I'm holding you in contempt of court." 
But no, it was um, for the impersonating the judge, which is different than contempt of court. I was going like to say, a, surely the punishment for that is right. way own, more than its own thing. <laughs> well, I mean, if if they got criminal impersonation, then that that would have to be a whole separate case. Exactly, like, exactly. You wouldn't just sentence it straight away. Yeah, It'd be a whole new trial, right? If we can ignore the how judge, fucking stupid that is, the sentencing just seems off to me. Is what I'm saying. The judge could, I think, in theory, they should. They didn't say this, but the judge could go. Like judges have plenary authority to make a contempt of court hearing or a mm -hmm. contempt of court ruling on the spot and say, "No, you you clearly showed contempt for this court. You tried to, you know, you tried to change a court order, which isn't going to work because the court order has to be verified by a written order afterwards. Like it's uh, the, you know." the the case will be dismissed but the written order will follow the verbal order and the written order will actually supersede it once it's done so like her coming back be like i changed my mind it wouldn't do anything like there'd be no legal effect to it because the actual judge is just going to go back and and verify and enter yeah, into course. the enter into the record the actual ruling but so if you but if you come back and you're like yeah uh this is this is contempt clearly um, it's a definition of contempt, trying to subvert the court uh, by through impersonation. They could make a ruling and say sixty days. I think they can hold them. You, they can hold them up to like six months or a year. But the longer it gets, you know, the easier it is to to get it broken. Uh, you know, get a get an actual hearing on the issue from from another judge. But but yeah, like in theory, they could have done it, but they just didn't do it that way. And it's like, we, why didn't you just find a DA? Or a public defender and say, how how have contempt rulings worked in criminal cases before, like that you've been in? Because one of them has seen one somewhere. You could probably just watch one on YouTube where, where a judge finds someone in contempt. Actually, I know you can. I've well, watched them. that's a lot of work. I mean, going to watch a YouTube video before you write up your whole show? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Just steal what happened in court. <laughs> Just steal. <laughs> change the names. It's that simple. No one owns that you like that what happened in a courtroom. It's not like you're actually stealing it. You can just do it. John Grisham's entire career is this. So just do it. Um So what did you think about the fact that they need it proven that a shapeshifter could possibly convince someone there's someone else? <laughs> I I just don't get it. It's like like everyone's laughing at him at the idea that he fell for it. It's like fell for it. It's not, technically speaking, there's nothing to fall for because that's it. It's done. He is well, no. What he should have he should have reasonably concluded that he was dating a shape shifting elf. That when, was more whenever reasonable. you're with a girl who you think is out of your league, you should assume that's a shape shifting elf. Yeah, that's how that should be. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, and that was kind of funny because they, they keep making this guy out to be like a giant piece of shit uh, unnecessarily. Like, there's no reason for this guy to have to suck. He's such a minor character, uh -huh. um, but, he, but he has to be the worst, the worst guy ever. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I mean, I'm sure his, like, uh, bordering on sexual harassment with everything he says in the show and being uh, an, a monster to everyone around him, all of his colleagues, that wouldn't get him fired at all from a from a state run office. Okay, let's just assume that. But second of all, it's like, yeah, uh, remember that you're a piece of shit, and you should know you're a piece of shit. So therefore, um, yeah, at, frankly, if you're dating any woman, you should assume that it's a shape shifting man, like at, <laughs> shape shifting. That's alien because that's, it doesn't even make fucking sense. Because it's like in this world, how how many shape shifters have we even seen? Like zero? Well, yeah. as scrolls even public knowledge? I was about to say, know that do real? they even know about shapeshifters yet? And if they did, well, this hey is... Nick, how much does this change the legal system, having shapeshifters? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh god. Holy fuck. You'd have to we have, have to vet everyone have... doubly so now. Right, now, they, they said she was as guardian, right? Yes. Yeah. It's which, a, it's, I, which I don't her, know enough about it. It gave her diplomatic immunity, but only in New Asgard. <laughs> which was weird. I don't understand well. how that works. And also California. It doesn't. Just remember, yeah, yeah it, it doesn't work. <laughs> like, and, and, uh, you'd think Ew. the lawyer... Question. Do lawyers bring up defenses they know don't work just for the hell of it sometimes? Like, uh, Only sometimes, if it's yes. funny. Only if it's funny. Because, like, sometimes, yeah. I mean, if, if you think... Uh, you, you might go, this 
probably won't work, but I'm going to, I'm going to take a shot and, and you would have a legally articulable reason why it should work this time, even though it doesn't work any other times. Right. Like, yeah, but there's some special circumstance here, but there are limits, right? You wouldn't go like my client might not be human. So can we really judge him by these rules or something? You wouldn't try yeah. that. <laughs> Like so, no. so like the idea that maybe I'm being a little bit extreme, but this lawyer being like he had she had diplomatic immunity, and then the judge, which by the way we're going to accept that that makes sense for a second with these Asgard rules, whatever. And the judge is like, well, we're not in New Asgard, so it doesn't apply. It's like the lawyer would know that, right? So is there any point in even bringing that up? Well, or at the very Plus, least, like diplomatic immunity would have been settled before yes. he got here. Pre-trial motion for sure, like long before a, a court hearing, or that would be the entire hearing, right? Like there would be a motion filed, papers uh, back and forth. Both there would be no surprise to this motion to dismiss for diplomatic immunity, or uh, the the defense would say, or you know, Jen would say, uh, "Whoa, Your Honor, this is this is out of nowhere. Can I have a week or ten days or fifteen days to you know? Can we get this on paper? This is a complicated issue to just have pop up at oral argument out of nowhere, and I'm supposed mm -hmm. to uh, address this argument unprepared with no legal authority to back up either side of this. No way. I mean, if if unless the law is so clearly obvious and there are no questions of fact, then you you wouldn't even uh, you you would not be bringing this thing in court and the judge wouldn't even entertain it. Like they, they'd be like, okay, well, we're going to adjourn today. We'll, we'll calendar this, uh, 30 days out and you, you get me your brief by this day, your brief, uh, your response by this day and your reply brief in, in seven days later. Like they just calendar it out. That's, that's how court actually works. No. And the fact that all <laughs> these things are going directly to court hearings within like minutes of them occurring, like these Rather things than month later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's the, insane. It's almost this is a very temporally confusing show. It's the, uh, the whenever there's law shows that used to be what we watch. Because I'm assuming you, you may have seen more than one in your lifetime, Nick. Right? Uh, did you ever watch Ali McBeal? Yeah. I don't know. I I I did when I was you know when it was on. I watched a couple. Of, my mom watched it like crazy, so I saw a couple episodes. But those, I didn't make a habit of watching lost shows. But still, yeah. Th those are the. Times where I think they likely had a law advisor to some degree, but they still were like, we will make sacrifices for pacing as well as entertainment, you know, here yeah. and there, but we'll try. This show is like way further downstream of that attitude to the point of being like, why hire a law person at all? That's just a waste. We shot in a courtroom. Yeah, and, and yeah, then they'll be like, that good enough? I, I think I made a uh, comparison on our last she hell coverage where I was just like, I'm just waiting for them to just throw out double jeopardy as a as a term, and they'll just they'll apply it to whatever they want. They'll just be like, this is double jeopardy, and that means we can't do it, and it'll have they like it'll make no sense. Two episodes of Jeopardy in a row that day. Yes. Uh, like. No, it and it, the, like the timeline stuff really got annoying in the trademark thing because trademark is a really long process. You. You register your trademark, uh, and then you know the the patent trademark office has to they they publish they publish like the trademarks that are coming up in this register that comes out. I think it's quarterly or something, and then you have like six months from the publication to contest the trademark. That's the whole point of the publication. You have to keep watching them, uh, and then if if it's uncontested, it goes through. But that's still not the end of it, and you can like the. And most trademark stuff is done on on papers. It's not done, you know, at oral argument because right. trademark is very, very fact intensive. It's not a lot of legal arguments around it. And then, like, you can once the trademark is established, you can try to enforce it through the through the district courts. But it's like they just skipped all that. Titania just like, oh yeah, I have a trademark that was fine. Like I got it. It's well, yeah. like, oh, you, you you just got it then. You you have it. Okay. You think about the oh, timeline, right? Because the thing that allows Jen to win is that she'd been using it in days. Oh, wait. And she had just... That is oh, one of the ones yeah. we're covering, right? That is the episode we're going to be yeah. covering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll, true, uh, true, true, true. We'll jump we'll do, um, we'll do... So much ranting to do. We've already episode got episode four, four left to summarize. So this this legend here, our magician who put the entire world <laughs> in danger. Uh, Chad. Absolute Chad. What a Chad. Hero that Nico <laughs> needs. Um... Because, like, Nick, I don't know how familiar you are with, like, the Doctor Strange magical shit side of this. It's bad. But knowing yeah. that some guy managed to leave Kamataj with a sling ring and Doctor Strange and Wong did nothing about it 
is uh, frustrating to say the least. But to then tell us that once they find out, their response is, ah, go get Jen Walters to sue him. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Why well, doesn't no, Wong just Walters... go take it? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get Jen Walters to sue him and establish a precedent um, that only licensed magicians can use magic. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's essentially that's trying to take. trademark the use that's of sorcery. That's not a can of worms being opened up. Well, yeah, because a, a cease and desist. It's like, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. And of course, they, they act like the cease and desist matters. Um, cease and desists are... Uh, legally almost completely useless uh there are a few statutes that require you to send some sort of like like there are defamation statutes in in different states that require you to send mitigation letters so it's like cease using the def defamatory statements we demand retractions uh or, or whatever and then those are just part of the process leading up to the lawsuit you like in <laughs> texas you have to do that mm -hmm. um you have to send a letter that says you said these things we need them taken down. We need retractions and we need you to stop, stop saying them. They don't have to follow it. You just have to send it. And so like, but the cease and desist letter, it's like you send them a cease and desist. I get cease and desist letters. I just laugh and make fun of them online because they're pointless. But, um, but yeah, so I, I hate that. Well, Every show acts very like seriously. Cease and desist. Yeah. They, they all, they all matter so much. So I he think he super cease and desist. desist. Right. Super. <laughs> I'm the super ceaser. I guess you just think about like nice. what Wong just wants just to so achieve. Man. It's like, man, Wong, like what you're trying to achieve, like, my dude, <laughs> good luck. Maybe like, we shouldn't go with the first knee jerk process. reaction. Yeah. Well, I mean, just, you know. if you want to establish, really, you probably want to be going out campaigning for le new legislation, new regulations, you know, like um, on federal You should or probably even confer countries. with. Confer with all the other sorcerers, maybe Doctor Strange. Be well, to be honest yeah. with you, they should all just on the spot. They should all count every day that the law hasn't cracked down on their sorcery bullshit as a yeah, blessing. Yeah, really. A blessing. Exactly. That they also on an extremely tight leash, like Dragon Age style. Uh -huh. They also should have sued for conversion on the on the sling ring. Like he doesn't own that. That's not his. He stole it. Uh, he need that needs to be ordered by the court returned to Wong as the the keeper of this stuff. That's actually true. Like that's that's the one aspect he might be able to get him on is that it's property of Kamataj, not his. You're right. Right, and that wasn't even considered nope. in the show at all. They're like, <laughs> which was the problem? Go... It was the sling ring because the guy could only ever do the 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 spells that were causing problems with the sling ring. Everything else he was doing, they didn't give a shit about. So, cool, right, because like, one of the things. Oh, sorry, go for it. I was just going to say, all of his other stuff were just run-of-the-mill illusions, just boring, fake, yeah. you know. So the whole audience hated, tricks. apparently. Until this one, where he he could have gotten someone killed. It's like, why are you not you said, getting <laughs> Madison to, like, file criminal charge? Like, why are you not pursuing that as an option? The thing is, you say, like, until, you know, we really fucking we get, like, that demon army, but he's just been sending random girls into demon dimensions to complete quests. <laughs> it's yeah, like, what exactly. the fuck? How has this gone unnoticed? How has he not gotten in trouble for this by now? And no, no way the court lets a drunk witness on the stand. By the way, not not even. <laughs> I was going to ask closed. about that. I um, yeah, I the, saw some people in chat saying it's not. What what was there was there was a counter argument that was something like as long as it's made aware and that the person agrees or something. Is it what's what's yeah, the precedent no. for this? Uh, if you're a witness testifying under a mind-altering substance like alcohol that would impair your ability to accurately recall events or impair your ability to communicate them, like you're you're not going to be on the witness stand. That's what I would have thought. Yeah, because th couldn't they just claim uh, later that that's bullshit testimony because they were drunk? Yeah. 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 I mean, the and the other party could claim this person is clearly intoxicated. There. I know that they try to make the other lawyer look like Dr. Robotnik's like Downsy brother or whatever, but like there is another party in the room that is going There's to no raise such issues. Contamination in this world, <laughs> that's not such thing. Uh, oh God, it's it's just like come on, guys. Like someone is there who it, it's his job to challenge this. I know he's he's a man, so he's got to be dumpy and incompetent in the She Hulk universe. But like he's still gonna just say, yeah, uh, no, we're not. We object to this witness. <laughs> like one, who is she? Like two, 
Why is she intoxicated? from a club. Yeah, who is she? <laughs> yeah. She's drunk too. Like, oh, sorry. She is the drunk one we're talking about. But I just mean, like, it's insane that you didn't even tell her, like, oh, we're going to need you today. She's a friend as well. Just, yeah, she'd have to be on the witness list. Like, on, the, the, this, uh, this all happens with lists. <laughs> Lawyer, there's surprise witnesses never almost occur. never occur. I think, as was highlighted when we covered this episode, it was like, wait a minute, she's in a club that's like active. Is she on a different. A different part of the country? Like it, we don't know where she is from. <laughs> well, <laughs> she's just yanked in from wherever. Uh, she was she was almost funny in the show though. She, I I will she, give that credit. Like her character was almost funny. I'd rather I'd rather watch smiled. a show about her than it, Barbara to have, Walters or whoever the actually main like character her, is. To have a ditzy drunk her, girl stumbling through a demon dimension completing quest sounds hilarious. I want to see the go her and Wong odd couple. Her and Wong odd couple remake would actually probably be like a funny show. But Wong from the first Doctor Strange, where he's actually Wong, where he's straight not faced retarded, and serious. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. we have her, and she's just just her. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. We got this instead, though. Also, yeah, I do hate need... surprise witnesses as well, and no cross examination drives me nuts. You, I'm not a lawyer, and even I'm like, come on now, <laughs> come on. The other lawyers just don't uh, care. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's fine. Have anyone go up there and say whatever. It doesn't matter. And and why are they letting his like old magician weird uncle guy like sit at the table there? Like, I don't what's, know. What's that guy have to do with this? He'd be in the gallery. There's no reason to have him up at council table with the with the um you know the defense. Well, they wanted to have that payoff that all three of them are magicians. Like, how funny is that? The lawyers are magicians. Sneaky. And detonating smoke bombs in a courtroom. Yeah, that's chill. And you have the, <laughs> at least if the show, I don't even know which is better, having the show be like unaware that detonating a smoke bomb is something you cannot fucking do, or having the judge be like, if you do that again, I'll have you in contempt of court. It's like, wait, why haven't you? Yeah. Just, <laughs> stop immediately. That's an explosive incendiary device. <laughs> like, in a I, I, it doesn't, oh my God. How to get through security? Yeah, it's a good question. And as uh, as we highlighted earlier, it is it was it, like, did you notice this when you were watching it that uh, that Wong had become an, an American fugitive, and then the following episode he is in court <laughs> for his own case? Like that's <laughs> hilarious. You know what? I I didn't even think about it. I was just like, <laughs> my my brain was just like, I what what the fuck ever. I guess he's he's here. Okay. I really want to know what right. the the writers would say in response to that because that's a tough one to just write, like be like, eh. Whatever. You Don't know? you think it's weird that you guys wrote this? Yeah, you guys told me that yeah, he's a fugitive, and then you told me that he can just sit in a courtroom and argue his own case for his trademarking magic to belong to him, essentially. Yeah, there's a bailiff there. Hadn't even tried to cuff him. Like, at least make Wong have to escape. Shouldn't even be able to get right. there. <laughs> well, you could just technically you can portal, you can just in. portal in. Just no portal in, portal anyway. out. But, like, um, that'd be kind of funny if Wong was always just popping in and popping out, like, constantly, try, like, because he was he was dodging everything from then on, but he had to help She-Hulk, like, and so it became this this conflict and, like, a, a comedic conflict where, well, we really need Wong to help out with this case or to bring in this witness, and so that was all he ever did was, like, gust in, then the bailiffs run charging at him, and he has to bust back through the portal every time. Like, that could be a funny bit. Like, throw that in the show instead of having it just be ignored. So, oh, um, it's the, was this, I think we talked about this just before the stream started, actually, but the, uh, one of the ones that I think really got on your news, uh, Fringy, the, um, part about the contract or part about the cease and desist, right? Isn't it? Is they want to, uh, she wants them to well, sign it. talking like, Oh, right. Well, uh, wait, which which part? Like at the end, you mean yeah, after yeah. everything? Because obviously goes there's, there's more we could talk about, but I'm just skipping to like the bigger ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it's mainly because yeah. obviously there's the case. They haven't decided on it yet, and he's still allowed to practice magic. He does his magic show, opens a portal to a hell dimension, and a bunch of bats spawn out and start uh, presumably attacking all of the people in there. But they all escape, and then um, and then like uh, Wong tells Do uh, Donnie Blaze to call Jen. She she has his number, like in her, her phone. He, she doesn't answer, and then she comes in to help fight them. And then as he's there cowering in the corner, she holds up a demon dog thing and says, "Hey, yeah, you're going to agree to the cease and desist, right?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah. man, like you 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 blew it, you ruined it." 
You like, is, you, you is there not a the great case. irony that if she had yeah. walked up to them without threatening them and said, "Are you going to sign it now?" and then they go, "Yeah," that that's that's better than holding up the fucking demon. <laughs> it, but it it's also highly improper. She's opposing counsel. Their lawyer is yep. not present. Exactly. Like, yep. You can't she can't that. even ta- she can't even talk to them. Like mm-hmm. her, and, her only communication with them needs to be, I cannot talk to you about this case without your counsel present. I cannot do exactly. that. Exactly. It, it's, it's over. She's destroyed it. She destroyed her case. She had it. She nailed she it. She is a great lawyer. She's though. got it. But then she destroyed it. She's, can, we, and like, and, to, can we talk about one other thing with, with the demons real quick though? Oh yeah. Can we talk about Love how the fact that demons. they right were ahead. brought in from the hell dimension Wong didn't send them back to the hell dimension. He actually he sent, sent them, them to else. some snowy mountain place. He unleashed uh, immortal uh, demon, like murder demons <laughs> on some other unwitting place that they clearly are not from. It's like, what the, what the hell was that? Like, oh. why didn't he just open a portal back to the hell dimension and send them through there? I don't and know. Why did he, he, he creates the vortex that eventually sucks them all in. And I'm like, then why yeah. were you sitting there fighting them 1v1 over and over again? Like, just do the... Yeah, why do you she help? Thing. Just, why not lead with... Why do you even get her, considering all the problems it's going to... And also, just the cease and desist. Yeah, because that's, <laughs> that's the biggest problem you have right now, is the cease and desist, not the many, many, many counts of... Like, you unleash demon bats on an audience! Well, she'll You're just give so them a cease very, and desist if they are a problem, and that'll take care of that. Very conveniently, by the way, they can like put up with being hit by She Hulk. She even comments on how they can't, they don't seem to die, but simultaneously they can't escape this room. They can't deal with wood, apparently. <laughs> no, uh, it's like in I guess it was like in scary movie four or whatever, right? They've mastered intergalactic travel, <laughs> but they can't operate a wooden door. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's scary movie three, and the. Uh, I fuck, you know, one of my favorite gags of all things actually is from scary <laughs> movie three is i have infinite respect for the movie just for this one joke i almost uh try and picture this okay they they all the, they they say like all the men should go out there and fight the aliens while the women stay behind and they're like oh okay and they pick up some weapons and one of the characters or even all of them pick up a shovel and they're walking toward them and they're like are you ready and he's like yeah the guy cocks the shovel and the little fucking shell comes out of it. It's, <laughs> it's so fucking good. I swear to God, the, the comment and Leslie Nielsen being in him as well is, is just wonderful. Um, but yeah, uh, everybody's an idiot and it's really annoying to watch and they nearly destroyed the entire world. Um, yeah. But wasn't it fun? Why do we keep doing fun? that? We, 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 didn't we say that She Hulk would be one of the fun. ones that shouldn't have to deal with world ending stakes? And then it was like, whoop, never mind. Well, they couldn't help themselves. They just had to have these crazy scenarios. Yeah. Because it couldn't even, just be one little show. demon that's flying around. They have to chase it like a bat's inside. Yeah, he's kind of cute. Not as good for the trailer, not like, as, it, not it, as yeah. uh, marketable. A literal unkillable flying rodent that you have to just you have to just wrangle it. Like you yeah. have to do that. And it would be actually really bad if this little monster got out and started biting the necks of theater goers or whatever. But exactly. no. friendly boy. Like who knows what kind of crazy, like supernatural illnesses you might have inflicted on all these people. Like he's going to jail. Donnie Blaze going to jail. Perhaps for the rest oh, right, of his yeah, days. Of course. That that was the thing I I meant to bring up. It was just like she's she's threatening them to force them to sign a contract without their lawyers present. When it's just like, why don't you just get him on these horrible, horribly unethical things he's done? Why, why don't you just do that? It's not as fun as threatening him with a bat demon. <laughs> like, why? And this is what I mean, like, you know, they're just like, oh, you just hate it because whatever uh, ascribed motivation, but it's just like, she's so bad at her job. <laughs> this, this, and I think all it was was like the writers thought wouldn't it be funny if she was like holding up the demon dog to get him to sign the cease and desist it's like hey yeah what's duress it's like huh what huh like you duress? just have no idea what is that a doing. is that a super is that like a, uh, is she really really <laughs> tough to kill oh I didn't even realize that she threw the little winged demon and into the wall and it creates the big giant monster yeah. dog yeah, exactly. They don't evolve. Know. It seemed like they made it worse. Are they on a timer or are they, is it prompted by trauma? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It's. I it's thought. I trauma. thought it used to be like getting them wet yeah, or feeding them after midnight, but no, it's just throwing them into a picture frame and suddenly. Um. 
So yeah, I don't know if there was anything else because then we can we can get into the new episodes. Oh, fun times. Oh, I mean, as far as legal stuff, no. But there's this whole thing with the dating that was just Ooh. infuriating. You know what? Ugh, we'll talk about it more me. because we're gonna get confirmation of a particular element of it in episode, well, the trademark episode. Oh, I yeah, Ooh, episode five. Well, uh, oh, I thought you meant like the trademark episode, not the episode about the trademark. I mean, oh, weren't you excited, Rice, when the episode ended? It's like you're being sued by or whatever for Titania for, for the She Hulk name. It's just like, oh, that's going to happen next episode. Ooh, exciting. Well, most of that sentence wasn't necessary. I was excited when the episode ended. Ah. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, what gives? Why can't you just say that the show is pretty damn cool and interesting? What is it with it you is guys? very cool. It's not so much. It's 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 fun. It's so much fun. We're having so much fun. Oh yes, hundred percent. I, I have fun. I'm gonna I go fetch fun. a drink. So I'll oh just be God. a minute, you guys. All right, fun, fun has entered the chat. Oh, that's yes. cool. Uh, that will give me time to uh, address something that I think we've all been thinking, but someone's got to be the one to finally say it. Uh, Nick, your your icon is. It's all wobbly. It's all. I know. Smooth. Yep, it's all, it's it's all wibble wobble. It's off. I don't even know off, how to fix it. It's off kilter. It's well. It's like you. It's it's like you made that one, but where it's in the center, right? If you think I made this, uh, you, I, <laughs> I got news for you. I can't make shit. You don't, someone wait, else. You made don't have it. an official icon for your like. Oh, that your is brand, your official your icon. It's, just, it's so my it's old one. Right? Yeah, it's it's an old one. I uh oh here I can probably update it. I just I never use. Like I never yeah. do anything on Discord, so um, well. Let me see. I can maybe it, maybe see. it was the knowing that your your logo was all wibbly wobbly that kept you from wanting to come on Discord. You didn't want everyone to see it. What the little yeah. wibble wobble? That's what it was. That was too much to bear. Yeah. Let's see. Where is I, the? Uh, how do I turn off? I hate streamer mode. There we go. Uh, I gotta edit this thing. I'll change the avatar. Ooh. Well, because you your, can... your actual the current logo might be fine. It might be just that it got cropped weird when you uh when you were adjusting. No, I think if I remember right, uh, the guy who made it it was off center. Or ah. Whatever. Ah. Let's see. Oh, my heart. Look, I don't, I don't do any of this stuff. <laughs> this is this uh, will help you just blossom into a. A, a new person learning all of these things, adding this skill to your tool belt. What you put on your resume, Discord master, Discord like, oh, icon you, rearranger. Discord. Specifically, your, uh, just yeah. Well, look, yeah. if you put fancier words in, you can make it sound like a real skill. <laughs> yeah, like there we go. Icon, yeah, icon or brand icon management manager. Uh, specialist. Yeah, yeah, yeah Here, specialist. I think, did brand I change it now? Management specialist. Well, well it, it looks the same. for us. Maybe we gotta. Maybe we gotta. Oh no! The, look at a different. It should be changed now. Uh, let's, on my side, it might take a little minute. Your, go okay. your profile. Profile. It's still wibbly wobbly, but it, it might uh, take a moment and then it kicks in. Oh, have or you maybe saved the changes or what? Yeah, I, gotta... I saved the changes on my on my screen. It shows. I could disconnect and reconnect. Oh well, I mean that might do it. Uh, look, I look. Okay. Maybe Rags is super upset about the wibble wobble, but I'm I'm okay. But with Fringy it. is not... also as well. He's he told me that I'm he was also really... very upset no, about it, it's... and no, here, he also I'll... told me that he would deny this in public if we talked about it. So I don't know why you would turn this call into a house I brought, of lies. I brought Fringy in through a portal so that he could tell you that your your icon was wibbly <laughs> wobbly. I too yeah. noticed it. I mean, I've been looking at it the whole time. Like I've been staring at it, going, "I God, I hate this dude." It's, it's Here, like me... when you have that friend I'll, who's got a I'll, giant I'll... tumor on their head, and you're just like, oh. "Here, I'll be, I'll be right back. I just disconnect and reconnect the call. That should do it." <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. No. No. The wibbly. Jeez. I guess we're just. We just have. You've got to just live with yourself now. You <laughs> have to like accept just... the wibble wobble. Learn to. Yeah. Uh, learn to love it. It what is it? that Maybe. image? No. That's that's a gunt cat. Oh, oh okay. so, you've got a different one. I does he? I still see the wibble wobble, but on I see still it's, it's wibble wobble. Yeah. The Not shock you, of your you profile the... pictures managed to kill oh. the Wong train in chat. Nice, <laughs> kill the Wong train. If, the if Wong you go, train if, was on again. Gunt Damn. cat. Yeah. 
All you have to do is look on, on the YouTube video itself. It has changed for the audience. So I'm very proud of what has happened now. Oh, cool. let it be known that the Wong train is now <laughs> off the rails. Kill the Wong. Dude, the Wong train. Cat train. The Wong That's train should be studied. That's been going forever. Um, so... What's the gun cat? What's that? You have to, I don't know the lore of the gun cat. Oh boy. <laughs> so that who's, is uh who's cat slash gun that is um the gunt of a man named ethan ralph oh he's yeah he's yeah absolutely oh i know that yeah he had that horrific yeah. gun yeah the gunt yeah people may be tempted to think that what they are seeing in the picture is like a butt a a that is not <laughs> that is a stomach it's a, fr it's a front butt a Umar. front butt yes yes that is a bifurcated uh stomach sack that's when there's so much adipose tissue. stomach sack it's there's so much adipose tissue in in your in your belly region oh that your body God. actually has to create a ridge of support going back to your spine that's the indent <laughs> oh so that it can goodness. hold those two pustule filled oh, no. so is gross. that what it's full of yeah just nasty just you know <laughs> fat and bile oh, and goodness. whatever at what point do you let yourself that? Oh my do god! Do you not have wholesome avatars? Gosh, you keep this one on back. <laughs> I'm in a pumpkin, and you're like, "Ooh, this is the this is the way to okay, do it." Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Brain membranous. I can uh, let I me change it. On it. That makes it okay, right? Just back in. God, it's picky people. I'm telling you. I know oh, it's I'm... ridiculous. Let me change Absolutely. the avatar. Yeah, yeah the uh, the Wong train. I've seen it in fact. Um, I haven't seen it fully infect Friday Night Tights yet, but I've seen it fully infect Open Bar, Real BBC, and it's done EFAP before. Even uh, the, the Wong train infected the uh, the Doctor Strange premiere. It's, um, it's crazy. People just desperately want to do Wong films, like Civil Wong, or a Beautiful Wong. You know, you, all of it's there. Um... I mean, you know, you, you kind of, this, this is America, freedom of speech, yeah. not get to talk about whatever That's they right. want to talk about. I just, yeah. I wonder if there are people in chat who are like, I want to talk about what they're talking That's about. True. It's like, no. I want to talk about She-Hulk. Uh, I want to talk about the good, the bad, and the Wongly, and we have to balance all of that out. Exactly. I can't believe they've missed two Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. You sure? They probably did that one. They do like all of them. That's true. In fact, now that we've talked Here, I'm, about I'm, it, I'm, that'll be going for forever, basically. But let the Wong one in. I'll be, uh, I'll be right back. I, I gotta, you know, reset the avatar. <laughs> or let the right Wong in, I suppose, would be. Hey, that's uh, better. No, it's the old one. Yes, but it's different. Or I guess it hasn't changed for me, so. Oh, well. Oh, that's better, I think. Yeah, that's, that's, that's better. That's better. That is better. Yeah. We're, we're proud. There you I go. think that's better. Yeah, that's better. You when go. you talk, you can't even notice. I just had a, I just had a really old one in there. That was like the first mm -hmm. logo someone drew for me uh, mm. a, long, a long time ago. And now you killed it. It is a fine it. logo. No, it's a I don't fine even know. Logo. I don't even know. Like, I don't even know where the file that was the thumbnail or, or the uh, little image there. I don't even know where that is anymore. Well. So. It's gone. Uh -oh. You've killed it. Pretty good. Uh, are you guys ready to talk about episode five? I'm sorry. Yeah. Nick, I got to warn you. What we just did was like the quick summary. Now. Oh, I know. <laughs> now we're doing the long boy <laughs> summary. The same you see, our precious viewers don't know what happens in episode five and six. They got to know. And so we tell them piece That's by long, piece. Yeah. And oh, they get nice. to... Apparently they survived this because they come back. So, you know. Good for them, I think. Um, so, the first thing that we get established from, from the previous episode is that Titania's made a whole-ass fucking product. A, a line of products, actually, called a she Yeah, a line of, yeah, of, of, what are they called? Beauty products? Yeah, or... what the hell was the timeline on this? I told you, this, I, this show is very confusing when it comes to time. It's, it's kind of like Rings yes. of Power. You don't know how much time passes in between scenes or moments? Because if we're supposed to right. believe that she got hit by a desk and she was upset, uh, uh, she Hulk, and then she decided, "I'll get back at you by making ma naming my perfume after you." Uh, okay, you know, like that—that's interesting. Um, as revenge, I guess. Uh, she tries a different form of revenge in the episode after this one, but I don't know. That just seems like a really weird 
conclusion to make that, that I, I, I am going to get you by using your name to promote my own perfume. Okay. Okay, so, so the interesting thing about this to me is that it is the most stereotypically catty thing I can think of in a show that is not supposed to represent women as catty and petty, but the women writers just couldn't help themselves. Like, ha, huh, I know how we'll get that bitch. I'll steal her name. I'll just take her name so she can't even use it, which is ludicrous sure. for reasons we'll get into. But like that, that was their go-to is that women are so petty that when they're mad about something, rather than do anything else, she's going to take her name. Like that, that's the idea. And Titania's kind of brain dead. From the time that we spend with her, every time she talks, she just seems like she's there's just air in her skull. Um, I do like how they're making fun of women influencers in that way, right? Like, oh, she's super popular on Instagram. She must be functionally moronic. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, and she does that have that line in the uh, later episode where she's like, "Oh, you're gonna share this on Instagram? Do you have like 50 followers? Like that? that that's all. Oh, yeah. Like oh." Well, and and this should tell you everything you need to know about the physical level of attraction of the writers of the show, or at least how they <laughs> perceive themselves, right? What? They, they project that the pretty people in this show are monsters. And the, so you can infer that they're all unattractive, like that they could never be Instagram models. Well, they, like, they try to present our protagonist in her human form as a, an unattractive and unwanted woman by men. Which is weird. Which is, right. No, I mean, like, men, not man as in mankind. That might be also true. But I mean, <laughs> like, men. men. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, like, they, they act as if this person, no man would ever want to date her or hang out with her. Only the weirdo losers would want to even talk to her. Or, no, she didn't even get matches. And it's it's uh, crazy because she's like she's not the hottest chick ever, but she's not ugly. She's attractive. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's, no, we, nobody believes she's not getting loads of matches. Nobody believes it. No way. She's yeah. an attractive woman. Th no one believes that her phone isn't full of unwanted dick pics already. Like they're they're already just flooding in there, and guys would just start spray painting their penises green and taking pictures of those and be like, "I can get it, baby." Oh, like, it's the jolly like, green giant. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> and they imply. That like dating in your thirties just means you're only meeting terrible people, and then once you sell She Hulk, then you'll get the good ones. Only he's not one of the good ones because he doesn't want to date Jen. That uh, that piece of shit. Once a woman hits thirty, your life is over. You should just kill yourself. Well, I guess it's, very... it goes both ways because all the male over thirty people are just crazy weirdos. She describes one of them as monstrous, by the way. Yes. Which one did she describe but, as monstrous? That's a great question, Rice, because I had to go back to the scene to check his dialogue because I was like, holy shit, monstrous. Was it just the writer? No, it was the wait, was he? No, because the right the director, writer, cinematographer guy. It was it was the guy who said kind of weird things. I'm not gonna say he's not weird, but to call him monstrous is absurd. He said I, like he um, was, he was awkward. Yeah, he said like, can your skin put up with being cut by vibranium? And then she's like, I don't know. And then he's like, I wish I had some to test. And then she's like, okay. And then he's like, wow, you're such a specimen. And then he says, uh, as a compliment. That, Which is a thing that you know, people he's, might he's say clearly, just casually. You know. This is the thing. When you, when you don't know someone to that degree, it's just like, oh, he's just really awkward. But yeah, she refers to him as a creepy, disgusting, monstrous guy. Have, have, has there been any backlash online about how anti-trans um, this, this, the whole dating thing was? Oh, I'm sure. When you, when so you really... I'm sure they're bitching about it. Like some trans activist has to have picked up on the fact that she went, created a dating profile based on one presentation. She presents that way. She gets the guy. When she wakes up in the morning, she presents differently. He looks at her and is like, I'm not into this at all. I was into that. Like that is, that is like quintessentially anti-trans right like you found out that this was actually a dude well he's presented is as what the, happened uh, the bad guy in that scenario right which that that's the the popular presentation is is that uh you know that that's that's the bad thing but um god i maybe. i guess maybe maybe we'll maybe that's why there wasn't so. maybe that's why there wasn't backlash but just the whole scenario is like he woke up and found out that she wasn't who he thought she was. So, oh my god! So, and he like very politely leaves. But of oh, course, yeah, the... and he doesn't. 
Uh, he doesn't explode on at her, or he doesn't. He just, he just yeah, you're, you're right. He just leaves, and and later on, he only has nice things to say. He just felt that he wasn't given the whole truth, which is as far as he goes with it. Which is interesting which is in terms true. of like um, what it would like like how he could. I was gonna say he probably could. I don't know. I don't know how far he could take it legally, um, because this is like unprecedented, right? Her specific situation, the fact that she can turn into a different person body type wise. At will. Yeah. Yeah, they probably I, have to argue like how could he have known if he did what well it, it she she knew people didn't know. Uh she uses the fact that she's he, she held yeah. as a surprise in uh, one of the hood dates. So she knows that some there people wasn't don't know. a yeah, there was an element of deception there. Um so And she knows that some people won't date her if they know she's Jen. She uses that to her advantage as well, to like not let people know. At the very least, all these sort of confluence of factors should have made her realize it's like, this is a unique scenario that I'm in, and some people might want to know these particular things about me, like, you know. Like I'm if you have old. AIDS. It's just, um, it's, if she already knew, like in an earlier date, when she said that she was She-Hulk, that that would come as a surprise, like that should be enough for her to realize it's like, Maybe not everybody in the world, based on a couple of news reports they've seen, understands my particular situation. See, you say that. I don't even um, think she ever thought of that being the case. I think she knew, and that she was I'm hoping that, in the morning after, like, here we go, hopefully he's chill with this, and then he's like, ah, he's not, that's, fuck. That's uh, the best faith way to, like, to, to present it with her, but yeah, yeah. I think, um, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. So the, the issue, if I'm not mistaken, with the Hulk genetic thing right is that blood contact with another person has one of two possible outcomes kill them uh, a bulk them a lethal dose of gamma radiation or uh they become a hulk right like that's those are the two possibilities of yeah, blood, and, uh, blood bruce, transfer bruce said it's like one in a million that it would turn you into a hulk right and the rest of it is just you die yeah from gamma radiation so i mean i'm not a biologist but like, there's something about the exchange of fluids for bloodborne sort of pathogens, and and it should be like checked. Sexual transmission. Like, oh, like, you're right. Yeah, yeah. She, she has really sex with this dude. Actually. Yeah, no, you're absolutely yeah. correct. The, that's that's something that should have been. Uh, the, I know, I know this show doesn't want to do it, but I mean, Bruce and her should probably have had that conversation. She should have asked him. Yeah, like because she had sex with that guy. If there was any sort of you know, I know she has impenetrable skin, but I, I would assume, I don't know, I, maybe I'm making too well, many assumptions about there. sex. I think, no, if, you're, if you're highlighting something fair. We this. don't know, right? There's doubt, and that's yeah. enough to check it out. You, If someone said, like, it'll definitely kill anybody if you don't have sex, it was like, no, not definitely, but, I mean, you don't want to risk that, right? Yeah, it seems really irresponsible <laughs> to do. The lawyer that, isn't that, aware of how this could, like, fall apart ethically because... Of course she's not. She wouldn't have any familiarity with how things like that work. She should, like, if have to give him Bruce. informed consent of... I know it's California, so, like, you don't have to do informed consent on some stuff, like AIDS, so apparently now. That's really but, progressive. But, like, this isn't just, this isn't just like, oh, you could get HIV and, and maybe have to take medication for the rest of your life. This is, you could die in the morning. <laughs> It's absurd, and uh, I just don't. I think the show, if they ever thought about this in the writers' room, they were like, "No, we're not covering that. We're not talking about that. Fuck that." That's um, not fun, and this is a fun zone. Exactly. That's probably what they would say. They're like, "We're just having fun," and uh, yeah, like, isn't it? Isn't it so hilarious? On her way to work, she sees billboards mm -hmm. celebrating this whole She Hulk, blah, blah, blah. and I was just like, billboards. <laughs> And like interviews about the She Hulk perfume. It's like, how did you do this so fast? What the fuck? Well, yeah, because when did you? Because we later find out the end. I'm jumping ahead a bit. She wins this case, of course. She wins because she used She Hulk in her dating profile, which was like demonstrating, oh, you've used the name before. She trademarked it. Um, she had that date, and the next morning she got the uh the the um the court order like she got the um the the notice of like titania's trademark and that she was infringing on it um like when did they get trademarked when what? when did this happen the other the other thing is okay uh the trademark thing evidence that you used she hulk in a dating profile or Evidence that you identify as She-Hulk 
does not make you using the name in commerce. Like that, that, so trade, it's a trademark. You have to be using it in trade. You can't just be like, she's not She Hulk Law Firm. She, she works for G L H and K or whatever, right? Like, yeah, that's the firm. If they had the, you know, uh, if they had like, she hulk's uh superhero division law division or whatever that would be used in trade her name is never used in trade anywhere if she had made t-shirts that said she hulk on them that would have been fine having it as a dating profile unless she's a whore is not <laughs> actually using it in trade so the the entire premise of the trademark breaks down so fast how they analyze the question is completely incorrect because you know, some guy named Bill doesn't have a trademark on Bill because he identifies as Bill like everybody else can do it. Plus, even if they did on the trademark issue, the markets for these two things, perfume versus legal advice, are so disparate that likely both of them would have fully trademarkable property. Like, yeah, yeah, uh, like Gerber or something like that. Berber. Gerber. Yeah, but I mean, like, there's there's other Gerbers out there, right? That is yeah, not what I'm saying many Gerbers, yeah. different, many different Gerbers. There's and, a gaggle and if, of Gerbers. If you're Gerbers auto parts, you're not selling baby food. And everybody, no one would be confused and think, oh, wow, this is so, the uh, Gerber okay. baby food transmission. So they, they did try to account for this. I think I might be looking too far into this, but the whole argument in court is that she's banking on She Hulk's sort of you know, uh, zeitgeist around her to sell the perfume. And then uh, they even they even show us her retarded cousin, Chad. He's like, I've been selling these for you. And then it's like, oh, no, that's not for me. That's actually for someone else, you fool. And it's like, oh, see, so she's benefiting from blah, blah. But, like, that's such Which a bad example. He has to be, like, one brain cell to be able to have thought, oh, this thing that's clearly got nothing to do with my cousin that I will not ask her about. I will now purchase in bulk and set, resell it. Which, by the way, isn't that illegal? Well, it, uh, actually, I don't think purchasing in bulk and reselling is illegal. I would have thought, like, I mean, could Titania take issue with that, I guess is what I should say. Maybe. I can't, um, I can't remember how that works. It depends on if, he, I guess if he's if, representing as the brand. Like, if he's representing as ti like as a Titania official reseller or something. Okay. All right. That's one thing. But if, yeah. if you just, like, if you just buy stuff and sell it, that's generally okay. But, um, that's what, no, you, the, I mean, that's what most stores do. They don't, they don't represent themselves as the maker of the products. They just sell them. Right. Yeah, so if if he's Titania's brand or or the She Hulk brand, that's one thing, and and he could be committing a crime, it it does or or violating something. It doesn't really matter. the The other issue with this though is that there is a cause of action that has nothing to do with trademark. That is what's going on here, and it's um it's it's a private cause of action. It's the right it's the right of publicity, uh, is what it's called. There's a famous case where. Christian Dior, uh, I think it was a long time ago, um, used, uh, what was it Jackie Kennedy's name, like face to sell perfume that she didn't actually authorize. And, and that's like the landmark case on it. And, uh, it, it's, it's infringing on someone's right of publicity because you cannot be said to endorse a product that you don't actually endorse. They didn't have to go trademark. There's already a legal cause of action that has <laughs> nothing to do with trademark. <sighs> that's what uh, pushes her into action i think by the way her retarded cousin selling without having realized it has nothing to do with her yeah i guess that they established him to be dumb as fuck so <laughs> they're they're trying to get i think to the the trademark infringement element of likelihood of customer confusion i think maybe like they're like oh yeah someone has to be kind of confused by it but it's like again only if Jen Walters actually has a trademark on She-Hulk. And, and first to register is not how trademark works either. Like first to register creates a presumption that you're the first to own it, but it's only a presumption and it's absolutely rebuttable and it happens all the time. If someone was actually using a name and trade pre-existing, they get a common law trademark. You don't have to register to own something um, because that's insane. Uh, in the United States system, if you've created something and are using it, 
You don't have to register your trademark unless you want to enforce it. Or if someone else tries to register it, then you have to contest it. And that's like what would be us. going on. Like yeah. we've like Fringy with his uh Fringy with his bird and Mahler with his maskman, me yes. with a dog, and you with, you know, like Rakita Law and all that. Gun. No one could use those and the names and the likenesses and start doing something with it. Oh, yeah, Mine's a little different because it's my name. And that's another problem with this. If she Hulk, so you, you can't trademark your name. Like, it's my name. like, because someone else might have the name. Um, so there, that's why the right of publicity is a whole different issue than trademark is because you, you can't get a trademark on just a name. Um, so for me, like naming myself Ricada law, like there could be another, there are actually a couple other Ricada lawyers, uh, and, and they would be able, or I think there's only one, but, uh, they would be able to open a Ricada law. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think my cousin's too worried about it, but, uh, <laughs> I did, they, uh, they could open a Ricada law office and I would not be able to sue them because it's just their name. Right. Like, so it's, yeah. you don't get to trademark a name. You have to create something unique. Uh, and she Hulk is a weird case because it's like an alter ego or another moniker or whatever, but she also didn't create it. Would there, would <laughs> that's, the, that's true. The would, would there be any, um, sort of moment in the, in the court case of like Titania, how did you come to the name she Hulk? Because the assumption is she just stole it to steal the, the prestige of this superhero versus like, if you can prove you came up with it uniquely on your own for your own reasons like that would help but like what reason could she even it's not like she's impossible to come up with her own thing she's like oh, i threw a bunch of words into a fucking sock and <laughs> like i just grabbed them and that's what i came out with okay it's the uh, blah, blah blah but would that come up would that be a necessary piece of information to all of this i mean it, it should all of all of this uh if she has some reason to be to have she hulk i the the I guess the other question would be, is she capitalizing on Hulk? But she's not using any imagery of She-Hulk. She's not using any imagery of Hulk. She's yeah. not even using the same color scheme. So how can she be said to be, like, I'm on Titania's side on this. How can she be said to be infringing on anything that is even presumably owned or representing Jen Walters? Like, there's there's nothing about it. She didn't take a picture of her and th slap her on the, you know, on the logo or on the label or anything. Uh, it's pink, all of it's pink, none of it's green. Um, and it's all just about female empowerment through makeup or whatever, like everything else. So it, uh, the whole thing's a mess, um, for, for trademark or right of publicity purposes. It's, it's all a mess and I hate it. I want it to die slowly. Well, you don't get to, cause we're, we're making nope. sure that you're alive to talk about this show. All right. I will plug in. I will I will cycle blood of children into you to keep you alive. Okay, that's how that works, right? <laughs> oh, good. I'm in Congress now. Yay! Uh, so, all right. Yeah. So, Chad comes in. Chad. It is Chad, isn't it? It's like really name. Chad. I've never heard of that name before. D H E A D. <laughs> it's like all right. That's a name, I guess. Um. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you're selling this stuff for her. And it's just, yeah, like I said, it's just such a, like, you you wouldn't ask ahead of time. Just be like, oh, cousin, how's, how's that perfume shit you're doing? I decided I would go on my own volition to just start selling it for you without asking you anything about it. Uh, it's weird that there's no imagery to do with you on it, though. Not even green. It's, it's weird, not actually. Not even it's green. Wasn't that the woman that you fought? Like, yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> I don't watch the news, so I wouldn't know. Uh, it's annoying yes. how many people are unaware of that, by the way. Uh, you'd think the whole fucking world would be aware of a court case where a woman burst through a wall and threw a desk at the jury and so much just superhero Titania saved Titania had fans, apparently, after throwing a table at a court. Like, in a courtroom full of people. Yeah, I love that. I love to see that in people that I follow. It's very inspiring. Yeah, I feel empowered. Not only did that happen in the courtroom, but also the prosecuting attorney burst into a giant green alien looking monster, <laughs> caught a yeah. desk and punched the other superhero that just busted through a wall into the thing or like knocked her unconscious with one blow after she did a slow motion flying sidekick. Like what the. Hey, it's no, that kind of world that doesn't even it, make the news. It, it's it annoying be too everywhere. because like, that's huge. This a second Hulk. That's huge news. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
And uh, it's huge news because the first Hulk is a literal danger to civilization. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I mean, he worked out okay in the Avengers, but Hulk is always first presented as horrifying. To have another one just crop up, like the, the automatic suspicion should be, this This is terrifying. You see that they were very proud of themselves for editing the main title sequence a couple of times whenever the joke turns up in the show. You got She-Hulk yeah. by Titania and it's pinky people, whatever, and it's like, ha-ha! And then they do uh, uh, Just Jen, Attorney at Law at one point. And they're, again, yeah. very proud of themselves for something that they could just... It's a typeface, right? I assume that they could just change. And then they're like, ha-ha, I did a thing. I'm talented. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you, man. You compare it to the Simpsons couch gags, like these full-blown oh. different sequences. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not fair. <laughs> it's not you like really you have like more money thing. than the Simpsons, though. That is true. They did have access to far more money. And they could probably hire whoever they wanted. Why so, does she dress like a child? I don't know. Because that's uh, fashion. Uh, it, what was that thing we were watching where where it was there was a huge fashion component and we had no idea? Oh, Cruella. Cruella, that's the one. It's Cruella. Whenever none it, of us had fashion, any clue. Yeah, oh, we had okay. no idea if fashion was good or not. We just had to rely on what the show was telling us. Oh, that's fashionable. Then I guess it's fashionable. Or, oh, that's ugly. He's like, I got because it all looks like shit to me. But I guess some. It's just I don't even know. I don't even know. Why does super strong and durable Titania have a big bodyguard near her anyway? Like, Why to project, is she? What, what, what is general in her power and vulnerability? What? Where'd she get her powers? Like, what? Why what would you care about they? that, Ringy? Why wouldn't you care? Where would Mister Immortal? Get we literally his have an immortal man who just shows up. <laughs> That's true. He's just around. I guess we don't care anymore. Nope, we do not care anymore. Which is They're a shame. Just everywhere, the genie has yeah. been let out of the think... bottle. Pandora's box has been opened. With the the grand failures of world building, the smaller little bits like, oh, there's a guy over there who's super strong. It's like, they're just going to let that seep in. And it's like, they, they, those I are small, so. they drop in the buckets compared to like fucking what we're dealing Scovia with. Scovia cords. Yeah, yeah, we're done yeah, now. So. so, Jen goes in and she's like, you, you, you're an asshole. You've been using my stuff and stop it. That's like her whole plan is to just say stop it. When I think, um, Jen, if you've got two brain cells, maybe, maybe you need more than one. Should have figured out, like, with this enterprise being this enormous, saying stop is not going to be anywhere near enough. Like, uh... Yep. Yeah. Feels like a lot of money's been invested into this. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy that this happened in one day, really. Some of the bother me. I think, uh, because oh. I, I watched this... I know, right? But I watched this, uh, like, soon after it came out with, uh, with Fringy, and I, I was just like, did we just complete the scene? And she didn't ask why. Like, that's one of the, at least, the nugget of information you can actually get that's going to be somewhat useful in terms of Get it on record now. Why did you do this? And you could even record her if, she, if it's vindictive, you know? Yeah, you've got... Well, your your friend is there as a witness who could testify well, to the opposing party's actually, yeah. statement. Yeah, but I mean, even even if not... Like, you, didn't, who knows? You don't know them or whatever. Right, right. They don't want to do it. Your friend is right there who's going to be with you and could testify in court. She said this, and it won't be hearsay because it's opposing party statement against their interests. Like, so... Yeah, you would want to know, like, why are you doing this? Well, because I'm trying to screw you over. Oh, okay. Well, there. <laughs> we solved that dilemma. Exactly, because, like, you... That's really useful if you plan to take her on in court. That's, like, gonna be perfect. But uh, even if you don't, you at least get the satisfaction of knowing. Because what if there... Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like a 0.001% chance this is a coincidence. But let's rule it out, shall we? But, but the she other didn't thing... even try. Like the, the whole other thing about this is, I mean, she's being, so if I'm trying to get the procedural nature of this down, she's served, I guess, with a lawsuit alleging trademark infringement, right? Like Titania sues She-Hulk. She-Hulk yes. sues Titania. She well, sues she her back. She counter sues, right? Yeah. She counter yeah. sues. All right. She countersues, but the original suit is for trademark infringement, but She-Hulk isn't using the name in trade, like anywhere. There's Correct. no, people just call her She-Hulk. She can. Hey, dating in your thirties is a job. My name is Michelin from now on. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to walk around and be Michelin. I'll wear a puffy jacket and I'll just be Michelin. Michelin are going to sue not, you, buddy. It's like, I'm not. 
I'm not selling anything. And the star people. <laughs> I'm not fixing tires. I'm not selling anything. I'll even walk around and be like, nice tires. My name's Michelin. And you're like, oh, like. <laughs> nice tires. I you know, like it's a man Michelin named Michelin man. myself. I can appreciate high quality tires. It's like, you can do that all day. They can't stop you. There's nothing to stop. You didn't do anything. <sighs> so I'm, I'm like, the whole lawsuit's frivolous. You should just motion for dismiss uh, on, on the frivolity of it. I'm not using the name in trade. Or she should have contested it in a completely different way. But never mind. We can go on. Well, yeah, we get uh, here. the B Being plot angry. is fucking incredible. Uh, oh, wait, we're not. We're not. Are we there yet? Pretty much. Yeah. The, the, all we get is like She-Hulk is like, this doesn't bother me. And then she like destroys her own equipment. And it's like, Haha, see, it does bother her. Funny. <laughs> yeah. It's very. Clever. Yeah, because if you point out the joke. If you, if you make a joke very obvious to begin with, and then you double down and point it out, because they know the people who want She-Hulk can enjoy it have have no mental capability to just... They do not have two brain cells to rub together and make a spark. Very dumb. So they have to really make sure that you understood the joke that has occurred. Very and important. No way does this vapid... Uh, paralegal use a Surface notebook, right? She's definitely going to have a MacBook. 100%. Oh, yeah. The, the, like Apple simplifies it to the point where you just have to do a couple clicks and your job is done. But there's no input really from the user. Especially <laughs> if you only have yeah. to type out a page. Poor girl. Yeah. She, I think she's just sitting there complaining that she doesn't have more money as well, right? Yeah, basically. Um, By the way, the, the, the red on her eyes looks really bad. It's a curious choice for um, makeup, I suppose. For wearing, a, for wearing a pink jacket, too. Like, not to get too, too weird on color coordination, but pinks and reds, typically you're not mixing those. I have no clue. I proudly do not understand fashion. <laughs> I it's run a, away it's from a, it. It's a look, all right? It's a look. If um, It's a look. So, is her look clothes. like is her look like nouveau burka? Like she's covering as much of herself as possible with this outfit, no, but she doesn't see that seem sweet pinky action. She doesn't seem like the type of person who would be, you know, like full body coverage, right? She, she wears dresses like well, so this is a, supposed a to be like very, a weird outfit, like a risque real estate agent. I can see that turtleneck and long sleeves, like. Maybe she's, she's like, cold. I, I have a job to do, and I'm good at it. I'm going to meet with clients, but you know what? We're going to have some fun. Yeah. And yeah. Speaking of fun, Buying this a new scene, house doesn't have to be boring. We find out Pug, his name is Pug, he wants to buy shoes, and he needs her help. So, that's happening. Uh, yeah. This whole, this whole conversation struck me as bizarre because the man was not being cut down and humiliated at every possible opportunity. In fact, Only because he seemed to because be he collects shoes, he collects Iron Man threes. You don't want Iron Man threes. He he well, acts she, he, stereotyp like a stereotypical woman, right? Like he's doing a, a predominantly no. female oriented activity no. of collecting shoes. No, 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 no. Collecting shoes is a big thing, like basketball shoes, or as they call them. I think that's the idea. He collects like superhero themed yeah. shoes, is it? Yeah. Yeah, he, he's like shoe collecting isn't just it's not this lady thing. There are guys who collect shoes, but they're like basketball shoes and limited edition Jordans and things like that. Well, again, yeah, that's, in that's this universe, that they like connect on. You could probably believe that he's sneaker heads is what they're I just called. thank you, chat sneaker heads. Oh, is it? Is that what they call? I mean, I, I know in this fact, exists. There's an auction site that I use to buy like Xboxes and Legos and stuff like that. Uh, like rare Lego sets hmm. um, that uh, that actually started by selling shoes, by selling rare shoes. Uh, like, it, it, you know, I just one of the things I really appreciate about it, his character yeah. is that this guy's character. Oh, he really does. OK, here we go. Hmm? He he puts the converse in conversation. Oh, my God. I literally yeah, just yeah. got a knock on my door. I'm okay, gonna let you sit with a little clap. That was the joke police showing up at your door <laughs> for that one. <laughs> Heads up! I just hear like gunfire. <laughs> <laughs> you had a weapon. 
Now the the uh, the website is um, it's StockX, and yeah, they got started by selling rare shoes, I guess, and now they sell rare, you know, rare other things in this auction Whoa. thing. It's really simple that to use, but really um, I got no, I I hate I hate how this guy talks. I hate him. <laughs> I hate. I hate. hate. Is it redundant to say I don't? I don't care. Don't want to see any more of this plot line. It's like, which one do you want to see? And I'm like, okay, touche. He he talks like someone who is not. I I wouldn't expect someone who speaks in this manner to be like in a a lawyer office. Yeah, it yeah, seems out of him... place. If this was like a normalish, casual guy talking about this, it would make a lot of more sense. But I suppose it's supposed. I do. I think this is their attempt unusual. at being like, eh, this guy. He's not so. He's not so stuffy and boring, is he? He collects shoes. How about that? That's character. Like, he's oh. gonna be like. He's gonna be like a one of those weird like paths for some character to have an acceptable romantic encounter with. Oh, like, dude, I'm not even sure you'll be allowed to have a girlfriend. I feel like they'll. No, he's no, no. He's the loser who can't get a girl. He's, no, he's no, no, that guy. That honor. That's Let me clarify. I'm not saying they're going to. This is going to be the guy who models the acceptable guy, but he will never actually have it because, right. again, the show is written by women. <laughs> who, hey. who, like, no, it's not a general women. This is this is no, a I was show just say written. That some some, some stereotype. Maybe that some men like this do exist, and this is great to make fun of them, even though they're saying that this guy's great. Right, because the, the the women writers of this show clearly hold low opinions of themselves and blame the entire world for their low opinions of themselves. And that that drips through every single scene that's written here. It's the only thing they've done right is portray how terrible they feel that they are for the world and how it's not their fault. Well, yeah, Drinker, Drinker's theory when we were reviewing, I think, the first three episodes was like, this show is like a big old wish fulfillment that these women have been in these circumstances and that this is what they wish they had done in them. And, um, that's my potentially well my response to that was my assumption is they wish they were in the situations at all they don't, I don't think they've yes, been, been that able seems to, more likely yeah I don't think they've really lived the lives that got them into the situations that they can then talk about and, well it's the handsome when the handsome cordial and um, the guy comes to you at the bar and compliments your beauty and he's, he's polite and you 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 treat him like he's a creep and a loser and then he just leaves without a second thought but leaves the door open for future social interactions politely that's sort of the scene that really cements that these things have never happened to you there's no way you'd actually you might think that you would do that and it might feel really empowering and strong and whatever you want to project here in the show but if that actually happened to you in real life you would be like flustered because you'd be so like oh my gosh you know this guy's talking to me and he's handsome and he's you know polite and he's nice and he's complimentary and it's the everyone clapped thing where you're just like i don't, I I don't really believe like, you the... go girl you showed him yeah you did the right thing even though you didn't do the right thing you know the they often yeah. do the wrong thing <laughs> you did the exact opposite of what you should have done you're bad at behaving so yeah uh obviously we and I, I, oh yeah go ahead I, I just I I love also as as we progress with this pug guy or whatever, the fact that this is as Jen Walters puts it, one of the most prestigious law firms in the country. Right, mm -hmm. this guy is a lawyer at that law firm. He is not an idiot. He is not unskilled. He would have had to work really hard at either at law school or some other firm to get to where he is, but they're going to treat him like he's a dumb child. The entire show. It's like, That's this fun. guy. How fun is he, that? That is fun. It's the fun, it's had, the fun rule. This guy would have had to graduate in like the top 5% class of one of the top 10 Ivy league schools in the nation to no, get to where he no. is. Remember, this is She-Hulk universe. He didn't have to do anything. It's like all those men in the boardroom. Ugh. They just got it. <laughs> that comment they makes no sense, right? I it. hate that comment Remember? so much. She's like, oh, you guys never had to be hired for a superficial element of your personality that you cannot change. You had to do it for with work. It's like, okay. <laughs> no, but I, that's, the, that's the... She's complaining about something that's good. It's like they had to earn their positions. Meanwhile, I got hired for something that I can't even change about myself that I don't want to be recognized for solely. And it's just like, why are you saying that like a criticism? It doesn't even make sense. <laughs>
This is actually our criticism of how you get the job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She's like, oh. The problem. You've we, we, explained we, injustice. Uh, it's but such a it's, classic moment that we've highlighted it like almost every time we stream about She-Hulk that he's like, people will think I was hired for, uh, you know, diversity essentially, right? Or, or not not exactly the same, but it's applicable. You, you, you're yeah. hired for a thing that makes you different than a lot of people or everyone even in this circumstance, not because of your skill. Which is really frustrating for her. And I'd be like, yeah, that is frustrating. That's fucked up. You shouldn't be hired for something like that. You should be hired for how good you are at the job. So right. why are you saying so that you people will... you should be will, fired. <laughs> like she's saying, why, you know, it sucks that people will think that's why. It's like, that is why. It's 100% the reason. And you have to either be comfortable with that being the reason or you shouldn't take the job. And I but agree. she took the job. Yeah, that's the thing. I agree with her. It's fucked up that they're doing that. They're using you. That's, that's, that's totally fucked up. But then she's like, yes, but big office. <laughs> You're like, ah, okay. Big office and a fridge full of waters and Red Bulls. <laughs> oh yeah. And when she's like, oh, I'm going to have to buy more clothes now. Like... <laughs> okay. It kind of um there was that moment in episode four, right, when she's fighting the demon bats and she's talking about the handsome doctor man who never gets a name. And it's like, oh, he's nice and sweet and he's hot. Not that that should matter, but it does. It's like you just can't help yourself, really. No. Like, in terms he's, of um, these these he's, sort of weird like self owns. He's know. a literal walking ten. Like everything oh, yeah, well, uh, we, <laughs> uh, we are jumping ahead a little bit, but at the end of the episode, like he gets chastised, and he gets chastised without any reference to his name because he doesn't have one. He is the handsome man. <laughs> it's kind of incredible that he's being shit on for being like um, superficial when the show and the characters don't even know what his name is or care to give him one. Which um, it's kind of incredible. Uh, viewers with a strong memory, we did encounter this with Wonder Woman eighty four. We had. Uh... The guy who was credited specifically as handsome man, which um, I feel like if you mm -hmm. went the direction of saying hot woman, uh, people would be like, that is fucked up. You shouldn't just call it. Oh, guys, you remember our destination where a character is just referred to as MILF? <laughs> that is her character name on IMDb is MILF. <laughs> 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 oh, you used fair. to be able to get away with it. Yeah, they I was going to gonna have, say. Like, like attractive dancer one through six or whatever. Yeah. You know, no, but, but, but the they thing. were literally just in the background there. They didn't have lines and an entire scene and a backstory. <laughs> like they're just, that's the only descriptor yeah. they could come up with. And, and to this be, guy is like, they could have called him pediatric neurosurgeon. Like if they didn't well, want to call him name. Call him John, whatever. Fuck it. John. <laughs> Fine. Call him Nick. The guy she bangs. There you go. Guy, guy who is banged. Guy. Oh, well. Guy, guy who gets cradled like a baby. Yeah. God, that was so emasculating, too. <laughs> he deserved it, to be honest. Oh, uh, so, yeah, next up they arrive at the... Pulls him the drip broker, where he gets the shoes from. And uh, we're here because they're trying to go through him to find someone who can make a new costume, super suit, whatever, for, uh, for She-Hulk. That's a, that's a mission they got. And, like, I don't know exactly what they were trying to do here for funnies. It's really hard to decipher the jokes in this show sometimes. You go, um, it's like, oh, you ready to order? And he goes, Alonzo sent me. as like a code. And he's like, yeah. uh, what? And then because things are not being understood very well, but the guy is clearly speaking English, um, the paralegal just starts go speaking in Mandarin. It's like, why? And then the guy goes, is that Chinese? I don't speak Chinese. Um, but he looks Asian. That's he should know Chinese. If you look, that's Asian, how it works in movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Supposed yeah. to know all languages. Uh, so what's and then she was like, "Oh, I feel so awful." And then she's like, "Why did?" Okay, like that, that was just that was weird. hilarious though. That was a hilarious joke. It was very all, funny. All of us laughed. Of the four of us who watched this episode, all four of us laughed. I think there Fringy was, is um... still fighting back the laughter right now. You can see it on his. Oh face. yeah, he, like, can... hand on mouth. He's like. <laughs> Can we briefly address the paralegal situation? Um, this is a paralegal at the DA's office who gets brought along to be paralegal with her at this new law firm. Mm -hmm. Paralegals don't make a fortune. She is constantly wearing like, you know, fashion choices, has a diverse shoe lineup. She's wearing tons and tons of jewelry in every scene, and she's driving a brand new car. Like, 
where did this chick ever well, get any money at all? We talked about this briefly in episode two because the asshole DA guy, it's like, you're a district attorney in Los Angeles and you had $175,000 burned. Spare, by the way. Yeah. That's not like saved. That's just burned on a, on a no, girlfriend. It's just money that you could spend on a whim. It's like, uh, D, you're a DA. Like, you don't get paid that much, right? Like a DA in, in, in uh, Here, Los Angeles? LA County attorney salary, uh, 81 to 150K a year. Yeah, so like, you're doing well. Scrape, just sure. scraping by. But, well, it's California, right? So it's probably that's pretty expensive to live there. Yeah, that's true. You live in LA. Like, ooh, $17 that's Starbucks or whatever. Unless, unless, but yeah, he wasn't the district attorney. Like, he no, was an he assistant was, district he attorney. Office. Yeah, he's in the DA's office, but he's not the yeah. DA. So yeah, one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars lying around. He is a financially prudent man. Clearly, like holy shit. <laughs> well, except when it He's comes to girlfriends, he has except side businesses. Yeah, he has a side hustle where he sells like and antique refurbished model cars. It like, needs to be all. said. This is like fucking Poirot levels of trying to figure out what the hell's going on. They didn't know he was dating Megan the Stallion, but they did establish that he is very loud about who he's dating. Yeah. Meaning they and must not have been dating it. very long, yet he spent 175k on it. Yeah, or the other um, implausible thing we'd have to accept is he didn't tell anybody, which is absurd. The way that he's characterized, he'd tell everybody. He'd tell them as soon as he got her, her It'd be a, It couldn't be held a secret because he would be taking photos with her, being like, look everyone, yeah. look at the world, I'm dating Megan the Stallion. And then people would be which, like, whoa, is he? And then they'd start sharing it and sharing it, and then Megan the Stallion would be like, I ain't dating that guy, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, or it could just be as simple as she wasn't in America. She was touring somewhere else, like in the country, you know, at the time. In which case, the case doesn't really play out as it does. Or he would have figured it out a lot sooner. But who cares? Yeah. So as of uh, December 31st, assistant district attorney in Los Angeles is 121K a year on average. Like, Okay, in, so that's, that's a good pay for sure. But like, for enough to have $175,000 laying around? Right, not, not, it's not great pay for L.A., like LA right. costs so much to live in, and true, then, true. and then, yeah. And, but more importantly, no matter where you are, attention. no matter where you are, you're not dumping two hundred grand on a girlfriend that you hey, that presumably only have. Oh, and also, when we talk about, because I'm pretty sure that the joke they had was that he had a cyber truck. It's like now I don't know if those are like things you could buy, like the Tesla one. That's probably not cheap either. Like, where does he get all this money? <laughs> like, what? How does he just have all this money? Unless he just made some really good financial decisions. He's like a really wise investor. That's what we find out. His redeeming quality is that he's really good at, at, uh, at trading stocks in his spare uh, time. Whatever spare time, time he has as a DA. Apparently the Cybertrucks only, they start at thirty nine nine. Oh, okay. Well, so that's, I, that's my, worse, I, thought, right? I thought it was going to be a, a $200,000 car. Like, that's what I thought. I didn't even know that you could buy those. Uh, but anything, yeah. Yeah. There's higher price coming on it, though, apparently. Well, I mean, we but, know that that guy is going to be swapping it out every year. He's he, with all this money that he has to blow. Yeah. Yeah. But no, yeah. But yeah I, I don't think they actually are available, though. I, I don't think they actually are out. But uh, yeah, I that's the, that's the. That he's a kind yeah, of guy. Oh, he that's, knows where to go. That's the one that was with asking Nick about the past episode. So when she's offered the job, she just uh, like signs a verbal contract in a sense immediately. With the only request being she has her own paralegal, which the boss doesn't care about at all. She signs a waiver about her death not being held responsible for the prison if it was to happen without reading any of the the print as well. As a again, lawyers tend to be much more um, finicky about signing things than most people. Uh, especially yeah, I, regarding I read your everything. <laughs> Just, it's, this isn't like a mobile phone, Tim's and conditions. This is literally like, if you die, we cannot be held responsible. She's like, okay. This is like, oh. Oh, well, the fact yeah. that she agrees to the job without talking what her salary is. Yep. What kind of work she's going to be doing at the law firm. Because it would have multiple divisions. Like, she doesn't know anything about her job. Well, she's, she's a lawyer. Her. She has leverage. She has leverage of being she held. She, does she doesn't leverage. use it. No, the guy because, approached well, you out of nowhere in a bar to offer you a job after you defeated him in court saying, who's the best lawyering I've ever seen we could really use <laughs> just specifically you. And she's like, sign me up for whatever it is. I, you know what? I don't even, 
Oh God, Take it's probably worth salary. it. Don't you should give her ten grand it. a year and tell her to shut up. Well, I mean, he, he immediately well, tells her if you don't work, right? If you don't be She Hulk, yeah. I'll just fire you. So it's just like, may as well just yeah. had it be in the scene that she's like, I request this, this, this. I want to be taken seriously. I blah blah. blah. And he's just like, no, be She Hulk. If not, you fire. And like the job off is gone. But I guess I figured it would be a funnier meme to have her like sort of haphazardly walking around the offices, you know, bewildered. That's so retarded, too, that he to. wouldn't have told her beforehand so that she can actually come to work and facilitate to that. Work, yeah. Know, ready to work, rather than wearing clothes that are, like, several sizes too small. Exactly. But, it, and, but not as fun for the storyline. Crown, Crown Target and Chance says they're setting this up to talk about later for the wage gap. And, and that may be true. Who knows if they're going to do the wage gap thing? We'll find out that Pug makes, you know, she makes seventy no, percent of what he does or something stupid. Jennifer but Walters the, is like Matt in Murdoch. charge of the super. She's in charge. Wait, but the, the best part Murdoch. about it is, though, is it will reinforce one of the most predominant arguments about the wage gap is that women are not good at negotiating for themselves. That's right, and th she I, didn't. That's what I mean. She, she, every time she faces a contract, she just fucking signs it. It's insane. And like, <laughs> you have all yeah, of should, the leverage. She should have been more concerned with getting green uh, than her employer was. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. Nice. I understood it, Rags. I, I, I even like. I think I cracked a smile. I'd have to look in a mirror. Didn't tell. That was pretty. Yeah. It's, it's no funnier problem. than I'm every She Hulk sure joke. I, well, Rags, if it makes you feel worse, I'm pretty sure they've used the getting green joke for like She Hulk marketing. Have they? Oh, I take yeah, it back. I'm oh. confident they have. <laughs> I'm gonna, I think, I'm I think the tagline was, uh, I think the tagline that they used was, I go green so you get green or something. Oh, God. Oh. Oof. Which I, I will say, like, you could have just said, I get green so you get green. Like, it feels like a... I don't even like that. But let's like, get that green more... together. Yeah, I don't know. Well, let's get green together might be... See what I mean? You workshop your ideas. You don't just think of the first one and then go, yeah, that's good enough. So, this Rip Broker guy is like, oh, you want to buy my knockoff Avengers merch, I see. Which, um... Yeah. Although, you know, looking at it, that, uh, that towel with Hulk in the... It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's actually he's funny. Got the mustache. I, Look, he's got a mustache. He's, old, Look at he's like guy. dad Hulk. <laughs> yes, the mustache <laughs> and that like that that man thong man suspender thing. That's that's kind of funny. Like I'll should, I'll give it that. You can do a TV show that's just Hulk going on road. You know, making movies, making songs, and fighting around the world with with Hulk <laughs> going around the world, getting into fights while also indulging in the local cultures with um, his little sunglasses. So you got um, this is like the knockoff names. You you got Hulk and uh, uh is that a Thor? Very cool. I'm trying to see what they got for Hawkeye. I think it's Hawk Guy. Which is why doesn't he just sell them? Not make like well, are the Avengers selling official merchandise in the it's, MCU. It's weird to me that he's like trying to sell knockoff stuff to avoid getting in trouble. But ultimately, like you're already doing this in like like black market style. So why not just have you know, the name yeah. printed properly. You could probably actually sell Avengers merchandise. Yeah, yeah the, the way that he's done it this way, you could probably just do yeah. it openly, yeah. Yeah, tra trademark is so specific. Like, sometimes it's even the font and the, the spelling. But if you spell it differently, like, and there's no, there's no reasonable person looks at an Avengers uh, <laughs> hat and goes, oh, that's Avengers. That's the same thing. Like, you would have to conclude that it's something else, a parody or, or a joke of some sort. There's also Avengers. Yeah. I don't and, see what Captain America's been turned into, but it's hard to see. Black Widow, I can't make that out either, but yeah. Very amusing. They've changed the name. Mm -hmm, funny! But of course, this is not what they're looking for. They're trying to find I the love person that, who can make... I love that it's a Chinese guy. Who's selling the knockoffs too? Like that, they just they just walk right into wow. the stereotype, right? Wow. It's uh, they, they do that a decent amount in this show. They they play into the very stereotypes they would probably find to be super offensive. Very strange. With avoiding, I suppose. But you got um, the uh, he agrees to like give them a chance to go and visit the 
the other guy, uh, being the, the, the big, big cheese who makes costumes, and it's very, um, I don't know, like, like it's going to be difficult for them to do it. How are they going to get in? And uh, Why did they put it on? I, I said the I think, exact same thing think, while watching it. Like, why'd they wear it? Yeah, because didn't they only asked them to, to put it on. Well, you asked them to buy it. I don't think you asked them to put them on, did he? Yeah, oh, you just I asked guess them to it's buy easier it. to carry, though. Unless, does he have, like, plastic bags but, he but, gives people? To but, I mean, they have bags. It. it just, it just makes them it. look stupid as fuck. That's all, isn't it? Like, it, it, has, I guess I thought that was funny. Well, you know, it's it, plastic bags, but they're branded Disney. I hate that Instead works. of Disney. I get it. Uh, so this is one one thing that I think I would have liked if it was in a show that I didn't find annoying as fuck. That they stand there for a little bit and then she goes to press the button on the intercom and as she gets close to it, it just says no. I thought that was kind of funny. What do you guys think? Yeah, it reminded me of Hackers. Oh, I remember that movie. That's old as fuck. Yeah, when they go to visit the two uh, weird, like... The two hacker twins or whatever, those the two Asian guys, and they had the they had the camera and everything. Yeah. I wish I could remember I know those characters. What are their names? Um ones from Hackers? Yeah. Was it's it some cringy nineties hacker and, name? It was like Razor and Blade, wasn't it? That's what chat's saying. Razor and Blade, yeah. Yeah. He's like, Razor Act and Blade, those guys are tools or whatever. I love that movie. That movie's great. This is as good as She Hulk. Though. Mm, no, say, I mean. no I don't nothing's so. as good as she hulk um, oh no now wong the planet's in the chat <laughs> wong the planet there's so much wonging in the chat uh so anyway yeah they're just like no i'm not going to meet with you guys you guys are nuts no 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 and then they say uh she says my client is an avenger one of the top tier ones and i was just like wouldn't wouldn't the next step be oh who which who? Yeah, which one? Yeah, her. And then, but no, that because doesn't happen. True. That's that's amazing if true. And the second question I have is, who are the Avengers right now? Because they got you see um, the shit. It has Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, Cap, Hawkeye, and Black Widow. That's not yeah, been the, the Avengers since 2012, my dude. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the team doesn't even exist anymore. Like really, it no. Doesn't seem that way. Well, They're, yeah, because uh, Captain America's dead. Iron Man's dead. Well, he's point. gone. Black Widow's no, he's, dead. He's gone. He's gone. All right. He's not right. He's dead. Yeah. He's gone. Okay, but Iron Man is dead. Yes, and Black Widow. Um, Black Widow is dead. Thor and Hulk, Hulk is, is just on this planet. Not doing. And... Hulk is yeah, not. Thor's this gone. team is literally retired, non-existent. Is Hulk even on yeah. like adventuring superhero well, duty right he's now? Space. He's in space. Yeah. He's in space right now, and I think Hawkeye retired. Right. So really, the shit should have Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel. Falcon, uh, uh, Scarlet Witch, maybe. <laughs> yes, I'm sure she will be. I don't know if he, the, the, her latest movie. She killed many, many innocent yeah, people. Loki. Oh, that's right. I didn't. I didn't watch that. It was really good. <clears throat> don't you lie to me. I do you think it would have been a good that. joke where for the for the bootleg Avenger stuff they showed the Justice League on the shirts? That would have been funny. Yeah, could've, you could have done something amazing. better than what they did. Yeah, you could have done better. <laughs> you could have done better than She Hulk. Um, but yeah, they get a fifteen minute consultation out of saying that. Just that our client is an Avenger. Trust me, bro. Like, oh. Yep. Real I careful. I'll take you at your uh, word, stranger. Yeah, real careful system you got going here. Nice. Did she change? Like, I know she's wearing clothes over her clothes, but did she change the clothes she was wearing and then put the clothes on over? Because that's a she good... always brings spare clothes. No, I you don't think so. I think she was it. wearing that in the other place. It looks like okay. a sort of a bin bag so, type look. Right. Okay. So we know. Okay. Yeah. You're you're right. So she was wearing that. So we know that time has a, like a significant amount of time has elapsed since they had their discussion in the office, though, because that's where she was in the pink jacket. So she changed. Yes. She changes when she leaves. Every time she leaves, come. Every time you come or go, new outfit, stem to oh, stern. Weird. Whole new outfit, new necklaces, jewelry, general expression, hat, maybe. This is where we find out that JL, K, and H are very pissed off because this lawsuit's happening when they wouldn't like it to happen because they use She Hulk for a lot of stuff. And it's like, ah, this is what we were talking about before, where it's like, why the fuck didn't you guys look into this? 
Yeah, should have trademarked Skip it immediately. Skipping a hilarious joke, though. It's, it's so funny, because, oh well, yeah, this leads to, uh, he's like, you're not going to handle this. <laughs> Which is like the first time the show accepts that she's a terrible lawyer, but it's from a character that they all think is horrible and wrong, so. Oh well. Uh, but they give it to Ms. Book, who we saw for like two seconds in one episode before. She's finally becoming a main character now, I think. Yeah, um, Mallory. Mm hmm. And she's like, we're not colleagues. We're, you know, I'm, you're my client, I'm your lawyer. And I was just kind of like, I think I get the spirit of what she's saying, but it's just funny because it's like literally client, like colleagues. You work on the same team. No, we've like, never seen you speak to each other, so. No. Yeah, I had to <laughs> like, like, try to remember to who this character was. Like, have we met she, this person before? Yeah, we briefly did right when. Uh, we saw her. Yeah, right when, when she, she was, got hired. Uh, he was the the ten. Our tall DA guy. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, the she hulks opening like thing about this is did Doctor Strange have to do this? Did Thor? Like, oof, like, whoops. Yeah. But Somebody... she's, Doctor Strange is his name. What's his actual name? His Steven. name is Stephen Strange. He is Doctor okay, Stephen so, Strange. At, yeah. So okay, as Mallory okay. points out, these are their names, and Thor's yeah. name is Thor, which is that's really funny after Love and Thunder, though. It Thor's really name is Thor. Kinda... Like, no, it's not. It's a mantle. What are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, you fucked it up. You, you told us someone films? else. You did, well, we know they didn't watch their own stuff because Wong's like, yeah, we'll go by the book of the d destroyed book that we destroyed that doesn't even govern, like, it's just the, a magic book that doesn't even exist anymore because don't watch our own stuff. But yeah. remember it? He referenced it in some way, regardless yeah. of context. That's what an MCU is. That's what a connection is. You knew that from the yeah, other. Yeah, that... Fringy, you have to watch all the movies to understand these references. And that, well, that's right. And that's where they're at now. We, if you go book it for Shanty, and then your friend goes, oh, that, oh it's, it's from a different movie. Uh, we can watch that later if you want. We can get that with context. You go, oh, sweet. And then you watch it, and you're more confused than you were. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Why did you do this? Why did you say this? Why you, yeah. Well, why would you do this to me? I thought we were friends. But um, I wanted to watch Hackers. This, this, <laughs> this lady attorney, her, her demeanor... Like, I mean, it starts with Jen Walter and maybe you're like, okay, well, her demeanor is this way because she's like a, a colleague, but also competitive, but her, her like cold bitch demeanor throughout this and the next client, like she is awful. Like her, I thought like, that they were how, trying to sell us that she hates She-Hulk. Yeah. But it doesn't seem to be that way. Yeah. I don't think it's that way. Cause at one point she says like, I, I never would have known a lawyer to humiliate themselves as much as you. And I was like. Oh shit! She must really hate how like unprofessional she is, maybe. But like, no, but I. Then, uh... Yeah, but but then it turns out they just make her into another stereotype that a high-powered woman has to be like cold and monstrous and uh, like overly assertive to the point of bitchiness, where no one would want to talk to her. Why would you want this woman representing you? At all, if she treats you this way. Hey, Nick, um, considering the deal she gets cleavage. for her client, she's one of the most incredible lawyers that have existed. That is true. I would yeah. love her to yeah. represent me. Considering what, yeah, what oh Mr. God. Mortal had done and what the result is, this must be the greatest lawyer that's ever existed. Uh. She's the one lawyer that gets you more time. Uh... <laughs> On on the uh, the Thor Doctor Strange stuff, right? The fact that she's asking that means that she didn't know Doctor Strange's name. And she's a lawyer that specializes in superhero cases, and he's like the most, possibly the most popular and powerful person on planet Earth right now. He's a high profile, that's for sure. Really weird that she doesn't know anything he's about up him. There. He's got to be up there. And but, um, she's literally hanging out with his friend. main yeah. colleague Wong. Like she never looked into like, this. Yeah. She never read up about any of it. And her cousin. The team he's a part of that saves the world. You didn't think maybe you should look into it? This is, I think we pitched this in a different episode, but it was like, wouldn't it be cool if that was her role it, behind the scenes up to this point and it had been mentioned that he has like a cousin who helps him out with legal issues or at least keeps an eye on him because she thinks what he does is incredible and ethical and that she's trying to look out for him for the legal side of things. But no, yeah, instead but we get episode one where she chews him out for not of suffering as much as she does. And there's um there's the other there's the other part of this whole like uh, thing where she's clearly aware of Captain America being Steve Rogers mm -hmm. and having a different name. She could have said instead of Doctor Strange and Thor. I mean, I know it wouldn't be the the funny joke that they did, but the the point she was trying to make was like a man thing, I guess. Did did Captain America have to do this? Did Hawkeye? Did Iron Man? Like, because. 
that yeah, you're those right. are monikers even... that are not their names. They have the these characters available. When when she says or... like you chose two people who actually have the it's like that conversation is not over. Who making them bad examples? You should then go into good examples and then have the counter argument, right? Instead, they just move on. They're just like, oh well. Uh, yeah, we, we there's did only joke, a whole so. bunch of them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but then you you wonder how this happens because it. I don't know if if you know about this, Nick, but like the 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 conversation surrounding Thor: Love and Thunder is that you shouldn't be mad that Mighty Thor is called that because Thor is a mantle, and 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 like the director has come out in favor of that. Lots of people are talking about it. She Hulk just shat on it right here, and it's like they do yeah. they know? Are they? Did anyone talk to each other? Oh yeah, because because. Thor can be anybody, right? Like that's the yeah, whole. Yeah, which they definitely. If, if uh... Jennifer Walters is saying like, well, no, well, not Jennifer. The show is saying no. That his name is Thor. What are you talking about? It's like, oh, yeah, you didn't watch the other stories, or you didn't talk to each other. Yeah, because if they did, yeah. she she, she would have said, uh, "Thor is a mantle, Jen. Didn't you know that? Anyone can take a <laughs> Well, I guess no. I guess then again, does anybody know about that? Where are we timeline wise? That's actually Maybe. a great question, dude. Oh, uh, oh, hasn't happened oh, yet. Fringy. Oh, fringy. Oh, oh, timeline. Oh. What a ridiculous question. Oh, if, you about, um, if you think about Natalie Portman's character, she became Mighty Thor, and then what, like, a handful of hours later died, so... Yeah, so maybe <laughs> nobody knows. But then again, maybe the fable spread far and wide. Well, the tale of Thor converting an army of children into Thor is probably going to spread far and wide, maybe. I don't know. As long as they don't call themselves Thor... And no, they're allowed themselves. to. No, okay. because they would be in front. They might. So, well, yeah. I'm so happy I have not watched that movie. It sounds. It's atrocious. terrible. It's pretty terrible. It's awful. It's the first one pretty that awful. no one defended. Well, except like yeah, one, one or two. One, one or two. One yeah. or two. A few did. people did, but they. Yeah, but I couldn't tell you who Anybody actually. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. Um. So yeah, another thing is that, should she not know the answers to her own questions? These are like basic trademark questions, aren't they? Yeah, well she was, remember, she was prepared to take this on. She's like, I'll do it. And then he's like, no you won't, you're an idiot. I'm going to assign you a different woman. And then it's proven that she's an idiot regarding this topic. I don't get it. Yeah. Do they not know what they're doing? I guess not. She is a lawyer. A lawyer. Lawyer. One who law now it, it actually, it, in in law, it, it would be very common, though, for a criminal defense attorney or a criminal prosecutor to not really know anything about trademark law. That's like, totally, I actually think that's really fair, but as you just pointed out, she was suggesting she take this yeah. case herself. <laughs> right, like that's yeah, the so whole thing. You're a division. Do so. you know every law ever? Are you like <laughs> yes. an expert in every single law? I do. I, do. Law, you know? I do, but, you know... She doesn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rakita no. takes even less notes than She Hulk does because his mind is like one a steel page. Trap. You need one post-it note. Right. You just post it on your hand there. Just so you got your notes. That's all you need. He just he's in court and then he looks at his hand. Uh, habeas corpus, Your Honor. That will That's be right. all. Actually, my note for this whole scene is just Jen sucks at lawyer being. The way to put it. Okay, I got to speak their language. Oh so man, lawyer being. A creature of law. Um, so yeah, you got, uh, we, we got to establish the name was being used professionally beforehand, that Titania is trying to benefit from the name recognition already established in the marketplace. So it's like... Yeah, that's kind yeah. of correct, at least. And then they go just away from that entirely. Because this, this was the one episode, by the way, the one I watched, I was like, this one feels like it got the closest to being accurate to the law, and that's still 10 billion miles away from being accurate. Um, yeah, but, because it's not just like I using mean, the name professionally isn't it, it? It's in trade specifically in commerce. That's that's where you have to have the mm -hmm. use of the of the trademark. Like just identifying yeah. yourself as She Hulk professionally means nothing. Like you, oh, you show up to work and you're called She Hulk. What product are you selling? How is a customer going to be confused by this? Uh, so and and. Yeah, I, sorry, go ahead. Well, I actually came to, um, I don't like anyone in the show, but I came close to actually liking Miss Book more than anyone else just because of the fact that she she looked at her and was like, you dress, you look like a fucking idiot with the, the oversized suit. And she's like, oh, well, you know, oh, like the wrongly sized suit. And then she looks over at uh, the paralegal and says, you obviously spend a lot of time thinking about what you're going to wear. Like, why don't you help her out? And I was just like, oof. 
you could interpret that as just being like you're 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 literally like so vapid that you're you're only concentrated on the like what you in your what, what you do in your life yeah, and what you're vain. wearing. You, like yeah, I'm gonna pass this job to you because it's clearly suitable for your skills. That's the impression I got off it. I was like, I like this lady a little bit, <laughs> like just and for the fact that it, she's ripping into other characters. That's all. Oh yeah, anyone who insults the characters is my friend. Yes, but we might be assuming the insult though, because I, I think, think we might be yes. It I don't could be think a compliment. He, I, like you I know think your it's stuff a compliment. About well, and I think when you look at how Miss Book dresses, she's she's Carrie Washington from Scandal, right? Like that's who she's emulating here. She's always in like a sleek, high priced, high fashion dress. I mean, look at this thing. That dress costs a shitload of money that she's wearing right now. Hmm. Um, she's she always looks very good and and is well put together. I think it comes across as an insult because they've set her demeanor up to be so damn abrasive. Yeah, no, but that's, I think that's why I took it as an insult, because I thought she hated these yeah. people. Yeah, but I think she was actually complimenting her. Which yeah, which is <laughs> funny. Like, it's like, God, ah, you fumbled at the five-yard line. Uh, which takes us to the beginning of the court case, I guess, or in court. Uh, got, I think that like the, the evidence they provide is just that she was using She-Hulk for a while, and then the uh, defense are like, well... She is on record saying she will never go by the name She-Hulk, uh, which I feel like isn't addressing the more important part of was she using it for trade, as you as you pointed out as well. Right, completely pointless. Whether she goes by She-Hulk or not, it only matters. And so when I when I mentioned the customer confusion thing, there's there's a little bit of a mix up here, and this is where the writers clearly don't know the law that. For the trademark, the, the customer confusion has to be a confusion of brand, not a confusion of representation of a brand. So um, you have to be tr like using Michelin and people are thinking, oh, I'm buying from the Michelin tire company. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing. Not that She-Hulk represents something. So like She-Hulk doesn't sell anything. So there's no possible misconception. Now, the endorsement confusion is, again, that's that right of publicity um, well, that, that we talked about earlier. That's a different thing. And it does, it does still, like, that's what they're getting to. She's trying to capitalize on the She-Hulk name as representing her brand. But that's not a trademark issue at all. And that's be, what's so frustrating about this. I guess an equivalent would be, like, if you released a bunch of controllers that fit perfectly and assigned well and worked with Xbox and you called them cross box but the icon was just exactly the same and then you're like you you keep cross box as a title kind of away from the general marketing and you know like I think there's isn't there a bunch of like third party knockoff controllers that try to come across as though they are um the official ones to hopefully wrangle yeah. a couple more sales into it sort of like that so yeah I always wondered if they skirt a line on that sort of thing or if maybe they have some level of an agreement I don't know but they either, you know, they they might have to light like nowadays with the way uh, drivers and everything work on these systems. They might have to get like pay a license fee for the, I yeah. don't know the proper term, but like an API basically to make the controller work with the system uh, in a really easy way. Um, that might be because I know if you like if you're like making a video game for PlayStation, you have to pay. Sony a licensing fee to even get the ability to implement your code into the into the PlayStation OS. So I I think they probably are paying a licensing fee now because uh, you see those yeah a lot of those controllers out there. But but I don't know the the trick is is it sufficiently close enough that you think you're buying from Microsoft? Yeah, that's the idea. Right, and and so the but the difference here would be is if I made. If I made a Tom Brady controller, that's not a trademark issue. Like if I if I make a Tom Brady controller and it's shaped like a football and it has all the <laughs> Xbox buttons, like no one thinks I'm buying from Tom Brady who doesn't sell controllers like or anything. He's just a, a guy, right? But I am possibly doing He's not a just different a guy. thing. Oh, right? He's a <laughs> According god. to his wife, he is. He's a god. I have on good authority. But uh but no, I'm I'm doing a different thing where I'm trying to make you think that Tom Brady is endorsing my controller product. Right. That's the separate issue. And that's what they're they seem to be like waffling back and forth between these two issues and they're they're completely different. 
Um, so there's a, there's a clip they have from the from the news where she's like, whether I like it or not, I am forever She Hulk, and I was like, oh, they're doing the the season thing where she's getting used to the fact that she is She Hulk, whether she likes it or not. But in court, right. this is supposed to be proof that she's going by it. So there you go. And then the, and the judge is like, I'm inclined to agree with t Titania unless you can provide me a more often and casual use of the name in like everyday life. And I was just thinking to myself like, so Miss Book should have known that, right? That that was proof they needed? Because her response to that is, oh, don't worry, we'll have more to present later. Like, she should have known it. If it were true, but it's completely that's, false. That's, like that's, it's yeah, that's what I'm saying. Within the framework that this is something that happens, she should have known this. <laughs> because it's so weird would... for the lawyer to be like, oh yes, I will have evidence that you need. I haven't gotten it yet. It's like, what? Yeah, again, the, the standard for trademark is who was the first person using the product name in trade? In commerce, yeah. was if Jen Walters had sold like five T-shirts that said She-Hulk on them, her case is a million times better than whatever they have presented here. Like that, that would do it. If she spray painted She-Hulk on the side of her car and delivered pizzas, it would be better. Or if again, if she had, if they had named the division, uh, the She-Hulk Law Division, but she wouldn't be the party. Right, she still wouldn't own the name or the trademark, and the law firm would, and she wouldn't even be in the courtroom unless she was representing the firm. <sighs> yeah, it, it just doesn't function at all. No. It's, um, it's, it's it's totally wrong. All, so, I mean, it's, it's all wrong, and it's the closest they get to having the law be accurate. This how far <laughs> away it is. But yeah, it's, it's a great uh, law show. Yeah, that's what I tuned in for. They renamed it Attorney at Law. Why? Why? What's the point? <laughs> yeah. But I don't understand, Frank. Plenty of the characters in universe tell me she's great. Because when... True. Yeah, it's like when, when she looks at the camera and, and compliments the writing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which episode was that? Was it their, three or four? Their that writers are complimenting when, uh, themselves. And the way that they connect is not meaningfully. It's just Pug sits down and says, Man, my case. It's just been tough. It's like, ah, see? Look at how great we are Come connecting our, our stories. Look at that. Wait, talent. they did that? Yeah. What happened was, um, yeah, Pug sits down. He's like, oh, man, this asshole DA case is nuts. And Jennifer Walters leans in and says, connecting the A and B story, nice. Yeah, she looks at the camera yeah, that and I mean, says that. It was cringe. Like, what in the... You're writing compliments of your own writing into the story. It's, and it, the best part is what you're complimenting is not impressive at all. A character sat down and, and just said, yeah, my B plot's going pretty badly. And then that's the connection. To be this is like Kylo Ren forgiving himself. This is the writers writing a character that is, is out of universe that, congratulating actually. themselves. Yeah, at least that's yeah. a character flaw versus the writers being the so writers, far that's apart. That's their character. Yeah, into complimenting this. their own no, no, writing. No. We're using, it's a character flaw, but we're using character in a different sense. The I writer's see character flaw versus A real versus world the, character yeah. flaw versus an in-universe mm -hmm. character flaw. Of course, the, yeah. It is pretty uh, crazy how many of the fourth wall breaks have just been affirming, which is funny because you're, it's inevitably going to get compared to Deadpool. Like, t too bad. Um, yeah. A lot of Deadpool ones are self-deprecating. They're making fun of himself or even, like, the fact that he's getting his own movie. I don't know. When, when the fourth wall breaks are constantly shitting on yourself and then well, yeah, the other fourth wall breaks are constantly affirming yourself... Yeah, there is one that I do prefer, yes. The equivalent you could have expected is that he talks about the B-plot, and then Deadpool leans in, looks at the camera, and goes like, I do not care about the B-plot. Well, yeah, and even he just, like, he grabs the camera and walks away to just talk about his own thing. Yeah, I mean, like, this is boring. We, uh, yeah, there's never been any, like... It's only ever been used as, like, a means of basically narrating, but it's never been consistent or in a way that's... Because, uh, yep. Uh, yeah, Shows we'll up when they remember that. they can do it, in almost. Deadpool, yeah, like, in Deadpool, it is it is a framing device that is used throughout the whole story. It's narrated from beginning to end. It's used to connect the past story to, the, like, the current story that's running, like, in the present day. Whereas here, it's just, oh, yeah, right, we fourth wall break, because that's what She-Hulk does. It's like they just remember that that's something that they're supposed to be doing. 
and so, oh, so infrequently used. So just said in a Deadpool game, you could shoot yourself in the head during cutscenes because of boring exposition. That sounds hilarious. Well, yeah, the, Dead, the Deadpool game had a, a there was I remember there was one in the game when like Deadpool just ends up in this weird glitchy zone, and then like he calls the, the producer of the game, and the producer's like, "Yeah, you wasted the budget. We're out of money. Like, so yeah, the game's shit now. <laughs> it doesn't work anymore." <laughs> like, that sounds like fun. Was that game well received or? Um, I like it. It's it's uh it was made by High Moon before they got gutted like all the other Activision studios. I think they made the Transformers games everybody liked. It's fun. It's mechanically it's not like super in depth. Um, but yeah, it's it's a fun Deadpool game with a lot of fun like jokes and references. It's uh yeah, that that one I mean that was leveraging like fourth wall breaks in a video game, which um gives you a lot of other options, right? Uh, yeah, there was one where it was um it, I think it was I think cable I think it was, oh, damn, it was Cable was talking to Deadpool and explaining, like, the situation that they had to deal with, and he would just keep going, and Deadpool was just there, so shoulders slumped, crying, and then, yeah, I think you press the button, if you press the A button, he just kills himself <laughs> to get out of the cutscene. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, um, it, it's, it, there's a lot that you can do with fourth wall breaks that are fun, and this show has just used it as, like, basically self-aware, that's it. You're aware that you're a show. And you're aware of, like, the meta. But then there's all of these weirdly, like, insecure... I think that's the impression I get with the self-affirming. It was that one with the cameos. Like, oh, this show has cameos, but remember, it's my show. It's like, any man who has to say that he is the king is no true king sort of springs to mind mm -hmm. when you have to remind people that this is your show because you're yeah, genuinely the, the, worried that people might forget that. They're at the point of believing that having characters share what they're up to in an episode is, like, worth praise. Like, whoa. Yeah, because, like, it, and, um, it, yeah, exactly. Like, it's just, oh, hey, we got Wong. That's gonna, that's gonna be cool for us. It, it definitely feels like a lot of these fourth wall breaks were primed for Twitter. Because I remember the one that I saw a lot on Twitter um, before I'd gotten around to watching the episode was like, oh, it's a self-contained wedding episode. And if you think the timing is inconvenient, yeah, that's how weddings are. It's like, ha ha, you thought you were going to see Daredevil, fucking idiot. It's like, what? <laughs> like, it really does yeah, seem do you like a... Why do you relish in, like, annoying your audience? What's that about? Like, right. right. Well, I think a lot of people were like, ah, look at that 40 chest. They set him up and knocked him down. It's like, yeah, you did. You set people up to expect to see a character, and then you said he wasn't showing up. Like, yes, people aren't going to respond very well to that. Now, it's not a problem, strictly from, like, a writing standpoint. You can do whatever you want, I guess. Um, it's just weird that, like, that, that there's sort of this weird open contempt for, like, a certain portion of people who are going to be watching your show. And you know it! You put him in the trailer! You put him in the trailer for your show as, like, the big stinger. Yeah, people are watching because they want to see characters that they already like. Yeah. You're, you're benefiting from that. You don't get to shit on those people when you are directly benefiting from hooking them in with the promise of showing them characters that they like. You don't get to shit on them because they now are starting to wonder where those characters are. You don't get to have it both ways. That's that Rick and Morty <laughs> attitude that they eventually developed. They're like, uh, yeah, well, yeah, you care about just... our characters, and you're like, you told me well, to. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah, it's uh, no, it's 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 fantastic because I know what the idea is. Everybody hates when this actually happens to them. Let's do it willingly now for no reason at all because the the wedding episode which we'll get to is absolutely useless yeah and, and they even say it's a self-contained wedding episode it is irrelevant to the plot i guess except maybe for this josh guy who might show up later or something but it's 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 pointless it's proudly it, pointless <laughs> It's probably pointless, yeah. And, and I guess somebody would probably say, well, yeah, but they're going for like a little half hour comedy thing. And sometimes you have self contained episodes that go nowhere. It's like to acknowledge that it's worthless, though, that's just interesting. This is an interesting strategy you have of like knowing <laughs> that you've read something that's pointless, other than maybe advancing like one plot thread. You're, you're wasting so much time, and you don't even have that much time to waste. Nope. Speaking of wasting time. Yeah, uh, we mm -hmm. get She Hulk into basically Edna Mode's place. Edna Mode, yeah. And then, so this this That's whole true. thing was like just fucking odd. Yeah. Every line is fucking odd. 
he, he's like, this whoa, what the weird. fuck? And then she's like, this is She-Hulk. And he goes, never heard of you. And I was like, really, dude? Never have you heard, not of heard of her? Now, really? you might be thinking, like, didn't you argue that some of the date people wouldn't have? And it's like, okay, so this person is apparently a superhero costume maker. So he's mm -hmm. going to be pretty into the whole, which, by the way, is quite a significant thing to do. But fuck it, the world building is fucked anyway. So, but like, you know, how does this guy mix in with the Avengers? Do they know him? Do they get their costumes from him? Does he how how much business is he getting? And who is he, you know, supplying these costumes for? He says at one point, "Do you need bulletproof, waterproof, like uh, munitions? Do you need built-in weaponry?" And it's just like, is is what you're doing legal? Yeah. <laughs> so the curiosity. Yeah, so, I was under the like impression that do those things. Yeah, I thought Shield provided. All of the uniforms um, for the Avengers, like well, the well, shields yeah, done. Yeah, but right. so are the Avengers. That's that, that, that was actually <laughs> yeah. going to say. It's not even worth saying. Shields done. Everything's done. They haven't told us what the state of affairs are anywhere. And that's the thing. None of these shows are allowed to. They've all been told nothing yeah, is in concrete. Hard. You just have to yeah. just. And so I think this is the same thing as um, Amazon saying they haven't fucked with the source material for, for Tolkien. They'll be, it's the same thing where you just go, like, don't fuck with anything in the world. They go, okay, but we will establish some guy who makes superhero suits for everybody. It's like, well... Because now the question uh, is, for who? Yeah, like, th who that does fuck with everything. Exactly. Because who's he made these for? Well, we'd like to find out he's made him for Daredevil, which, um... Does which he is know a who huge is? deal, like uh, but oh well. A big deal, yeah. I'm sure we'll get a lot of explanation on that. Uh, but poor I, Gary, when he found out this was the replacement for um, the guy who's making the suits in the Daredevil show. If you're... Well, because he got arrested and they don't know what they're doing in terms of like the continuity of that show. So no. yeah, we replaced him because he was uh, he had Stiltman's uh, stuff in the back in season one. It was. I wonder if we're a, gonna see Stiltman. There was a lot more care with that. This was just yes. Fashion designer, stereotype is. man, but also he's Ed like I said, I couldn't stop thinking about Edna Mode. It just felt like, There's no yeah, I mean, he's like the, the worst version of her. Um, she so yeah. seemed like really yeah. into the job and stuff like that. And oh, well, he's into the job he, too, I suppose. But like, sort of, he, but in a he's an aloof genius way. who is so. I mean, this is this is how all businesses actually run. Well, uh, when you have enough money or something, even though no one could afford the prices of being this exclusive That's and only working on passion projects. Who's yeah, paying? How does it there. work? Is this a fish? It seems to be black market stuff. Like the, you, you can only find it by going through other agents who are, you have to access with codes and knowledge. And it's just like, so are you officially making costumes for superheroes that are run with the government or like, why am I even asking? What's the point? None of it makes any sense anyway. They're not going to care. They don't know. The writers questions. don't know. Who are, you gonna ask, who are you going to ask? The, so and the, the only about this part as well was like the fact that he would even turn her down. It's like, are you, you're joking, right? You're, of course you're going to build something for her. She's She-Hulk. Like, what? you're going to make something for her. Well, so I'm wondering only... what his motivation is. Is it money or is it to help people save lives? Or is it both? I don't know. I presume that he was looking at Edna in terms of, oh, this is a cool challenge. Like, I look forward to the challenge of building this. They forgot to characterize that part. That's but true. what yeah. what he has as a setup is infinitely expensive. The only yep. person who could afford this setup is the one person who made his own damn costumes, Tony yeah. Stark. Like, right, <laughs> so it's right. like, wait, did Tony Stark privately fund this as a venture capital investment? We're gonna find out later that like that's the way any of these superheroes can come, and, and this guy will just work on their their thing based on his own vision with no need for compensation because he's been unlimitedly compensated at some point but or is it going to be another and i know it's not going to be either of these plots because either of them would kind of make sense but the other one would be that he actually freelances and, and deals with superheroes and supervillains and a lot of the money he gets comes from the other side he's just a complete mercenary slash visionary for the fashion that'd be kind of cool it would be i don't think they're going to do it though because it would be kind of cool <laughs> if it's kind of cool they ain't going to do it it's like oh okay uh, yeah, because he's got a shit ton of employees, and maybe you could argue it's like, well, he has an actual normal sort of public fashion line that's incredibly successful, and then he got into the superhero costume making business to sort of run underneath it, and it's just like, this is a whole ass industry, we know nothing about it, it's just dropped, and it's just for the memes, really, to get her an outfit. And, uh, yeah, as you, so what you were pointing out, Frank, is like, if, if, if he's characterized in such a way that he absolutely would like to, the challenge, would be interested in stuff... 
But then all that clues him on to actually wanting to do it is the fact that he needs to build a suit that can match both body types. And he's like, oh, because that seems to be something he's interested in. But it's like, again, how do you not know this? How yeah, and oh, it's just, I guess, let's think about it this way. What should be innately more interesting to him? Building a suit for a regular guy like Matt or building like some crazy suit? that's gonna try and, like, conform, basically, to the body, like, two different, very different body types. Presumably the only thing about it is, though, that she ex is explicit combat. that she intends to not do any combat at all. True, true. And so, again, why I don't know, because he, he, that's what he asks about, and it's like, are they trying to tell me that that's something he is invested in, that he wants to give suits and power to people who he believes are gonna fight crime and stuff, or, or does he not give a shit? I don't know. I, well, he he doesn't care, right? Because he takes this on and he just builds her a super suit anyway, so... Yeah, I guess, yeah. Where's my super suit? Sorry, can't help it. Hey, Incredibles is awesome. Big ol' high five. Everyone should yeah. watch that instead. I, I assume uh, I mean, that um, Daredevil, he... I guess he met up and did all of this stuff while he was in costume so his identity wouldn't be compromised. Oh. Daredevil, Daredevil not answer that one. This is in LA, so like, I guess that'll be the first question: is what is he doing in LA? And if he's in LA, did he, he know who website. this guy? Is? And when he got here, did he stop doing superhero stuff to like wait for the new suit, or has he been out doing shit? I guess we're gonna find out based on the looks of that preview in episode eight is when we're gonna finally see him. I guess we're gonna have to. Man, I'm so worried. <laughs> also, he didn't care that they lied to him. By the way, I just remember. Oh, yeah, because she's not an Avenger and he knows that. Yeah. Well, you know, the rules of the game, once you offer, once you give the 15 minute consultation, you have to do it at that point. <laughs> right, he couldn't right. just oh, turn them away at the door. That'd be a huge That'd social crazy. Faux pas in order for him to, yeah. He opened the door, it's a done deal. The door so, to his secret, like Louis Vuitton decorated design room, I these guess. Sets are, these sets are not connected. No. <laughs> Okay. No, uh, th yeah, this this is in the back. Uh, remember, like this thing is in the back room of a coffee shop, and he's got these giant windows as if he's on like dude, the uh, penthouse oh, of a building. I have yeah. no clue if this is supposed to be connected to that or not. I have Those no clue. Fake windows, real fake windows, real <laughs> fake windows, yeah, real, real fake windows. I. Like I said, they could have gone to a different building for all we know. They, there's no logistics here. Different Why does the armor there have a dad gut? Oh yeah, it's got a little... <laughs> <laughs> a little, little dad pouch on the front. <laughs> a red Guardian yeah. so he could lose in style. He, well, we're gonna it see has a six pack oh, above oh, a one pack. pack. That's weird. <laughs> one pack. That is weird. Someone made that. <laughs> Someone did make that. Someone <laughs> was told to make That's that. For a new stunning and brave pregnant man <laughs> to wear, but Dude, only when he's like, Nick, three look how high along. the nipples are. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst designer ever. Like, what, what do you what mean it's supposed to be? It's new, it's in style, it's gonna look great on whoever it, this is. For. The nipples are in the middle of the pecs. That is so strange. <laughs> I that is really. I don't, oh my god! I don't, you're right. It's strange. They look like know. sonic eyeballs. I don't know what they do. It it doesn't look as good as Joel Schumacher's Batman. Okay, that's what I'll say. <laughs> he knew where to put those nipples. Oh, was that the, he knew exactly was that the Val where to Kilmer put those one? nipples. Uh, the first one was yeah. The second one was the George Clooney one. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I I know the guy who now has uh, the Batman uh, costume. I just mm -hmm. I was just at his house the other day and he has it on display. It's really cool. The one Whoa. for uh, Val Kilmer or the one for George Clooney? The Val Kilmer one. Oh, okay. and the, uh, oh, we want the George Clooney nipply one. <laughs> no, the Val Kilmer one has nipples too. Hey, there you go. <gasps> Yay. Dude, that's so, it. People used to fucking hate him for that Gotta alone. The they were like, you put nipples on the bat, so you ruined everything. And it's just like, yeah, I bet you wish you had him back now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Compared to what we're getting now. So, uh,. I actually quite like something that happens in this scene. They realize that uh, as part of the witnesses, they bring in back the, the dates. Or so, oh, wait, I don't even think they've done that yet. This guy is just a client for this thing, but he's one of the people she dated. And she's like, oh, yeah, fuck. Yeah. There he is. And, she, and again, like we mentioned before, she says, oh, no, it's the creepy, disgusting, monstrous guy I went on a date with. Which I think is absurd, but fine, whatever. Very absurd. Jen Walters, she Your says absurd things all the time. Is Let's call it askew. Um, and so 
he walks up to her, and she's really nice to him. And he says, we should reconnect sometime. And she says, yep, we should. And I was about to, I'm pretty sure it was while we were watching it. Uh, I was like, that's just, ugh, she's so full of shit. And then her friend says, wow, you rolled over so quickly. And, and I was okay. just like, hey, the show is shitting on her for being spineless as fuck. That's nice. She was, but is there, okay. God, don't get my hopes up. Is there some potential interesting backstory here? Cause this is a guy asking about cutting her skin with vibranium, right? Yeah. He's you know, probably so she's a specimen. Got... Okay, he I said... Can... Oh, he's probably evil. He probably is going to be a part of the yeah. blood sample people. They... He's, he's got to be. Yeah. He's, he's the one of the big... He's the biggest client of the firm's superhero division, right? I like, think so. So this guy... So that makes his contact, his, his, uh, or his comments actually make sense. And he's not gross. Like he's, 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 he's like professional by, curiosity. Yeah. He's going to capture Daredevil and she has to save Daredevil. From oh, I know it's going. Damn it. I just figured it out and I hate it even more. Arr! The vampire is going to drink her blood. He's the He's the guy at the end of the sixth episode. Like it, it's, that's the guy. With makes the, the syringe. Okay. Yeah, I was saying he's probably connected to the blood sample people. Yeah. 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 Well, he's gonna. Uh, the guy who's in charge of intelligent. Well, I guess we're jumping the gun. In charge of it in the comics is the leader, right? And now we know that he's going to be in the new Captain America movie. So. Yeah, and so this, he's connected. he's going to have a vibranium syringe that he made. That's what he was laying in the case at the end of the last episode. Yeah, and that's Damn why. He was hoping to just get that little oh, bit yeah, of information yeah. confirmed. Those scenes, those scenes seem really out of place, by the way, in this they show. They did. They did indeed. It's because they, well, they probably had commissioned, like, an actual plot line, and then they were like, fill the rest up with stuff, and then one of the writers was like, what about a wedding episode? And they were like, yeah, yeah! And then put that syringe thing at the end of it, I guess. Fuck it. To remind people that they're still this brought up, because you can't escape the MCU and, like, broader stories that they're telling. You'll never leave. Well, no, you escape. can't escape. We'll but you're CGI right. it, your it, corpse. It is totally out of place. You got like your little fun lawyer show, or so you say, and then you've got this like, oh, this is quite dramatic. This yeah, sci-fi dastardly lab. needles and laboratories yeah. and evil scientists. Yeah, it's what is she, weird. What is she going to do with her tampons? Uh, oh, like, like, doesn't menstruate. Like, uh, put when them in she's, that. She's, put them in that device that vaporizes blood or whatever. She's no, getting, but she doesn't. That, she doesn't have that. She'll have to go make make visits every year, and has she is fertile twenty four seven. God, they could have made this a real good tragedy where she tries to start a family and she gets pregnant, but like the time traveler's wife, or was it the time traveler's wife? Where like, yeah, the babies keep dying constantly because they all get the gamma radiation. It's a one in a million shot. It's like this really depressing story yeah. about loss and miscarriage. Like that should be the She Hulk story. They never, ever, ever. They're doing fun things, Nick. Fun things. <laughs> yeah, dead babies aren't fun. No. Well, they're a little fun, but they're not that fun. Put me in Marvel. I'll, I'll make a enough. sad, yeah. make a sad dramatic story about reality and, and loss and struggle. The God. dead Hulk babies. Yay. Do you know why that happened, by the way? That that, that chance encounter? Because I just remembered this is this is something I thought was so fucking dumb as fuck. That chance encounter reminds her. Oh shit. I used the She-Hulk name when I was dating people. That can be used as evidence of me using it publicly it's... as part of my identity. Oh, it's yeah, like, that's a oh, thing fuck. I did. Don't you remember and this? How hilarious is it that they walked into yet another stereotype that a woman is not defined by herself, but she's defining herself by the men that she has dated. Like her own self-identity is wrapped up in these men that she's dating, like, or uh, that she kind of failed to date, I guess, or whatever. But like, that's how she is defined by the men in her life. That's fucking funny to me. Uh, maybe they did that on purpose. I don't know, but I'm there's still a, laughing about there's it. There's a line in the next episode. I wouldn't mind uh, highlighting when we get there in terms of like something that makes me think about the, the fucking weird ass perspective on all of this stuff. Um, the writers, I mean, the writers aren't exactly um, telling themselves well with this show. Uh, uh, Stuff that they have happened. You're like, oh, that's what you think about that? Okay. Um, so anyway, she remembers that, and then the like the case is being made again now, but with the context of all of that. And uh, the lawyer says uh, she didn't use her name to sell a product to exploit 
Like, they're accusing, obviously, Titania of doing that. And I was like, I mean, kinda. She uses She-Hulk to sell Jen you Walters. Yeah, that... you were exploiting people. You were being dishonest. That's something that that's they established also... happened. <laughs> that's also the literal requirement for trademark, and that wording alone should have been grounds for dismissal of the case. Because if she didn't use the name to exploit to sell a product, then she never used it in trade. Yep. And she has no claim. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I don't know, man. That seems it's just like look, it's just that things work differently in this world, okay? And and that's great. It's cute. It's fun. It's very cute. It is it's so fun. Why did they I'm just looking at the shot. You can't integrate her into the the scene. You just can't. Like I know that she's not there. Yeah. Why did you do this? <laughs> you didn't have the money. You just didn't have the money or the time to do it. Um, so yeah, then they, they, they roll up all the guys she dated to have, like, a statement each. Um, one of them says, She-Hulk and I had an intense connection. She battled demons, uh, which is the, 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 the handsome doctor man, I think. Um, and I thought it was really funny that he says that in court under oath and nobody cares. She battled demons. Uh, like, what? Demons? Ron, what? <laughs> like, I just feel like even the cross would be like, I'm sorry, did you just say demon? Like, can, like are we really accepting like this? drug addiction or something? He's <laughs> clearly <laughs> lying. Like, metaphorical <laughs> <laughs> You battled metaphorical <laughs> demons together and you connected over that? Or, like, what? And the judge is like, no, no, I'll accept that he's referring, to, obviously, to um, multi dimensional to, creatures. You know, Otherworldly, extra dimensional, yeah. yeah, creatures of ill repute, shall we say. Mm hmm. All acceptable and totally you know, fine. Orange goat ears, uh, pitchforks, potentially a, you know, preponderance of making deals uh, as it is. And so he says the thing. He says, "I wouldn't date Jen. She's not my type, but She Hulk is incredible." Like, ooh. So that's just confirmation then that by hiding the fact that she's Jen, she managed to date someone that would otherwise not have uh, been interested or wouldn't have given consent, which is a. Uh, a thing that this show definitely doesn't want to get into and just reminds me of Wonder Woman, where the writer had no idea. Do you know about that, uh, Nick? What happened with Wonder Woman? 84? No. So no, I didn't. Wa I didn't watch that. <laughs> that looked so bad. So what happens is in that in that show is that you, all you need to know about film, sorry, is that Wonder Woman's boyfriend that she loved very very much dies in uh, in World War. It's World War One, right? Uh, Correct. And then of course she's like immortal, or whatever. So she's up in the. She's in, is it now the nineties, eighties? The eighties, yeah. It's called nineteen eighty four. Sorry, I'm. Uh, I've had a bit to drink. I'm. I'm now losing my coherency, but I'm still gonna oh be able God, to do this. this time. So, uh, yeah, th th this this thing gets added into the story uh, where it's like a little wish device, but it's. Uh, was it fair to call it a monkey's paw type situation? It was, was a monkey's paw. Right, yeah, right. it was a monkey's paw. Yeah, kind so, of. Okay. I... The way it would work is you you hold it, you you ask it for a wish, you get one, right, one per person. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So you do that, and then uh, it'll give you what you want, obviously, but there's a drawback. And so she wishes for her, her hubby to come back to life. Now, he does, only... And this isn't actually the fucking monkey's poor effect. You guys remember this? The monkey's poor effect was, it was no, drawing it her power yes, from her. we were confused. Yes, yeah. that film is fucking uh. bad. But he comes <laughs> back, he's in the... He's taken control of the body of another man. Just some average man he's referred to as handsome man. He took control of that body. That guy is on, let's refer to it, I suppose, as sleep mode, or we don't actually know if he's actually active. Uh, we assume Oh, not. God. So yeah, pretty, no. pretty haunting. No, no idea why they did this. You could have had him phase into existence, you know, and be like, oh, there he is. But no, I think they thought they had to justify how he would be here, and so they transplant his consciousness into the body of another man at random, seemingly. Plus, um, that's weird. She uh she beats up with it, but when she finds out that that's who he is, uh she she gives him a little kiss, and already I think Fringy, you were like you had you got your no paper out and you started hitting them. You're like stop that, you can't be doing that. Mm, that body yeah. is not yours to use that way. That's fucked up. Uh, yeah. And then and then they fuck. Um, the internet was not there happy with this. <laughs> like the, this was a this was a really awkward choice. And uh, uh, Patty Jenkins, the director, she quote tweeted someone tweeting out that it's okay. Because it's commentary on films like Big, 
where you have these Freaky Friday situations, and sometimes this stuff happens, and it's it, it's not it's not it's I don't even remember Whereas the what reality I... is that they they just they didn't realize what they'd done. That's that's the reality. Is it, wanna... The monk the monkey paw on that is that nothing happens. No, no, the monkey. Okay, and no, this no, oh, this right, is what it should be. Right, right. So nothing happens, and then Wonder Woman goes to investigate, and she exhumes the grave of her husband. And when they Whoa. open the casket, it has been shredded on the inside because he was brought back to life, but yeah. he was still buried. That's the way to do it. Yeah, do and it. he dies. The story. And so she has to deal with the fact that she not only brought him back, but she put him through this intensely hor horrifying experience where he died miserable and alone again, only for her fault. That would that's, be that's how you do it. God, that would be crazy <laughs> and intense to have resurrected what you consider like a friend, and you fail to recognize part of the magic might just bring them back in their coffin. That would be an intense storyline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be. But instead, they went with what they didn't, and it's just baffling. It's really, really baffling that yes. nobody said, nobody picked well, it up, and nobody noticed. The main reason I wanted to bring this up is that Patty Jenkins herself knows she fucked up big time, and she was trying to find tweets that defend it. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. When you have like a, a, a working director in, in he comes back like, alive in. Oh, wait, wait my what? Internet died. I guess my internet oh. died there. Okay. Oh. Oh, I was talking about the monkey's paw. Oh, hi. You were, you were, but... Okay. No, uh, yeah, we'll just just... You go ahead, Rags. The internet's come back for you. Go for it. Where I, I said it was like the monkey's paw. And did I... Did I where, where, where did it cut off, I suppose? I've got nothing. Oh, we talked about the monkey's paw thing significantly afterwards. It was yeah. a great topic starter. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess uh, my input isn't needed. It's all covered, all taken care of. It's always... I suppose. Needed. Yeah. Holy shit, the what chat just know? pointed out what's wrong with his arm. What uh, look at that no, shoulder. That's the chair. That's the chair, isn't it? Oh, that's Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the chair. Yeah, that's the that chair. Looks like a... <laughs> You're right. Looks no, like... that's funny. It looks like his arm is detached if you consider that part of his, <laughs> <laughs> his jacket. Oh my his god. Arm's like some... off like a mannequin. Someone took an axe right to his shoulder. <laughs> this is my beaten arm. <laughs> I see what you mean when you look at it and you imagine that chair as being part of it. It's like, what happened, buddy? <laughs> what happened to your arm? He's got big arms, so it kind of made sense for Zay. It's like, was there some horrific CGI <laughs> fail that happened here? What happened? Yeah, happened? if ever you see something weird, it's like, you guys fucked up on CG again, didn't you? They're like, hey, <laughs> we're trying. We just start blaming it for all the writing problems, too. He's, uh, the CGI yeah. guys, they just get all the blame for everything wrong in the show. But you know... Okay, so here's here's why I give it credibility also. When I saw this guy in episode three or four or what no four, I guess, that he was in uh yeah, originally. Yeah, I, think it was I was four. I was like his his body looks almost fake. Like something about the shirt he's wearing, it looks like a little bit too big for his head. He looks a little too thick. And I wondered if they had like beefed him up. Like I legitimately was curious if they had bulked this guy up beyond because he 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 doesn't look quite right to me. Uh, a lot of people know. in chat was saying is 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 the sort of jacket that padded and stuff. It's like it does kind of look like it. Yeah, but the chair does come out the side there. Like that's also the chair is the background part. Oh, I'm can, ignoring that. It, <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> I'm just talking about like where you can, where you can see his chest sort of, and then like the shit's already coming above that quite a bit, and then the like the, the I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe. Um, because it would make I, I think I understand what you're saying, like right, trying to make him look a lot more um idealistic for the kind of guy that girls want to date or whatever. Maybe they bulked him up a bit more to be like, hey, look, he's perfect. Ten out of ten. Eleven out of ten, you might even It's weird. You'd think you'd be able to find buff guys in California that you could use for your movie show. Well yeah. he just he ticked all the other boxes, right? All right. So, but that one was a good enough tick anyway. Put a big suit on him. That would be funny if they generated the perfect man, but like didn't realize the irony that they couldn't find him, so they had to CG. <laughs> CG <laughs> the perfect man. <laughs> it just goes to show the perfect guy isn't out there. We looked all over. We looked everywhere. LA. Damn it. We went to every Starbucks. We looked all the... afternoon. We didn't <laughs> even find him. Um, and yeah, so the court with, with their proof, their evidence, whatever they say, the court is in favor of 
Jan and Titania will have to cease use of She-Hulk as a name and recall all products, which, man, it what would a, never happen. What a blow to her uh, products, too. Yeah, you, know, like, you invested a lot into this already. The recalling all, the all the products lines. would not happen. Like, what what part of this would be they'd be like, oh, you have to recall the products that you sent out. They're not a danger to the public. They were just sold with a false pretense, presumably. Yeah, like, you, recalling them would be insane. Most people aren't just... Most people won't give them back, right? They'll just be like, fuck it, I don't care if it's got a... If they find it, like, we're recalling them. Why? Because you would... They, they have a name that legally she's not allowed to use. Like, I don't care. I'll you were it. deceived. In give fact, it back. you were deceived. You not only wouldn't give them back, you'd be probably wise not to because they become collectors. Yeah, they become valuable. They're a thing that's illegal now. Is she supposed to just be Toddy Westbrook, but with like super strength? Is that is that the idea behind her character? I don't know. Who is Toddy Westbrook? Uh, she was like she's like a beauty tuber that then like evolved into selling makeup and you know beauty products. Okay. of her own she was she was uh i only know about her because she sued um a, a youtube a drama youtuber who talked about you know like talked about her all the time but yeah never mind like well, I'm, i was just thinking like titania lawsuit toddy like those aren't too far apart i don't know one of the things that i thought was interesting as she leaves is that um scary toxic masculinity man the one who was like i love being strong where's my food Blah. like that that was the date they had and uh and he was like she hulk strong she was kind of she, she was kind of full of herself in terms of how strong she was he's like a, he's like a a joke of a person you know like they don't know how to write people they just make up these like crazy people but he's mm -hmm. like hey titania we should we should hang out and then she goes fine you can buy me things God, it was... And it's like, fuck me, they don't know how to do anything. Like, it's really funny though. It's so funny. It's so hilarious. It makes it all worth it. It's like a maybe it is the best thing they can do though, because by comparison, Jen looks like she's more intelligent. You know, it's like okay, in a world full of like in idiocracy, the the most average intelligent man can come across as like a genius, right? Because, you know, they cut right back to Jen being like, see, look at her there, lawyer Jen, dominating, winning the case, and being like, ugh, those two. Those crazy fools. Um, and yeah, so this is where um, uh, Mallory is like, by the way, you can do better. You deserve better. Which is really interesting, was... considering the nature of the relationship she had with the, the guy who gave the best testimony in there. One that she lied to, essentially, by omission, you know? Right. The, it, which is, and also that guy being like just essentially really good and very politely saying, it's just not, you know, this part yeah, of How could he have done any better? You're lucky that he he's not going further pretty, in a different yeah. direction. Let's put it that way. And he did help you out immensely. He did. Yeah. He wanted the case with how this As show is presenting. Essentially, it. yeah. The other thing is, how was this at all humiliating? Like, the, they made a big point on how she was willing to, like, humiliate herself in front of the court to do this. Her level of humiliation Dating. was literally, Dating she so brought well? she brought four guys into court to testify that they all, you know, went on a date with She-Hulk, and they none of them said anything bad about her at all. I, like It might have been the element of what was on her dating profile. Or just the I fact can. that you're... With, with like her dating life is the subject of this case, which is awkward, I guess. Um, but I mean, I man, guess, like yeah, I, I think know. most people would be happy. Like, okay, we're gonna take your last four exes and uh, put them on the witness stand, and all they do is get up and say, "Yeah, you know what? We we went on a date, and uh, she was nice, but it, you know, it didn't really work out." Like, oh my god, that's what I mean. Wow, like, wow, it didn't work out with these heard. four random guys. What a loser! <laughs> he couldn't have <laughs> been better. On the and, and, and it is treated as though he's an yeah. asshole. It's like, I don't understand. Why do you write it this way? He's so stupid. Um, and then we get a, a absolute banger of a line when they go to the the bar. They, they got their drinks. They, she says, uh. The thing I was mentioning was like, I don't know any lawyer who'd humiliate herself like that. And then she's like, yeah, well, it's why Holloway gives me the medium bucks. And then her response to that is, Holloway would never have to prove his value to a parade of underwhelming men. Yeah, because he's not gay. 
<laughs> well, that would be one reason, so, but I was just like, like underwhelming men. What the fuck are you they, doing? They what was seemed, wrong with that guy? Like nice guys. They all seemed fine. There's definitely a woman out there Fucking for each of those guys. Eleven and out of ten are like considered mid at best. <laughs> it's like, okay, fine. You guys are just so fucking awesome. You deserve twenty out of tens. It's it's true. You guys are so great. No the other man reason... can ever possibly live up to the worth that you demand. It is true. You're doomed to die alone. And the other reason Holloway would never have to parade himself or you know these disappointing men is because Holloway clearly thought that She-Hulk should have taken care of the damn trademark issue yes. from Jump. And anyone who mm -hmm. was thinking about this, he's like, I can't believe you didn't take care of this already. So Holloway wouldn't have this issue in the first place. So you're saying they are correct. He wouldn't have to deal with this because he's not brain dead. Excellent. He's, he's competent. He runs He runs the largest evil law firm on the planet. He doesn't, evil? He, dude, it has to be evil if they're hiring Jen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like evil is is incompetence times malice, I guess. I don't know. Whatever this show is trying formula? to say. No, it's it's going to be evil because that'll be their M. Night Shyamala twist, right? Like, oh, Probably. you work for the evil uh, law yeah. firm now and she's going to have to like, I don't know, get fired and then get hired by Daredevil. Something dumb. Who knows what the hell's so, going to happen? I thought that was it for the cringe of that kind. But then they continue to talk. <laughs> Um, never ends, Mahler. They, the scene doesn't end, we don't cut away, they continue to speak. And so she says, Think about everything She-Hulk brings to the table, and those guys were my best option. I was not happy yeah, uh, listening to that line. I was like, I wasn't okay. happy listening right. to that either. And then... First off, that's just a four from an afternoon, so fucking calm down. Exactly. Um, but it, the follow-up line says... You can have superhero uh, superpowers, and guys with an internet connection think they can do better. Oh, can you believe that? This is like can you believe this is peasantry? villain talk. This is when you go, my value is in the fact that I have power, and that people. Yep. So when you say a guy with an internet connection, as if that means he's a lower being, <laughs> like just by the value of you, you didn't mention anything else. It's just like, fuck, this is the that. opposite of what you should be showing value to. Why are you suggesting that having power makes you a good person? And here, uh, Captain Midbucks, remember that one of those guys is a pediatric neurosurgeon, presumably making seven figures a year, while also being jacked out of his mind <laughs> and doing charity dates and with kind, fives. understanding, <laughs> and just, Jesus Christ, man. It's so annoying <laughs> to listen to, because they have no idea what they're writing. They think they're writing, like, yeah, fuck those guys for not... Literally, like, worshipping us. Like, you bring an affirmation of, like, feudalism or something. It's really bizarre. <laughs> like, oh, it's it, very it's like a, that they talk to me. Like, why yeah, would you write this? Suggesting that the world should operate on a social caste system. I and kind of, the, well, it's, it's, it's just weird to, like, talk about, like... We are the Brahmin. Why, why, why is this the way that we're characterizing and categorizing people? It's just so weird. Again, well, there, there the, the are shows that make the opposite point. Like, having power doesn't make you a good person. Fucking power corrupts is usually the message they have. Everything's back up. Thanks, internet gods, Hooray, for interrupting me completely it. for no reason. Welcome to Excellent. part two. Incredible. Hello, everybody. We made it. We Sorry survived. About that. We pulled through together as a yeah. team. Something, Teamwork. Something went wrong, or something went right. Maybe the gods are trying to protect us. Because, yeah, that was pretty much the end of the episode. That I means we're on to the... The wedding oh, there, episode. I did. I did have one point right as your internet died. Oh, go I for it. What to, was it? I don't want it to get to. Uh, so it's it's still on the handsome man thing because I am hung up on this. I, I get hung up on handsome men apparently. Mm. But um, mm, yeah. this guy is billed originally as this perfect catch, so much so that She Hulk initiates all of the conduct that follows. She invites him home. She's like pouncing on him. She has to go fight demons. She comes back. She picks him up and carries him like a baby into the bedroom. She's doing everything because he he is the catch. And then in the next episode, after he's like, 
hey, you know what? It's not going to work out for us. You know, I, I like you, but Jen really isn't my thing. She, she Hulk is. She's like, oh, he thinks he can get with me just because he's got an internet connection. It's like, I'm not you open. <laughs> you set him up as this perfect ideal, like this, this thing. And then now yeah, you're like, bought ah. it. what a loser. <laughs> oh, God. It just seems like Cope, doesn't it? It's like. It is uh, absolutely. Oh my God! Cool. Please date me. No, I didn't want to date you anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, you can't fire me. I quit. Exactly. It's, it, God, it was it was crazy. Like it just it made me so angry, like unreasonably angry, because it's like you you create this, and then you have no self awareness to the fact that you're now shitting on the thing you created, as if it was this character's fault that uh, that you know that uh, I don't know. I don't know. You made him ideal and then he wasn't ideal enough. Jesus. If you could well, not I mean, get more stereotypically woman, I don't know what you do. What we're going to see in episode six, I think, is basically the payoff to what we're doing here, which seems to be, yeah, sure, he's got all these things working for him. But what he really needs to do is recognize Jennifer Walters specifically. Yes. And so when we see the next guy, who is basically everything that guy was, handsome, caring, considerate, but he also likes Jennifer Walters' identity, it's like, ah, now Based there we go. Based on fucking no we'll get there. We'll get there. Well, well there. I mean, he doesn't know <laughs> Can't who wait she to is. see how he's evil <laughs> or not. Nah, yeah. he's not evil. He'll be fine. But he, he sure? might die. Yeah, who knows? Oh, I don't know. I, we see I don't Ooh. Oh, true, I... right? Yeah, because we saw the little uh, thing at the end. That's a, hmm. He could be a plant. Yeah, maybe he's evil. I think that they're not going to something's got to happen to where she is going to be single forever. They're not going to pair She-Hulk up with anybody. Well, as they we learned in single uh, Futurama, for as we learned in Futurama, the, the viewer doesn't want characters to change. They want single female lawyer to remain single female lawyer. Otherwise, it's too scary. The possibilities of uh, the character <laughs> changing and having a different He's life. He's going to drive up in a diesel truck and not be environmentally conscious enough and oh, she'll have no. to let him go. Then I have a Hummer, an H2 what if he... specifically. It will be a manual transmission. He likes to have control. I can understand that. I Maybe sympathize. he won't even have an internet connection. Ooh, then he'll be okay. Oh, God, then, then he'd be the most basic. Because then he won't be on the Intel Illuminati site. Oh, God, I'm so excited to woman hater. check out that. That's going to be great. But before, the, the last thing okay. we see is just her getting her suits. You don't see them. And then it's like, yeah, da, 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 da. we got Daredevil. Look, guys, look, Daredevil. Fringy was man. thrilled to see Daredevil. He no, was. I wasn't thrilled. I was. It was despair, concern, angst. But cool. you love the, I, Daredevil. I'm pretty sure that they just now you as well. Him. They played. They played generic music. They didn't even like put in the little piano uh, thing, like the you know the motif. Just generic, uh, look, it's dead, or look, it's yellow. Look at it sitting out there in the open. Are you excited? I'm not excited. I'm, I'm scared. I'm I don't scared believe it. I think the second he turns him. up on screen, you're going to go, woo! Yeah, like, Fringy loves oh. Daredevil. He was so excited to see that Daredevil would be in She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Well, look, oh, a couple of years ago, if you told me he was going to be showing up and interacting with other characters, it would have been like, man, that's exciting. Now, hey. now it's just uh, fear, dread. Dread's dread. probably the right one. Yeah. The desire to have never been born. All of these things. It's just. It's sad uh, to me how much better the Netflix Marvel shows were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the shows as well. Shows they were better, and I don't even I don't even think that a lot of them are even that worthwhile. Yeah, like of, Luke, uh, I I like the first uh, first season of Luke Cage, okay, and I couldn't get into the second season, but I that was so much better than this season. Absolutely, like the problems that those shows had compared to what has been pretty standard for these Marvel shows now is kind of crazy. Because, like, the problems, like, Luke, uh, not Luke Cage, because I think the first half of season one of Luke Cage is actually pretty strong, and I think it falls apart after Cottonmouth gets uh, taken out of the picture. Um, and, I mean, it was, like, with, I remember Jessica Jones season one, it's, like, it probably could have been a few, a, a couple, like, less episodes, and I think it would have been stronger, but there were parts of it I liked. 
And even like Iron Fist, which is the bad one, it's probably not as bad as these ones if I were to rewatch it. I, I would watch it's, Iron Fist over She Hulk every single day. Yeah, I, I would too. Yeah, I She Hulk is one of the most unpleasant watches for a TV show that there is. It's particularly unpleasant. Like Moon Knight wasn't unpleasant. It was pretty disappointing. Yeah. It was at times frustrating, but there were times when I was like kind of engaged. And um a lot of the other well, ones Falcon too. Like, Soldier one had wasn't. Zemo, it had Walker. It did have Zemo and Walker, even if it didn't know what it had, even if it didn't appreciate what it had, it still <laughs> yeah. had it. Even if it didn't know, um, for fuck's sake. Because I don't think She-Hulk is the worst one. I don't think that you can beat Loki ever, um, but it's been a Loki particularly that frustrating bad. experience. We fucking Loki, Loki breaks everything. It destroys Loki everything. everything. Yeah, Loki, do, I mean, just, but, to, just to... Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, to do it quickly, like, Nick, the, the show establishes that there is some guy who decided what, uh, in, in this particular way, whenever you make a decision or you have the potential to make a decision, obviously multiverses bring off. He's been clipping all right. of the ones that he doesn't want, so he only keeps the one that he does want. Meaning, if I were to eat the burger or not eat the burger, he's like, hmm, Mola ate the burger. And so... Essentially, Kang is the ultimate puppet master responsible for every single event that happens in the MCU. Yeah. Some people have trouble right, with this, they're sense. like, that still doesn't mean that he's taken away their will, because they still make that choice. It's like, no, they make every choice according to this world, and that he takes away all the ones he doesn't want, he only chooses one, so really, he's making the choices at that point. It's yeah, yeah. so no your heroes are being killed, choices. your heroes are being murdered because and they ate the sandwich well, when they weren't supposed there's to There's a world the where, uh... Yeah, there's a world where Iron Man didn't create Ultron, which was one of his biggest mistakes, and he got killed by Kang for that. Oh yeah, he had sorry. To, make to let you know, yeah, they go and melt them with special magical powers if ever they go off script. But so, and by melt, it means sends them to a dimension where a giant purple fart cloud dragon eats them. And this may not make sense to you, but it it's it's. It totally lines up. It's it's totally easy to digest. Oh yeah. I mean, every event in the MCU from Iron Man one onwards, obviously, because I mean, technically speaking, from Cap onwards, but you know, however early you want to go, all of it was Kang. Nobody made their own decisions. Yeah. He made them all. Okay, so there's there's an infinite multitude of universes created with every single potential choice that everyone on Earth could ever make at any given time, and presumably every being in the universe. Yeah. And this guy is. Only keeping the one timeline that he wants, which means he's also able to keep up with that infinity. This motherfucker. Yeah, smart. somehow. <laughs> this motherfucker. Somehow how is he doing this? Up. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> he has this massive By the way, this being, and, you know, he's killed by a knife. It's a, a full time job. None of the time He's killed by a knife? Sense. Yep, they stab him he and he dies. dies. He gets stabbed. Yeah, and that's the end of Kang. Uh, for now, he'll be back. <laughs> for now. He's, yeah. as durable, he's as durable Why did he just... as the Darkhold, yep. basically. Why didn't he just pick the reality where the guy didn't have a knife? Oh, because like he forgot uh, it at home. Well, because he, he's bored. That was the end of all of his architecture. By that point, it was uh, that was that was the end of his knowledge of what would happen. But yeah, he'd orchestrated everything up until Loki season one, episode six. That was the culmination of all of his efforts. And to be fair, the entire but like halfway through that episode, he... even because that's what I fucking kind of like don't get about the people who even like that show, despite the establishment that everything is meaningless because it was all his fucking choices, or rather the meaning gets taken away from the main characters, but even in that season, everything Loki and Sylvie did in that season is him right up yep. until the end. The only choice that gets made in that entire show is Sylvie killing him or not killing him. That's the only meaningful yeah, the decision that happens. Yeah, don't make choices. What was his big payoff like for all the engineered stuff? Like, What did he get to happen that he really wanted he, to happen? Did he get like a blowjob from his high school crush? He's like engineered her to get to him. It's very inappropriate honestly, because he was a high school teacher. I can't even remember the what they say the reason for him doing all of that. Yes. Avoiding multiversal war, I think, is what he wanted to do. Well, but the, but the thing is, is that he left the choice in Sylvie's hands, basically. We can keep this going again, or we can have the multiverse war when you kill me. Yeah, so, which like, is what's... he did it to prevent the multiverse war, but then he allows a multiverse war to be possible. Because he got bored. By allowing himself to die. Yeah, because he was bored of everything. It's like, oh, so, wh what is your deal? <laughs> like, which will lead to the, the two Avengers movies, and then Secret Wars, there's yeah. a good but, chance that everything will reset. But he can't die. Because, presumably, when she makes the choice to stab him... The, and he's not there to snip off that multiverse. He's just still yeah. persists in the other multiverse. Oh, wait, yeah. Isn't there a yeah. universe where she didn't stab him? <laughs> there has to be. 
It's it's the nature of multiverse, <laughs> right? There's now many, many, many Kangs. But the thing is, by killing this one Kang, you've created many Kangs. I don't know if we we talked about this, but like, if there's a universe where she simultaneously didn't stab him, then that one would now continue his work and snip off all the other universes, right? That's true. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> did, 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 did we seriously not think about that? Like, I can't remember if we talked about that, but that just fucks the whole thing over again. <laughs> Yeah, it destroys everything once more. That show is like a 1 out of 10. It's, it's, it's like the stupidest the fucking nonsense. Made. One of the stupidest, dumbest, most poorly written stories ever conceived. And, and it was written wrote, that by the guy, wrote yeah. Multiverse of Madness, which is also one of the <laughs> Yeah, Nick, just so you know, Multiverse of Madness is a movie that I made a six-hour video dismantling. It's so awful. Yeah. And the writer well, I've, I've heard... It. The writer behind it made Loki. That's the, they're both his work. Uh, he's <laughs> he is single-handedly responsible. The amount of damage he's dealt to the Marvel Cinematic Universe is remarkable. It's really? actually kind of impressive. See, someone said, well, Muller, the place they were in exists outside of space and time, which is BS. Then how did he know exactly what they were going to do up to the point of stabbing him unless he could control it? Also, beyond time and space. No, what just we, just, we don't even need to address that. He he no, explicitly said he was he snipped off he everything did? other than right up until she Cause stabbed remember? him. He, yeah, because he predicted when she tried to stab him, she he managed to dodge all of her attacks because he knew everything. Even though they were beyond space and time, he knew exactly <laughs> what she was going to do and, and then, where. Yeah, and then the backup argument is, what does it mean to exist outside of... I just I can't, I can't, I give up. I give <laughs> well, up. And remember, Crisis on Infinitisms, that was beyond space and time too. It was great. And we all agree that that was <laughs> garbage but for some reason loki manages because i had better visual effects and better actors Ugh. oh that sounds real bad yeah it's terrible <laughs> and, and that's the point right she hulk can never be that bad it's impossible do you remember when there was a guy <laughs> well, well, fucking... there, there is oh, actually there is actually a universe where she hulk is worse though that's the... that's true oh, yeah, God. Hulk, that's right <laughs> Even the, the universe, even infinity has limits. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the time where a guy put on a metal suit and beat up people? I miss that. I days. do remember that. That was cool. It was so cool. Yeah, so. That was neat. And it's like now when I think about Daredevil, it's like yeah, remember when Daredevil got really tired when he got into a fight with five guys in a hallway? Now he's gonna team up with She Hulk and go on adventures with her. Yay. Which, by the way, I'm pretty sure we still haven't seen. There was a guy in the trail of Frogman, or he looks like a Frogman anyway. Maybe he's gonna. Is is Daredevil gonna be pitted against a Frogman in the episode that he shows up in? Maybe. I don't know how to feel about that personally. Not because I'm a frog or anything, but just because you know. Well, I don't know. Well, plays into it. Just makes me wonder. What are, the pairing of, of Daredevil, the de the guy who wears the devil horns and, and the frog, you know? Hmm. hmm. There's fun stuff to be done there. Uh, I hope he fights Frogman. What, what, why? Why would you say that? Frogs are just critters that they sit there in the water and they, they, I don't know much, what amphibians, they, they he spends most of his time in the water and he occasionally goes on land. He's just chill. Well, maybe he's not. Maybe this frog guy is a jerk. In which case, Daredevil can exact justice upon him. Annihilate Just him. for being a jerk? Well, I mean... Hey, it would be it relative justice, right? It's jerkiness, yeah. Oh, it, it, like, very mild justice. Yes, Perhaps. he is exacting yeah, justice. But it's, it's pretty mild. It's pretty he only mild tips justice. 8%, so it's kind That's of rude. That's bad, yeah. Assuming that anyway. yeah, the service warranted that kind of. Yeah. We have the wedding episode. Wedding episode. I love wedding episodes. He gets an invite to a wedding. It's really sparkly and obnoxious. And she's like, "It's someone that you've never heard of before. Who's a friend of my family? I fell out of touch with her, but I guess I'll go because I can't say no." And then even the paralegals like, "Say no." But then you find out the real reason she wants to go. It's not because it's, she feels obligated. It's because she wants people to so look bad. at her and say she's pretty. Yep. You're, you're pretty and you're so smart and accomplished. You're great. You should root for this character. You want to show something up at their own wedding. I just, I do wonder, right? Because if, if someone said to me, like, wait, so do you hate She-Hulk because she's, like, perfect? And I'd be like, no, 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 no. She's definitely oh, not no. perfect. She's got some flaws, but I just don't know if the show knows. I can't tell. I don't think I don't think so. Their vanity is off the charts. Insane. 
Okay, it's so a long time ago, a long time ago on my channel, um, I uh, are you guys familiar with a YouTube creator, Coach Red Pill? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Vaguely. So, uh, way back when he did a Kickstarter, he wrote a fiction book. It was like a internet political thriller, meme thing about a kidnapping. All right. Nice. And so he crowdfunded it or whatever. He sent me a copy and he asked me to review it live with him on the channel. So oh. he, I read it and it like every female character was written exactly how you would expect Coach Red Pill to write a female character. They were all like vapid, self-centered, completely uninteresting. They were they were stereotypical like manosphere depictions of women, even the ones you're supposed to like. That's exactly how She-Hulk is being written, except it's being written by a bunch of women. It's so funny to me. Like, I'm stuck on this, this thing. Like, how do you keep writing the most unlikable woman on the planet as, like, who is shallow and vain and self-centered well, as if that were the good thing, not realizing that that is the criticism that is unfairly placed on women constantly? Out of curiosity, rags, fringy. And I will try and answer this question as well. Who would you rather hang out with, She-Hulk or Galadriel? Ooh, I thought you were gonna say She-Hulk or Captain Marvel. Um, who She-Hulk or Galadriel? And obviously, I am referring to Rings of Power, Galadriel. Oh fuck you! Um, <laughs> let's see. Well, let's. I. So I think I would you. I think I would hang out with Galadriel. Galadriel, it seems like things just in the world just sort of bend to work out for her, which could be really excellent. You know, if you if you hung out with her and you were her friend or whatnot, um, she is royalty. She's very, very prestigious in her positions and whatnot. Um, so that probably affords. I you mean, I would just, I would just say that I would rather hang out with She-Hulk because I think that there's a, a, a greater chance that I could have like a real conversation with her. I think though I was talking to Galadriel, like she seems to be pretty confrontational to absolutely everybody that she interacts with. Whereas yeah. She-Hulk, like Jennifer Walters, at least there's some people that she is nice to and will talk to. I and and also because she she lives in like the contemporary real world, that's probably easier to have a conversation. Hey, she with has her a tempest than, uh, in here. With uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably yeah, yeah. hang out with She Hulk. Um, yeah, I think I would go with She Hulk because I would. I'm much more interested to talk to this woman. I would want to talk to her about all of the things she said, all the values she clearly espouses, and her clear insecurities that relate to her and She Hulk. I'd be I'd be curious to ask her about. A handsome man and all the situations stuff. Galadriel, though, good God, I, I kind of want to leave the room. I'd be like, please don't kill me. Like, I, I don't know what's wrong with you, but you, you just, you're kind of an insane person. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Nick, you haven't had the pleasure of uh, watching Rings of Power yet. Is that correct? Oh. It's great. That's oh, what you're going to have no. to watch for next week. No, no, no. <laughs> No, <laughs> don't make me I do still it. I have to watch episode five. I just realized I haven't. I've, I've I was going to uh, say like, as much as possible. I'm not going to be I that knew... torturous to you because we got, we got a bunch of other people we're going to drag through Rings of Power. It's all right. <laughs> I knew it was going to be trash. Like, and so what I was hoping was that since it was being done on a premium video service, and that's the only place like you're allowed to have significant amounts of nudity that they would just go all out and make it like Game of Thrones or God, make it like... one uh, fucking titty in this thing, man. And it's like you got elves and orcs and dwarves. You could have hairy dwarf tits. You could do everything. Like, just <laughs> just Whoa. go just go for it, man. Like, just, just make it ridiculous. Just a big fuck pile. Yeah. Like, just, just everyone. It's like Spartacus, gods of the arena, except with weird races. And, like, just, like, have fun and be irreverent and... Like you're you're already crapping all over Tolkien, so just do it, do it, and they won't they won't. And it makes once I found out that that didn't happen, I was so mad. I was like, okay, fine, no, I'm not even gonna watch it, not even gonna watch it. No wangs of power for you. Well, uh, I guess we'll just carry on <laughs> with the I guess good old we'll She-Hulk. Just carry on. So, um, again, being someone who's not fashionman. Uh, when she pulls out this dress, her, her and her friend are like, oh my god, this is the most amazing dress ever. Am I missing something? Because it's just polka dots. 
but it's um, white on blue. I, sun- I think it's a, a pretty sundress thingy. I don't know why well, it's special why is it, beyond yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to say, why is it special? Because this is the one that was made by the Koopa designer, and she's like, look at this thing. People aren't going to be able to look away, and it's like, it looks normal. Well, look, maybe sun- it goes into what we've talked about before, about writing cleverness, right? You want to write a character that's clever, you as a writer have to have some level of cleverness. Maybe the same thing applies to fashion. If you are going to write a dress or display a dress to be extremely fashionable that people look at and they go, ooh, wow, it's incredibly fashionable. You as a writer have to know what is fashionable to portray, but they don't actually know how to do that. And I certainly don't fucking know either. So they that's why they rely on everybody in the story saying that things are or are not fashionable. Okay. For me, it's just, it's a sundress, and sundresses are wonderful, like God's they gift are. to men. I, I love they sundresses. Really are. But there's no, like, high fashion to them. It's just a sundress. It it fits very nicely. It's usually not a ton of material. It leaves... And it's flowy and a, light. A tasteful amount of skin. Uh... Yeah. I can see doing. more green this way. Hey now. We're talking about Shulk. You like this show, right? About oh, I love this show. This is my favorite show. Woohoo. Well. It's almost as good as Loki. Mm. Almost. Not quite. Not quite. It's not up to that high level no. yet. One well, day. You're, you're just in time because we've got a whole episode to cover. You, uh, exciting. You okay with being on streams for like a decently long amount of time? I can't remember if that's a thing you do, is it? Uh no, I have to get out. I only stream for like impl- like tiny periods of time that last five minutes. So. Mm-hmm. I thought so. You I too, huh? Short, I know. Weak short man. Hi, Nick. This is the first time we've interacted, I believe. Yeah, how's it going, man? Oh, good, good to meet you. The law person and the shadow person meet. I know. They together they create bad law, <laughs> which is not to be confused with shadowversity. That's a different thing. Uh huh. Oh, hopefully, also not to be confused with Shadman. That oh would, gosh! That also, there might be. I don't know that who one. that is. I can't believe you know that name. <laughs> I know all the dark parts of the internet now. <laughs> My life is ruined. Oh. Uh. So anyway, yeah, she says um, the only thing that sucks about all this is the book will have to pick up her work, like superhero stuff. And I was just thinking to myself, like, so the the case with Mister Immortal is going to go to Mallory instead of. Hulk instead of just like delaying the case I would have thought that also uh, well also you just started here and you're getting vacation days that seems unlikely yeah I was actually going to bring that up seems very unlikely that they would do that mm-hmm. and if they were to do Why it did... wouldn't they aim it so that no cases are running while she goes on a this is how many days is this this is a rehearsal well, how many wedding, days right? notice did she get you know yeah. uh, sure well, she... got, like, good notice, right? so she starts she starts her trip on a Wednesday uh, that's that's revealed when she's talking to Josh later, because uh, she's like over the weekend. Well, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I guess the wedding's on Friday, is kind of the Im- weird impression that I get from it. And uh, the timeline to me doesn't make any sense, but that she does mention Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. The I think real the question joke is, is that it's inconvenient timing for like it's a weird day to have a wedding. Yeah, uh, but but the of course the issue is so you have to arrange. Um, this meeting with Mr. Immortal, like with his women, like these exes or whatever, they seem to get, so they get Mr. Immortal as a client. They arrange a meeting of nine people within a day. Like yeah. there's no way this would all have to be handled. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. By her on in the, or by them in this timeline. It's that's insane. I mean, nothing moves this fast in law. And then why would you do that? Why would you make it so that you do it when your primary like lawyer that you want to be seen doing all these cases isn't available? When she's only not available for a couple of days? Like, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, she's going to be gone two days, three days, working days Very total. cases. They cannot wait. Yeah, Rigid and then, and then of course, if she will, I... Because this is the thing, you can just tell her. That, by the way, she wanted an alibi to not go to the wedding. At least half of her personality did. The other half that's vain-focused didn't. But, like, if, if your work said literally can't give you the time off, so you can't, that would be a perfect excuse not to go, I guess. But uh, she wants to be seen as She-Hulk, okay? It's very important. 
I'm so invested in I hope I hope she gets to be appreciated for how hot she is. That's that's the story we're telling. Woohoo. That's important. But yeah, all right. Um fun. Yeah, uh, we mentioned this before. She says, uh, she looks at the camera and she says, it's a self-contained wedding episode, and if you think it's happening at an inconvenient time in the season, you're right. That's because all weddings happen at inconvenient times. But I'm going to look great, so who cares? <sighs> all right. Well. Yeah, thanks for that. Insight, I suppose. <laughs> what? It's like, that's your fourth wall break? Okay. It's very clever. I'm glad you're really taking advantage of this format or element. Also, this would she would have to know that all this is coming because she's a bridesmaid, has a bridesmaid's dress. Where was the bachelorette party? Where was all of the like the fitting of the dress or the the acquisition of the dress up to this point? I mean, she's got her superhero dress, but she needs the damn pink dr bridesmaid's dress that's going to be there too. Like, there's no the, way the this comes out of nowhere. Well, it definitely doesn't come out of nowhere. I think it's only meant to be. You thought you were going to see Daredevil. Yeah, that sucks, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, this episode now. Like, that's all it comes across to me as. You thought you were going well, to see Well, again, with the timeline. Jokes on, jokes on you. It looks like she gets her invite and then just goes. Yeah, I know. It's, I, I, I don't, because she would have been told, like, months in advance. Yeah, she's a bridesmaid. <laughs> like, there's <laughs> so much stuff that has to be done. Oh, my God. We don't really care about, I mean, it's like you said, all the legal stuff moves way faster than it does in real life. You get I guess stuff sorted do in a too. week. Yeah, you plan your wedding in like a week, and everybody's ready to go and and be there. Yeah. So then, oh, we, uh, did you guys? Did you guys find that uh, heel versus baby face said that uh, that the bride there has a has a nice rack? He was admiring that one. I've seen the the clips. Yeah, he's uh, where he crawls. Yeah. He crawls into his own hoodie, right? Uh, R I P to as. <laughs> Which bridesmaid we talking about? No, the 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 bride herself there. Oh yeah, she has great breasts. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Was there some contention over this? What's... I know yep. what Nick's agree? up to. <laughs> what? Maybe just... that's, a, that's a man, baby. What? That's a dude. A bride is a trans woman? Yep. I didn't know that. Oh, I had no idea. I have. A, I, I know nothing about this. I just know the meme from, from Az. Uh... Trap card played. So this, this, she arrives and she's all, look at me, I'm awesome, I'm amazing, oh, what a coincidence. That's the dress, by the way, I guess, in full. I still don't get it, in terms of why it's yeah, so it's special, sort of but a, sure. Yeah, just a polka dot. And plus, look at the way that the polka dots are on it. It looks like about, you know, look, the bottom third or bottom half, they're arranged in a different way. Actually, yeah, you're right. It kind of, it just cuts, doesn't it? Right here. It seems to cut. And Ooh, then that's the not good dress design at all. What actually is that? Do you, you see that? Where I'm trying to put the cursor? Yeah. There's like a hard line. Yeah. Well, because she's so tall, they had to add like an extra, you know. No, but that's not how you do it, is it, Sitch? <laughs> you don't just no. like... Yes, Sitch, you don't know anything about Listen, fashion. God, time, even I, I know, know this. This was, all, this was all last minute, okay? Maybe she did it No, herself. this was made by the super designer. Maybe you just don't understand. This is high fashion. Oh wait, I was gonna say maybe it stretches out when she grows, but she is grown, so yeah, that right. that's not true. Yeah, this is it at its I don't know, because like when you have the little creases, like, oh yeah, sure, the dress would do that, but this is flat and it's just that yeah, harsh. This is like cut. they stitched two pieces of the same yeah, material together. And this is CGI, isn't it? You could up. literally change they it. They CGI to... it wrong. They CGI to fuck up. They CGI'd it to look like shit. Oh, no. Does it is it just this one image or is it is it do they have like a texture that's supposed to be mapped to some kind of a well let's a, see if I can find or... it when she's wearing it as normal Jen and I have a feeling it won't be as shit I'm curious if I can get a good shot well it might be they might have scanned it so I just just don't typically see that level of like a harsh cut in the middle of the dress like uh for for like highly professional yeah. stuff it's weird. So it was Damn the it. back or something. I mean, okay, even from this shot, it actually might be uh, the the regular dress has that in it. If you can see by there. Can you? How can you see? Well, the problem. <laughs> well, my problem wasn't necessarily that the CGI was bad. It's that you went through all that trouble and effort to get this special guy, and he makes this kind of a bl glaring fuck up on the well, front the, of the dress. The, the interesting part was if the CGI team made the imperfection, or if they were just replicating it. It looks like they were just replicating it. Yeah. Which, of course, they, that is, they're doing their job properly, I guess. 
Yeah, so just... I mean, props to them and their limited time in their dungeon to get all this stuff done. <laughs> True. And they have indeed, yeah, fucked up. And they had to spend the budget they would put on She-Hulk's, you know, CGI face onto that dress, so. Yep. When she transforms, does her hair do the, the big comey floomp thing over the top? Is that uh, just naturally how her hair is? They've she, shown it uh, here and there where it just extends out and then becomes that. Uh, it even changes color, right? It's Sometimes. Greenish, yeah, it was greenish on a couple of shots, I remember. It's just weird. It is weird. I don't know how any of it works, but whatever. Uh, the, the, the bride is like all upset. She's like, he's stealing all the attention away. And then uh, she Hulk sort of concedes. She's like, fine. I won't do that. I'll go back to being normal Jen. And I was just like, why don't you just say it's health related and you can't? Like, the longer you well, spend... Well, if you're that adamant, I guess, on, on doing this, but... Well, I guess, I, I guess the argument would be she really does care to not take attention away from the bride. And it's like, okay. Which, the whole reason yeah, she I mean, came here was for attention, so... Well, like, what'd she think was gonna happen? <laughs> you know, like, what'd you think? You're a big green lady. Like, of course it's gonna be noticeable and draw attention away from the bride. Well, and that she established she's not even fond of this lady. So it's like, why, why even... Why would this... Again, I just I would have thought as 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 a smart lawyer, you'd be like, you know what, fuck this, I'm just gonna make a burrito. I guess it's just because they wanted the meme, like of that she's like, ah, damn, I wanted to, I wanted to go like this, and now I gotta be just Jen, oh, so yeah. that I could have so, like the title card. Mm -hmm. That actually raises the the why I I, I hate this episode more than I, I, the one we just covered is probably what I would consider to be the best episode, which is crazy because they're all horribly bad. But uh, this one really annoyed me because I was just like, this is them trying to write a um. Almost a, not Michael? quite a comedy of errors, but like a, oh no, you go to the wedding for fun and look, first of all, they take away the one thing you want to do. Oh, now you got to do the dishes. Oh no, the guy you got to walk down the aisle with is a dog. And it's like, what? Like a, first off, like, <laughs> hey, the show said fine. it on me. Just to be clear, that's <laughs> totally fine. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Well, did you did you catch the line where they said like we had to resuscitate him yesterday or something? The dog, and I was like, what? yeah. And that he was I leaking. Know. Yeah, I was just like, that's... Is your dog old? Is well, your dog like, so old? Take care of the fucking dog. Conflict? Why are you, like, fucking yeah. around with it if it's, like, it's almost dying? Like, really what the hell? Ill. If it's seriously ill, making it participate in this wedding. Oh, I don't... No. I've never understood it. The, the way they write this shit. They have no idea what they're saying. But, um... Yeah, she's... she's they do this, they're like, haha, just Jen, attorney at law, because now she has to just be Jen at the wedding. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. It's so funny. So funny. Uh, so then where do we go? It's, uh... Oh yeah, we God, got an introduction. She hates herself. She... She she hated She-Hulk, now she hates herself. <laughs> like, that, they, they keep waffling, like, which... Which identity does she actually like? I, I don't know. Uh, the whole... And the whole theme of the first episode with Bruce was that she was She-Hulk, that she had no actual distinction between the two. But then the rest of the series is her having distinctions between the two halves of herself. Well, like, that was for Mary Stunis. It's, it's everyone's perception of her, because she's, personality-wise, completely interchangeable 100%. It seems to just be a power and aesthetic thing in terms of how people view her. But it's also how she views herself like it because I mean, it, it is how people view her. But she wanted to go to this wedding to be see, she uh, seen as she Hulk, right? Like, so she yeah, wanted that's to just, project. That's just yeah, presentation. Yeah. Like, there's no actual difference between the two that isn't just like an aesthetic one or just for the powers. There's no personality or character difference. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not like she has to actually bounce back and forth or God forbid, play two different characters. Hey, to be fair, this is the one actress that they could have gotten to do that pretty easily. Orphan Black, she plays like a thousand characters or something. Uh, I, for anybody who doesn't know, that's the series she got famous for. She played like, I think, a person who got cloned a bazillion times and or something like that. Um, she did a whole bunch of accents as well. You would have thought that they would have put that to use in some way in this show, but uh, nope. Nah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, no it's the talent of the actress Chad with much less talented writers. Unfortunate. Seems to be a pretty persistent problem in the MCU of like, you got actors who can do the job, but then you got writers who just can't. 
So yeah, the everything about this sucks. It's like, hello, Mr. Hollis, and he goes, Mr. Immortal. And immediately I was just like, I'm sorry, what? Like, that's, that's probably worth explaining, but no, they move on, like, immediately, and it's like, okay. Because, like, they're, they're taking his case. They don't want to question on the fact that he's referring to himself as Mr. Immortal. It's like, hmm. Um, and he says, look, with, with, with these people I'm with, like, they smother me emotionally. They end up wearing weird pajamas. Can you blame me for walking out into a road, a road and to end, end it right there and then? Is this the actor who plays the, uh, the guy in the Boba Fett show? He's the assistant? Yeah, he Good is. Catch. Yes, right, now he's pointed it out. That's, um, yeah, the one that they catch on, on, on the epic car chase. Yeah, that was very epic. That's how I remembered him, was from the epic car chase. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so... He doesn't even explain, like, how he fakes his death, because when he, whenever he gets hurt, he just, like, instantly heals. So, so this, is, this gets, is why, yeah. not just law issues, but just all of the issues. It's like, he just says, like, whenever he's tired of a relationship, he just walks out and gets run over by a car or whatever, and that fixes everything. It's like, how... How? Yeah, they'd be like, look, his body's just knitting itself back together. I yeah, wonder if he's okay. Right there. Yeah, like, there's not going to be a funeral, and right? They're, uh, and they're like, so you die? And he's like, well, I only die in the legal sense. It's like, not really, no. You don't die in any <laughs> sense if you just get straight back yeah. to life. Like, I, uh... Right, if someone dies on the operating table and is resuscitated a minute later, they're still married. <laughs> like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Didn't change anything. This is, I legit was like, I was going to ask that question because I was like, is that something I never knew that you're div you'd like is counted as a divorce or, or just a separation the second your heart stops? I was like, I don't think that's how that works. That's, that's, I don't. Yeah, it's your inheritance, you lose the title yeah. to your house, and all that stuff. You have to pay a death tax, Do social security. The, in the yeah. insurance company yeah. pays out every time. It's amazing. <laughs> every time. truly born again. I do. I'm like that uh, movie Flatliners. Like, just put me out and bring me back every couple minutes. Like, I'll, we'll just keep collecting on these insurance checks. Like, come on. This yeah, already, it, like, can... already, it's just like, what the fuck are you talking? How does this make any sense at all? It's like, isn't it funny though? He kills himself every time he's tired of his wed uh, his wives or had a husband. Women, am I right? Well, if they had like a scene <laughs> of him like like they he's buried and he you see he actually like pries himself out of the ground just to avoid you know. Telling a woman he's getting divorced or something. Some commitment. That I could like be funny, it. yeah. That yeah, that would funny. make sense. If I'd yeah, rather. if his if his healing was delayed by like, or he could delay it by like an hour, two, eight hours a day, and mm -hmm. you know. So instead anything, of all that crazy logistical nonsense, and then the fact that legally it wouldn't do fuck all, how does he escape? Like, how does it make any sense? Their response is: so instead of talking with your wife, you kill yourself. I was just like, that's all you Listen, took from what he said. <laughs> that's, that's all you got. Okay. Listen, and a lot of men's women. okay. A lot of men's answers to that when they're at the <laughs> stage of divorce would be wait till you meet her. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like well, and, and it, it keeps it gets cringier and cringier because his response to that is, Well, I'm immortal, I don't die. Which is a fair like sort of thing in response to her saying you just kill yourself. He's like, I don't die per se. The response to that is, you think this woman with a law degree doesn't know what immortal means? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> She just displayed that she didn't know what it meant. He said he's Mr. Immortal. He's here right now. And so he says, isn't it a better way to just walk out into the road and end it there? He's obviously not referring to ending his life. He's talking about ending the, the marriage. And she said, wait, so you kill yourself? So I just, I just find it so incompetent. So the show is like, wow. Like, this is this would be the mansplaining stuff, right? Like, it's like you just said to a woman who would obviously have the qualifications to understand what words mean. You explained to her what a word means when she would obviously know. It's like, well, I'm sorry, she expressed that she didn't know what it meant. So, <laughs> you wrote this. Like, what do you want us to do? I don't understand. Don't write them to be this way if you don't want us to make fun of them this way. I don't know what to say. You, you made you this, this happen. But you did. <laughs> and they do it throughout the show. I don't understand. What am I supposed to do with I it? I get it. They secretly have a maybe a personal bias against a particular gender. I don't know. It's weird. I wouldn't have written it like this myself. And I love women. And once again, they don't ask the proper questions. Instead, it's just like, do you ever feel bad about doing this? And it's like, really? So you just accepted it all? <laughs> you just go on with this like next question? Do you feel bad? And his response yeah, now is that we've established the facts of reality. Yeah, and, he, and he's they like, also, 
Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. They they also don't cover like the critical attorney client question of what is your goal here. They establish mm -hmm. his goals on what's going to happen, and they completely betray their client and they <laughs> threaten him. You're gonna pay for it. Like, what is your goal? In dealing with this, is your goal to actually like compensate these women for lost time? Is your goal to have us fight to show that you're not married or the marriage is annulled at the time of your death? Like what, what is it? Like how, how does this play out for you in your head? What is your plan here? Let's see if we can get to it. Like there's no interest of the client put into a single thing in the show. And oh, mm -hmm. it's like. Well, you, ironically, the show about female lawyers shows female lawyers who their femaleness gets in the way of their lawyering. Yes. And it's about to so much in it, it, it's coming. So it's coming. His response to do you ever feel bad about all this is, well, I'm a nice guy and this is the most considerate way to end a marriage. <laughs> Which is, like, That's he's not just, true, though. He's such a like a clown a character, but you can still enjoy him, I guess. Buddy. It's like a beeb. Um, you're lying. You're lying. I don't believe you. You like when you're like Jigsaw from those movies. Well, and then they start criticizing him. Pretty hardcore. Going back and forth, shouting blah 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 loud loud loud, and then he just he kills himself. Well, he jumps out the window. Um, this is the wow. only, the most accurate scene in the entire show. <laughs> is that true when, to life? When women get into the the catty bitch spiral back and forth, they're just going and going and going. Every man thinks if I can just find a window and jump out of it, it it'll all be it'll be better. This this is preferable to listening to this horse shit. It's um, as I just find it, the imagery funny of a man running towards like the window and just jumping out while a conversation's happening. He jumps background. out in a really funny way is. too. He, he does jump out in a funny way. Like he like <laughs> puts his arms behind him and everything. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Like Dude, like, head fist smashing through that. He's like Full a on. salmon. And so <laughs> he starts sprinting, yeah, sprinting to get out. It's like, I don't know what it is. Like, that, that's got a smile out of me. It, it reminded me, there's that old Monty Python scene where the, the guy just goes in the board meeting and he just does the same thing. He just goes up to the window and just he's just out. He just jumps mm -hmm. right off. You sure that's not the, um, the IT crowd? Because that's why that meme is the one I'm really familiar with where he jumps out the window and he makes a really funny movement with his body as well. It's the... Uh, but yeah, this one will just be added to the selection. It's pretty fun. Um, oh, okay, you're right. It's IT crowd. I thought it was Monty Python. Um, well, yeah, it's, it's 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 good shit. It's funny as fuck. Um, I think he gets he gets told like his stocks have plummeted to zero, something, and he just goes mm -hmm, and stands up, walks over to the window, and just jumps out. <laughs> <It's> like, <okay. laughs> um, but yeah, so he manages to just jump through this window, and and I think most people had a thought of just like, oh, I think. I think they're built to be able to take that. Um, they're not like you know impossible to smash. Glass, it's just glass. That... They're like reinforced, sturdy. He actually mm -hmm. jumped at the window, smashed off of it, and left it back on the uh, on the floor. That might yeah, be you... funny. Yeah, and then he might... grabs a chair, throws it through the window, so that he can get out. <laughs> like these these panes, they're they're made to not shatter because they're really <laughs> high up. Look how high I'm up they are. I'm not as happy about that. They they lost an opportunity for a joke of him smashing into the window. It doesn't work, and then having to grab like a chair and smash it, and then jump out. Yeah, I still you... like the image right here though. <laughs> I'm talking it is like, funny. It is funny. Yeah, jumps out. Um, but... they're so focused though on like. Arguing to each other about him. how much they hate him. Yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> neither of them turn like he's this guy's like this guy's like full sprinting <laughs> away from him and they don't notice till he breaks the window. Like they they literally have a woman moment. Like that <laughs> it's it's the show is again amazing either amazingly self aware or amazingly self unaware, and I can never figure out which one it is. It has to be the latter. Um so he's he's spotted, he's smashed into like a fucking car. Uh, and so this, this, for the meme is like, you know, sure, but, but we, I think we mentioned this earlier, but just, uh, he's, he's in so much trouble. Um, it doesn't matter if you're yeah. alive. Well, actually, I was about to say it doesn't matter if you're alive. It's like, well, no, actually, it only matters because you're alive. You'll be prosecuted, <laughs> more than likely. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even know, what is the worst of the crimes that have been committed here? Is it the destruction to the car, or is it the, um... um 
I mean, it, it, raining glass on like a yeah, uh, I was gonna say a that. falling object, right? Like if you yeah, drop that's a coin off the, the top of a building, that's super dangerous. And this is a whole person. You don't well, know what? if anybody's down there that you might fall on. You don't know what right. the raining glass is going to hit anybody. You've endangered a lot of people. Yeah, I'm terrified of my guess. If I mean, that security this... guard was in the car, he would be dead. Oh yeah, yep. exactly. That is yep. true. Yeah, and he was right next to it, by the way. So. <laughs> Close. Wow, he's gonna be like fearful for the rest of his life as he's sitting in his car. That he's so gonna he watch out for immortal men jumping out of windows. Yeah, and so this destroys everything we were just told. He gets up immediately from the death. How does this help you when you're trying to come across as though you've died? It's like, so ah. they can show it without. So they could sh instantly take it back in the show because it's fun. Like, no, he's not that guy. It's fine. Unquote. But uh, yeah, if this is how it plays out when he gets killed, it doesn't make any sense at all because nobody would believe he's yeah. dead. There'd be they no should have had stuff, no believing. Yeah, they should have had a funeral, right? And then the two lawyers are there, like so much for Mister Immortal or whatever. And then he walks in, like dusting the dirt off from having come out of the grave. That would be funny mm -hmm. or yeah. something. Like he's like, okay, so now you see my dilemma. Like that'd be the way to set up the whole thing. But instead, like you guys said, he just instantly revives, which means. Every time he died, his, every one of those exes would have just seen him get up. And everyone around would have, too. No, Like, no, he was fine. I hit him with my car, but he just got right back up and he went to work or whatever. I don't know. Also, I left the body on the freeway after he got run over. I just want to say, this is, it's like, of no all autopsy. the terrible... Of the what? No autopsy or anything. Man, that'd yeah, be horrifying. He has an autopsy yep. on it. When he's meant to be dead and he just starts screaming. Wait, what if he gets cremated? What happens then? <laughs> I guess he doesn't feel pain, does he? I don't know. He doesn't seem like it. I mean, if he, were, if if he, he heals super duper fast, maybe that mm -hmm. helps. But I guess, because if it was, but if he felt the pain of all this, surely just going down the staircase would be better, right? Than experiencing the terrible pain that this would inflict on you or an elevator. Like you Maybe he just is over it. Like he's gonna oh, feel like the pain, but Rags, it was but funny. You, did you hear those women shrieking? Can <laughs> 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 like we suffer. also? We need to also consider the fact that if you're going to kill yourself, that if you're going to kill yourself, fuck you if you do it by walking into traffic. Actually, fuck you, you mm -hmm. piece of yeah. shit. You know, because yeah, now you the... you fucking traumatized someone or multiple people for potentially the rest of their lives. Because you essentially tried to unload that onto someone else by walking in front of their vehicle and have them kill you. So if yeah. he did that and if his methods of death are, you know, that sort of thing, then like you're just a terrible person by traumatizing people like that. So uh, we go back to good old Shulk. Um, uh, the bride said, oh, do, do, you, do you have someone to be here with? And she's like, no. And she goes, no, oh, I'm sorry. And she goes, no, no, I'm fine. And she says, don't worry, you still have a little bit of time left. I actually thought that was all right. <laughs> I was like, wow, you are a cunt. But at the same time, you said it to another cunt. So maybe it's okay. It kind of equals out. It balances out. Um, it's equal. It's, it, we've, we've, we have entropy in this room with a country. Mm. It's all found its level. And then Titania shows up at the wedding, um, and, like, Jen is immediately like, oh, you're here to fuck with me. Oh, wait, and go I, back. You could see if the dress was, a. Uh, oh, no, I did fix on her. I think we did, we did, it was, like, going to be a bit, uh, it, I don't know how to get a shot here, actually. It was after this, I think. It was, like, the perfect shot. Oh. I think it is just fucked. Yeah, it's just fucked. It's a really badly made dress. Uh, I say badly made, like badly compared to yeah. what it should be, I guess. Why does it have? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about fashion, but I wouldn't have done it like that. I just would have would have had it. It's a actually really annoying to look at. <laughs> you know what? It looks terrible on her. Like the whole thing was her, that. Yeah. Well, it was. I was about to say it was meant but for she hulk but then both. I was like, wait, wasn't it meant to this fit both loose. of them? Yes, yeah, the, yeah. the whole this purpose is that, yeah, it's supposed it very to fit loose. both of their bodies. It's supposed to expand to accommodate She-Hulk, and it looks just awful. Like that 
That is terrible. It's like you just wrapped a tablecloth around yourself. <laughs> Especially with the patenting, it really does look like that. Yeah, it's a yeah, picnic like blanket. A, it looks a picnic like they blanket. don't, and they don't have to. Like they just have to make the dress fit her, and then CGI the dress on exactly. the shield. Exactly. Why did they, they fuck that up? They, 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 they reversed it. They CGI'd the good one and made her wear the shit by the fitting one. We're we're oh. okay with the concept that some guy who makes these incredible outfits for superheroes can make stretchy fabric because we're okay with the concept that this chick can become nine feet tall and throw cars. Like we've our suspension of disbelief yes. is accomplished a long time ago. Just mm -hmm. make a dress that fits her nice. Like She's not ugly. She's you have a costume department that could have done this, but they chose not to. They're like, <sighs> nah, whatever. It doesn't matter. We're having fun, so it doesn't matter. Um. So yeah, Titania shows up and she's like, "Why are you here?" And then and then Bride shows up and she's like, "Oh, it's so great to have Titania here. It's amazing." And then She Hulk, well, uh, Jen, because she's Jen, is like, "She's here to mess with me." It's so obvious. Why doesn't anyone else see that? It's like, dude, she just arrived. You haven't got anyone's opinion outside of the bride. Mm -hmm. she, oh god, she's so self-centered. It's it's tough to watch sometimes. It's like, the whole world revolves around you, Jed. That's fine. Because the thing is, if I was standing there and she said, do you think she's here just to fuck with me? I'd be like, yeah, probably. Probably. But at the same time, well, yeah. you've asked nobody, and now you're like, why does nobody believe that I am correct about this? It's, it's like the bad... It's like it's that bad uh, screenwriting technique where the character has an actually a good point, so they have to phrase it in like the worst possible way, so no one believes them. Yeah, because isn't it public knowledge that she just sued uh, Titania for stealing her name? I mean, everyone should know about this. Yeah, after yeah. she prevented Titania from killing a whole bunch of people, <laughs> which for some did, reason nobody cares ever, about. Like, yeah, did the show ever explain how Titania got off nope. for like punching a bunch of cops in the face and nope. trying to murder she like, a jury? She got cleared of all charges. That's, That's an explanation. All we get. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All we get. Yes. Yes. Oh, fucking hell. So, um, yeah, and she says to Jed, not everything is about you. And I was like, that's, that's a fair line. I'm sorry. That's Jed earned it. Sounds accurate, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, then, then she goes outside to pout, and uh, Mr. Perfect shows up. Like... Gosh, it's just, I'm just looking for an incredibly beautiful woman who's doing exactly what you're doing. And she's like, <gasps> and, and oh, he's wait, that, yeah. just, it's just pouring as fuck. <laughs> like, it's like, yes, he's super interested in talking to you. And he likes oh you God. for you, not for she. This is why I'm hoping he is evil, by the way. It would make he's going to be evil or he's going to die. God, I want him to be evil. Batwoman rules. And die. <laughs> be evil, die, and be evil everything or is die. Wrong. Um, yeah, and then just, just excellent character writing, uh, Bride pops back up and she's like, Jen, some of my staff are quitting because of how I'm treating them. Can you help clean everything up, please? Yeah, it's, it's really annoying, like, when you are writing characters to essentially be, like, completely incapable of recognizing annoying traits that they may have. And then it's, like, played off as kind of a joke. Oh, yeah. People don't like that I'm not treating them very well. I mean, that's unbelievable. Anyway. Th yeah, th that's just... just everyone's course. cartoonish. It's, like... Yeah, I, that's... that's mm -hmm. Characterization is just, like... I... This is just an absurd clown world. Where, like... I don't know. Like, everybody is a caricature. It's so... It's so bizarre. It's... It's really disconnecting. Yeah, it is. Because I don't feel like I'm watching, like, characters... I feel like I'm watching props that are sort of being, you know, paraded around to just facilitate whatever plot line they need to do or whatever joke they think is really funny. But why can't you just write, like, people? Why can't you just write them as people and, and for some reason, instead of caricatures? You've got no spine with the bride. Do you remember how much of a spine she had against uh, Bruce? Uh, yeah. A whole lot. And <laughs> whole that just lot of vanished. It, yeah. We didn't yeah. need that spine anymore. It's gone. Because I'm sorry, but if I was invited as a guest to a wedding and I was discussing something quite, like, I was interested in one of the other guests and we were just we were having a good time and then the fucking bride says, can you tidy everything up because my, the people I've paid to be here, I fucked it all up and they don't want to be here anymore. Can you do it? I'd be like, nah. And, <laughs> like, and especially if we hated each other, which is apparently the idea here. Especially... You chose me as a bridesmaid, and now you're making me do this? Pay me, bitch. 
<laughs> well, and the the other thing, like this guy, I I believe is a groomsman, and he's interested in her, and he's not like, yeah, I'll help. Yeah, it'll, you well, know, she gives keep, him another want... job, I think. Oh, right? does she? That might be. I think so, but again, I just wish these characters would be like, nah, fuck you, we're talking, go away. Then again, I guess she's the well, bride, so you feel obligated, um, I don't know. Something that's felt... I, I, I feel like these scenes are all way shorter than they should be. Like a persistent feeling... Thank God. To to oh. <laughs> well, in a sense, yeah, but it's, it's also that um, <laughs> the conversations are never long enough to quite facilitate the goals that they have, like, from a narrative standpoint. It feels like every conversation is missing, like, a good 30-40% of its content. Um, so, like, the, the conversations never feel like they organically arrive where they should, or they get cut off way too soon. Because in this case, this conversation lasts, what, 30 seconds, maybe? Like, they 20 even, seconds yeah. at most, and then it gets it's interrupted so with fast. plot. And, like, this is meant to be important stuff in terms of character for Jen, right? It, it, it should be, but in the service of a joke, we need to find it, we need to insert our joke that's going to split them up so that they can't talk to each other for a while. I don't know. Well, we're just, think, we're not using our time effectively. Do you think next episode, are they going to continue this, like, Jen is meek? Yeah. So that she has to learn to, like, use her power when she's Jen and she... Oh, no, or is this just going to be, I, like, forgotten uh, next episode? I I'm not sure. Know. I couldn't I tell if this was an accident or not. The whole, like, she's she's just, uh, like, spineless with when it comes to... You know, she's, like, she's, uh, just takes orders from anybody who asks her to do anything that she's, um... Mm -hmm. Was that, a, was she that something like she did before? Episodes, I'm trying right? to think, like... Is that a part of it? Mean, yeah. I guess what we've noticed is that she will shit on people behind their back, but like when face to face, she never really directly confronts people with a problem that she has. Um, because we've seen a few examples of that <laughs> at this point. She'll like complain about them, but then she won't do anything to try and resolve the problem or the situation. So oh, apparently, on the YouTube upload of the She Hulk twerking scene, apparently one of the top comments is. Props to Ultron for seeing the internet for one second and deciding everything should die. We can't blame <laughs> him. <laughs> People really seem to love this show. Yeah. Another one is, I, like, there was a team of writers who wrote this, a team of directors who directed it, a team of actors who acted it, a team of editors that edited it, and through the whole process, not once did they say, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Or once that question was asked, it's like, damn, it's too late. <laughs> we already spent a lot of money on this. <laughs> That's the response. Someone on, on set is like, I don't know about this. It's like, we've we've spent we've spent money, so <laughs> some cost fallacy. <laughs> you yeah. You're gonna have to just let it happen there, Jerry. We gotta get it out. We gotta make something back for us, okay? We have investors. So these are all of the scorned parties of Mr. Immortal. Uh, and they have, including but not limited to, he disappears whenever the debt comes up. He was left, uh, he left them alone to raise children themselves, and the guy says, I spent $10,000 on his funeral. Like, how, okay. how, how did he have a funeral? Like, how did this even work? I don't what understand. What did they put in the coffin? Exactly. So... He walks into traffic, gets hit by a car, theoretically, and then gets straight back up, and then just walks away, and I guess someone said, oh my god, that guy over there died for sure, and his name was no, whatever his alias is. he got hit aliases. so hard, he <laughs> vaporized, and there was <laughs> nothing left. No All that blood, was left was nothing. the indentation on the car bumper. There was no <laughs> blood, style. no bones, no. no body. Gone. The timeline on this is insane also, because... You know, uh, as as they go through, the one chick's like, I was with him for nine years. Another's like, I was with him for three. He's immortal, but these busted chicks aren't. And they're all roughly the same age. So, like, what the hell is the timeline of going through nine marriage relationships, but having everybody be somewhere around 50 to 60? I don't get it. Like, all of these are supposed to be somewhat long term. Hey, they didn't think to diversity. To which one's 45? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. You you put that on paper. Which one of those is 45? I don't trust second, it at all. Second to the right, maybe? I was just in. about to say, yeah. I th Second to the right there in the yellow. What about furthest uh, left? He's got furthest like, left, white maybe. hair, gray hair, but there. Oh, she's so old, it's right? really... Yeah, this is a little bit complicated because black don't crack. So we have to really... <laughs> I gotta get a higher definition picture. Plus... 
We have the no, that's the two <laughs> lawyers. Okay, they're there. So uh, it's not going to <laughs> the chat. Gonna... The Indian woman could be anywhere from thirty-five to eighty. <laughs> that's legitimately true. <laughs> I, know, I don't know what it is about Indian people, but that's. <laughs> oh, there's a joke. There's a visual joke here. I never noticed. There's that that guy standing in front of the window. In case yeah, he's stuck. Yeah. Yep. He's there. That's okay. that can be the only because they don't have none of them have representation. None of them have lawyers for this negotiation. Right. This negotiation would be horrifying. It would take forever. No, There'd it could be solve so many in seconds because they're really good. You're crazy. But again, like, why didn't they have, you know, women ranging from 25 to like 86? Mm -hmm. Like, the that would be interesting. Really young women, really old. Like one of them's like a legitimately like 85 or something like that. She's really, really old. I remember back when I met him in 1917, we would. Imagine you know, if you really kind of... wanted to do drama and you had like a woman who got crushed by this experience and she never wanted to, you I know, pursue remarried. any new relationship. She killed again. herself. Oh, all right. Um, well, I don't need that. She could be alive Whoa. and present. Oh, it's just, it's um, always once dead women in this show. It's, it's just, it would be interesting if you found opportunities to. You can be comedy while also having like really meaningful drama, but we're not interested in doing that. Which, that's their choice. I guess it's just when the show has nothing to offer by way of its comedy. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no. it's just, I, like, for me, it just, it was... I, I go back to this. The, the the chick with the top knot there, she's with him for nine years. She be 45. The, the chick next to him, or next to her, is uh, was with him for three years, but also had two children and is old. So, like... What is the timeline on this? Each one of these relationships presumably <laughs> took a while to get into. If you just I, I, went through, some of these people would have to have aged out of this. It's like bizarre. all the others are like one year long. Or? It's just a random selection of people. You just whatever, just throw them in. Yeah, this random guy. No thought thrown into any of this. It pisses me off. Well, it's a filler episode. They just need to get it one and done, get it out of the way. The funny joke is he's Mr. Immortal and he's a dick to everybody else who jumps out a window, lol. Also, they're asked how they knew, what was it that got them to find out about all this, and they say that the video of him, like, getting back up was uploaded to Intelligentsia, and then they're like, oh, that, that, that website for man babies? Yeah. It's like, oh god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> the website for man babies that calls out a man for deceiving women? Okay. That a, that a woman is browsing? Yeah, right. it's, it, I just, I... Uh... Okay. She's I the guess. Alex Jones fan. <laughs> and like cuz that's the that's obviously the implication is that it's it's Infowars or whatever, right? Like well, it, or Breitbart, I guess. One could I, The know. thing is it, it has like a Reddit format. So sometimes I wonder. I'm just like do they know what it is it's that they internet. hate or It's internet. Yeah, it's the internet. Yeah, I it's guess the internet it, it could just babies. be 4chan. Like, yeah. it could be, yeah. As, as we all know, the internet is anti-woman and, and it hates women and women are not welcome on the internet. So it's just the internet in general. Just generally no, the that, internet. That's true. Like women keep out. Yeah, women are not allowed. It's our treehouse. Yeah. yeah Please. Absolutely. So. Every they, time I'm banned, it's a woman's fault. They turn around and they're like, you faked your death and falsified identities. If there were any like justice in the world, you'd be serving blah, 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 blah. You, she says there would be more than a civil case as if to imply it would be a criminal case. It's like, how isn't this a criminal case? Like how, how is it that he's broken a bazillion laws? Why isn't it like the people against Mr. Immortal for all the shit that he's done? All the fraud. Mm -hmm. But also you knew he did this. He sat in your office and exactly. told you. <laughs> he's this is what I say. She's like, oh, it should be more than a civil case. Like, are you going to do anything about that? Or are you, just, you, I don't know, what's happening here? I mean, the government and, would be after him for tax evasion, but. They'd be after so, him for all kinds of things. He's already, yeah. he broke laws while he was here with, with the, the smashing the window and jumping on the car. Like, I don't understand. That's fine. Listen. It's so in the, in the negotiation room, at the negotiation table, presumably in earshot of the uh, opposing parties. Yes. The lawyer and the paralegal tag team berate the client, call him <laughs> scum, suggest that they're going to settle this how they want, and you're going to pay out to these women. This is malpractice incarnate. Like, this is the worst <laughs> representation you could have for a client. And like, and you're going to pay. And they're like, well, what are we going to do? I don't know, but it's going to be fun. It's like, what would be fun about any of this 
like taking this man's money and giving it to women who are opposed to you. Like that doesn't make any sense from any attorney perspective. Wrong. Yeah, but I, that's the problem. You're thinking of it from an attorney perspective and not a woman justice perspective. Specifically clown women. I mean, these, th this woman would be disbarred for this. Like if he filed an ethics complaint, she badgered me into it, made me pay more, did not represent my interests, uh, forced me to settle on something I didn't want to do and, and offered no alternative solutions at all. This is, this is what she did. Like, Oh my God. It's insane. Uh, and yeah, they, uh, the, the, at first they're just, well, yeah. So we'll see what they decide to go with for settling for that in a sec. We'll come back. First of all, they're preparing for the wedding or the rehearsal. I can't tell anymore. She's in her bridesmaid outfit, which um, I, she, she like approaches these people like, hey, woohoo, friends. And I'm just like, are they her friends? Or does she hate all these people too? I, I never even know anymore. We're just sort of going there. They hand her a bundle of shirts. It's like, okay. And she says, the groomsmen were playing Mario Kart and they wrinkled their shirts. You have to iron them. Now, I don't know, like... I don't know, a prof as a proficient Mario Kart player myself, I'm not quite sure <laughs> how you manage to deal that much damage to your attire. I don't know how you play Mario oh, yeah, Kart, yeah. but the way that you got to play as an expert pro is to be nice and chill, be calm, slow it down, think about your strategies, think about which character you're playing as, what cart you want to use. It's not that hard to preserve the integrity of your shirts while playing Mario Kart, okay? No, this... this this frame actually shows exactly how it happened, okay? So if you notice, these are all uh, men of a particular body shape and look uh, very, very <laughs> soy-filled men. And there's one soy Nintendo filled. Switch. So they, they have done... <laughs> while one was playing Mario Kart, the other three were making out, and then they traded the Switch around, and that's uh, what happened. Yeah, it's it's, they're playing Mario Kart. <laughs> it's like, no, one of them is playing Mario Kart. Uh, the, the other record. three are spectating. Dude, the, the one guy who's just sta how did he ruin his shit just by standing? What happened? Like what? What did he do? <laughs> and then yeah. the, 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 some people in chat have mentioned it's like, is this because it came so so quickly after the man babies comment? It's like, is this the man babies thing? It's like, look, the women are having to sort out all the stupid things the men are doing while they're playing video games at a wedding. Mm-hmm. Also, they, they all so were we, wearing white undershirts. Like, all of them were wearing white undershirts on, on I, presumably, rental tuxedos. Like, why? So they could have I, this scene. <laughs> like, <laughs> you put me in a rental tux, I'm not wearing a white undershirt. I get too fucking warm. Um, and yeah, there's just this, this thing where they're like, oh, how unfortunate. Now you gotta iron the shirts. Oh, damn. And again, it's like, Jen, can you just say no, please? I don't even like you, yes, but I know. it's getting tired. Y'all like, do it. I know, fuck you. Um, yeah, and then they're like, look how funny we are, here's your groomsman, it's a dog. And it's, I just don't quite understand what's happening here, especially when they make it sound like the dog's dying. It's just like, what are you... Well, I think it is. That's what I'm saying, like, I, what's... Why are we doing this to this poor little critter? I don't why understand. Like, why, is, all fucked up. why is this that funny to them? It's just like, let's just mean. You get yeah. Wong to portal that thing into a volcano or whatever. Whoa. <laughs> no, nah, no, just let him go. If you're gonna, dude, Whoa. if you're gonna use multiversal travel, send him to a vet. <laughs> send him away from this place. Yeah, get him away from this place. There's no wedding. consideration for their well, this well-being of this critter. Those are man hands, I'm just saying. Well, the dog is being manhandled, okay? This, this dog needs to get out of here. Run the That's fuck true. away. Live a happier life. Oh, right, yeah. Back to this scene. So, yeah, uh, he basically says, I have loads of money thanks to inheritance or whatever. Um, everyone can split it evenly and we can all move on. It's the most bizarre, give... like, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> what the hell? I'll just give away everything I've had for my entire life. Apparently. Uh, yeah, you got... That's what they completely... advised him to do. <laughs> it's just... completely disproportionate. He talks about splitting up gold and his ownership of several original stock certificates from 1981. Like, it, fortunes of money. And it's like, th some of these, the one guy was out 10 grand. It's like, what, you're going to give him, you're going to give him like $600,000? Like, why? Nice. And marry this it's guy. such a child's view of Tell like, you've, you've annoyed these people. Give them sack of money split between them. Solved. Like, 
But, you know, luckily the show is very realistic. And so, of course, it's like, wait a minute, I was married to him for three years, you were married to him for eight years. How is this fair? Like, it shouldn't be that we get equal money. It's like, ooh, that presents an issue. Which is just like, yeah, the, the lawyers couldn't see that one come in, could they? They couldn't figure that out. That's a complicated development. It's uh, incredible, even. So, um... Uh, the paralegal, Miss Ramos, is incredible, by the way. This gets uh, stated a little bit later. She has a solution. She speaks to them all and figures out individual solutions they all agree to of differing levels of satisfaction, right? Like, And this ranges from lots of money to he smiles and looks at you with eye contact and says sorry. And they're all I'll, dumb. I'll just, I'd rather have for, the money. I'd rather have the money, yeah. They're, yeah, they're all dumb for not taking a one-eighth share of a literal fortune. Exactly. Um, like it's insane that they would actually concede to these. Well, really... maybe they'd know better if they had lawyers present to represent <laughs> their interests, but they don't. Why would they do that? And, that uh, would be crazy. Yeah. I, I, he tries to kill himself there too. That was good. Right, right. Then she has to stop him. He's gonna go because they start. They all start yelling about who's. <laughs> well, how are we gonna split up this money? It's not fair because I spent more time. Blah 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 blah. And it's like, okay, oh, okay. I get it. But this is dumb. <laughs> like, this is just idiotic. Uh, none of you have lost what he's going to give you, but they're so petty. And again, this is women writing women characters. It's This is not a man's fault. The women are so petty that they're more concerned about what the person next to them is getting in comparison <laughs> to them than what they're getting in comparison to their loss. And I mean, that it, is just it, embarrassing. As you said, if they had taken an eighth of the thing that he had described, that is a shit ton compared to certainly what some of them were even entitled to, like you said. Um, yeah. Again, it's, what are you doing? Now, what are you doing? Next, we had a thing where I was just like almost disappointed in terms of. Um, Let's just look at it in terms of creativity with editing, right? So Jen is walking around, she's sad. Like, can I have um, drinks? And it's like, you have to pay. And she's like, ugh. And so they do a montage cut, and it's so awesome. She slams down money, then it cuts to her doing a dance of some kind. And then another one. And then slam down money, and then back to her doing a dance. And, another. and I was thinking to myself, like, maybe I shouldn't set the standard at the level of Wait, Edgar did Wright. Did they reverse that shot? With the five dollar bills, I think so. They uh, reverse really? it so that the fives were backwards. Because I was like almost it. about to say, "Oh, two dollar yeah. bills." You don't see those those very often. And then, not this. Oh, it's one. the same shot. <laughs> it is. No, it's me. It's... Is it? It can't be. No, oh no! Two on both. Two on both. This is the first shot, right? Did you see it's the, the first, first shot, shot reverse? Backward. It's I definitely can't. mirrored. Oh, you're right. Like, it's weird to see a $2, but then it's just, if it's Yeah, then five... I looked, I was like, oh, wait, it's not a $2 bill, it's a 5 They were... Why didn't you just shoot? <laughs> wait, if they legit... <laughs> oh, my God. Because they, that... like, rotated the frame the and numbers are back. The yeah, numbers the numbers are, they, are they, actually they backwards. Yeah, so I just I kept reusing the first shot. I'm tired. This so show is so underfunded down, that they Steve, own... And all the text. And Abraham... Everything's Luke, fucked, is that Abraham yeah. Abraham looking there? His head is upside down. Oh, Dude, they only come had on. twelve dollars. That's Holy, all they had. It would have made more sense <laughs> to just repeat the clip. You didn't need to <laughs> fucking mirror it. You could have just played the same one. Or you could have just rearranged someone the money. Down the money it's again. Not, but but the thing is, like, <laughs> you could play the same one over and over and over again just to give the sense of like, yep, she was just doing the same thing every time. Like, you know, this, you don't have to. I mean, we'd probably oh. still make fun of it for that, but this is funnier. This is because I knew I was like how that's that's amazing that you that noticed that it because you saw bills. the two yeah like but it's yeah, not a two at all. Thing. It's rare. <laughs> whenever I go to the whenever I go to the bank, I say, "Give me all your two dollar bills," just because when you pay for cash, not that you do it very much at all. At least if you're me, it's it's neat to give two dollar bills. People think it's weird, you know. It's it's fun. It's quirky. Uh, so I know myself a two dollar bill, and I was like, "Wow, they actually got two dollar bills for this. That's weird. I wonder if it meant some." Oh no, it's reversed. Yeah, just so for anyone in chat who's curious, right? Because there's some people who still think this is a two. Go to the the corner there where you see the two. I'll put my cursor on it. Draw to here. Notice Abraham this, Lincoln's this, face. hang. Yeah, you go go something more straightforward for people, especially non Americans. You see, that's supposed to say note, but instead it looks like zaw, and then there's an upside down T, and then a correct E. Like it's fucked if that two is correct, which is not. Mm -hmm. Wait, in, in the first shot, isn't her hands at the bottom of the frame, right? Yeah, they they like they like, like mirrored it upside it. down. 
They That's mirrored it and flipped it, I think. Yeah. Well, so why didn't they flip it, but then not then mirror it so it's not backwards? But just no, it's direction. it's just upside down. I think it's just upside down. Uh, you might. Yeah, be see, no, but they could have just flipped it so it was like a vertical flip, and then flipped it horizontal. So it's they like could have like, just shot another shot. That's well, assuming, what they should have done. Yeah, but yeah, was it so <laughs> fucking hard for it to pick up the same dollars and put them down again? <laughs> they don't Holy wanna, shit! He has insurance. They don't want her to get injured slamming the money down, so they didn't want to. Spring for slamming it down twice. No, they only had the twelve dollars. Okay, can't have your actress get injured. <laughs> yeah, because some people are like, why? Why are you nitpick it so hard? It's like no, 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 no. This is indicative of how they filmed it. They're lazy as hell. It's funny, because and it's it's a cut scene, so someone had to consciously edit that. Yeah. Do it. Watch what they were doing on screen, and have that be the result. And someone probably reviewed it too. You can't just flip text. <laughs> <laughs> that third you know? one was the first one just zoomed in a little wasn't it i think yeah i yeah. think they just zoomed in was there another yeah. one show us another one it's funny come on do it oh i think that's it oh so yeah they had one shot of it and then they were like you need to show three and they're like we can't do that we haven't got Wait, so three. she bought three twelve dollar glasses of champagne and now she's destroyed like she is destroyed nick i'd go as far as saying they wanted to imply she bought a lot more but they couldn't go further than the three shots because they'd already pushed it with <laughs> mirroring it and zooming in yeah. <laughs> like, we got totally all these so many flips we this can't is... figure out how to use this twelve dollar slap down again in a different way <laughs> we're really running out of ideas god so bad So anyway, uh, yeah, like I said, she figures out the best solution and everything's sorted and Mr. Invincible gets to be happy, Mr. Immortal. Yay, woohoo, we did it. It's so just, they needed and to fill time. The the black woman with the top knot, again, when they get this all done, she goes, money, 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 like that. And it's like, God, you just make everybody into shallow monsters. Like, everybody's horrible. But it's funny, mm -hmm. Nick. It's funny. It is very funny, actually. So maybe you should take that into consideration. But being so you open your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you're missing so, the uh, pretty obvious here. Mr. Perfect shows up, and uh, and then she tells him because she's drunk now, so she can overshare. She just wanted to come to a wedding and show she's doing good, even though she doesn't have a husband or a boyfriend. And she says, "I'm doing so good. I'm good at lawyering the law, and I'm very strong." And he gives, intoxicated. and every answer he gives is exactly how you answer a really drunk woman, right? Like, he's like, oh, yeah, I can see you're so strong. Like, oh, you bet you are really successful. Like, and this is actually a really <laughs> awkward scene for me because, you know, he's <laughs> like, you know what he's after is what you're going to say. Is it? Well, no, I, like, you know, he's into her, he's but she's acting, she's acting in that really embarrassing way. And it's like, okay, like. I'm I'm into you, but like this is kind of sad. Is the impression that I get from him? I mean, maybe I'm reading it wrong, but like when she's got his tie in her hand, he's like, "Yeah, you're so strong." Well, yeah, because he says, cool. "I think you're great," and she goes, "You do?" And he goes, "I do." It's just like, maybe, I guess I wonder. Maybe it's the point, but it's like you said, I'm strong and I'm good at lawyering. It's like, who are you, Jennifer Waltz? It's like, who are you, really? Like, who are you? What do you like? What do you want? Like, who are you? You're not, you're not very well characterized. Well, and, and um, she, they're telling us that those are the main characters. It's like, well, you're very bad at lawyering. And I mean, right. and I, guess, I guess you are really, strong. Like, that's, that's like an attribute that you have, but it doesn't really tell me anything about you. Well, and she um, made it clear in the previous episode that her having power means men shouldn't think they're, uh, they're good enough for her. Does he but, like, know? Who are she, you? She what, you know? Like, I, I think she, I don't know if he knows yet. Well, he uh, like at the end, obviously, but well, she maybe he would not know she's She Hulk at this point. This me, I, I, just, I think we're supposed to assume nobody fucking knows. This is so confusing. Like, how like, is it possible? I know, I know. She, I know, she I know. walked up. She walked up as She Hulk when she got there. Was he like? I don't know if he was in the scene yet or not. I don't think he was. I guess. I guess. Yeah, he, he wouldn't know about that. Uh, he didn't see that, and he's just unfamiliar with her in general. Well, is someone like? If there was a, if we lived in the world of superheroes and a new superhero came out who was a cousin of the Hulk, one of the most famous heroes ever, you just think everyone would know everything about this person. It'd be like impossible to avoid. It'd be, they'd be like a celebrity. 
You would think so, yeah. The show established that apparently most people don't know. So yeah, get fucked. <laughs> get wrecked, Sitch. Loser. Well, he's just a nice guy then. Hashtag TM. Um, well, it, it, it's not that nice. He doesn't look after her or even look to see how she handles the she vomits. Uh, yeah, I really thought he was going to be there, like, but no, he's just like, whatever. <laughs> Well, so funny enough, I brought this up on uh, on Open Bar, and Drinker was like, "Nah, when you're like hitting on a girl, she goes and vomits. You just you'll just ditch her." And it's like, I mean, yeah. the thing is, you'll ditch her, right? Because that's the thing. But you'll at least make sure she didn't, you know, fucking something really bad could happen theoretically, right? Like you just want to make sure she's not dying or anything. It depends what your goal is, Moeller. Okay, is your goal to be a good person, or is your goal to score? Well, I guess we'll find out, right? Because this guy could score. Well, we still got theories about him being evil, so. Oh, can we go with the the inconsistency where she talks about not getting like she? So in the first episode, you know, she and Bruce drink a whole shitload, right? And right. he's like, "Yeah, it's hard to get drunk when you're when you're in green form, which is fine." But then she wakes up and she has the worst hangover ever. Later in the series, she's like, "Perks of being She Hulk, no hangovers." I'm like, "No, literally not. That's the opposite of what it happened." <laughs> Is that you get a really bad anger, but never got drunk in the first place. So what, what the hell? What you're highlighting is either the issue you're highlighting or a different one. Because if that means you don't get hangovers as long as you're in She-Hulk form, then you should just be in She-Hulk form whenever you've got a hangover, right? You should be like, well, I'll just avoid that by being... Uh, she doesn't yeah, do that just... when she's with Bruce for some reason. She's like, you didn't warn me about the hangovers. And it's like, well, then mm -hmm. just become She-Hulk. Why wouldn't... Well, I mean, also, does that even make sense? Like, how would that even work? Because presumably when she's Sea hulk you know, she's metabolizing the alcohol away too quickly. So then it should just be gone, right, from her system? Yes. Yes. That, like, that would be the medical explanation that you yeah, would I expect. I don't think we're making sense of that anytime soon. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she's vomiting, and then she's like, oof, and then Titania punches her no. in the face. Uh. So that's so. Just, as a lawyer, this is gold. Yeah, actually, you've just you're right. been delivered gold. This Especially woman <laughs> came up to you after you beat her in court, and she assaulted you. And she's rich. She's and really, she's rich. really is, rich. It's the best thing that could ever happen to you in your whole fucking life. Well, so some people are highlighting in her gen form. It's like, well, they seem to want us to believe that she's kind of invulnerable in her gen form. I oh, guess. when Bruce got, was in the car crash, he got hurt. I don't know yeah, how it makes any sense either. She's better than him. I don't I'm, understand. I'm still going to go back to the hangover thing for one second. We okay. did an analysis of the hangover and like the, the drinking and the metabolism. I just want to point out, she specifically says, I get hangovers. And then later specifically says the advantage is no hangovers. Like that is, it's. <laughs> Just an obvious inconsistency. The advantage of being a She-Hulk. No hangovers. Like, no, you bitch, you literally get hangovers. You just, you, you had a whole episodic bit about it. How are anyway. they supposed to remember that, Nick? Come on. You, well, you, are, on you ask the impossible. That's what I think. That you are asking a lot of them, actually. I, didn't, I wanted to say something earlier, but you should <laughs> chill with the expectations that you place on these, these poor, poor Disney writers. I do, I do love that she just like super strength, flat out uppercuts this chick right in the face. She goes flying and tumbling. She's fine though. Like nothing's wrong. Nope, she'll be fine. It's all good. Good to establish that nothing will be able to. I'm sure that won't be contradicted at some point in the future. It'll be fine. Um, yeah, she says I'm going to publicly destroy you. Like, how do you? Like, like I know she's a she's an incredibly stupid character, Titania, but. I don't think it looks to just beat up a person after, like, losing to them in court and after they stopped you from trying to murder people. Well, I mean, she got off on those charges, so, you know. I guess so. Very yeah, like, true. like, what do you hope to accomplish? Just, like, I'm cool, I can beat She-Hulk up. Okay. Who the fuck is Titania? <laughs> like, what? Where did you come from? What, what's your deal? Why are you super strong? Does anyone care? 
Shouldn't she be the, younger if this supposed to be like an influencer like that they're making fun of? Did she fall into a vat oh, of perfume? very, very offensive. <laughs> She's wow. like a 50-year-old woman people. or something. I don't understand. Oh. Like, 50-year-old women can be influential. Like, yes. Take dude. a look at How, how many 50-year-old Tubman. Instagram influencers are right now? 300. Betsy Ross. Okay. Rosie the Riveter. Uh, yeah, so she keeps telling her, like, turn into She-Hulk. No yours. fun unless you're She-Hulk. And everyone's obsessed with you. You don't get to ruin me over something you don't even want or deserve. Yeah. And it's like, oh, fucked. see? Something you don't even want. But does she want it? Hmm. That is the question of Jesus. <laughs> like, it's not Stop. clever. Stop saying it like that. It's dumb. That actress is 36? Oh, no. Which Yo, one? Why she did was... you call her 50? She was decent looking in the good place. They have her. She was, they have her done up really weird here with like her yeah. hair and her overdone eye makeup. <laughs> but I think someone said in the uh, in the books she's like married and um, has a has like some different story. I don't know what the hell's going on with it. Oh, she wait. looks like a Brandon Rogers character. Um, chat. This is their attempt at doing double vision from being drunk. <laughs> this was like I legit was like, "Whoa, this looks terrible." <laughs> and is it hard to do double vision? Are you fucking kidding me? Well, it's easy. You just take the frame, you lower the opacity, and you put it on top of itself. Exactly, and it looks pretty good. Most of the I've never seen anyone fail at doing double vision, but this looks weird as fuck. <laughs> that does look weird. That does look weird. I don't know. Um, it's because it's because one frame is normal and the other is moving. It's supposed to them both moving, so it looks very bizarre. It's just not how double vision works. At least not when no. I've had it. Uh, if so, I have two eyes, I should always have double vision. Checkmate. <laughs> Got him. Then she's like, uh, "Give me a sec. I'll become She-Hulk. Hang on." And they do it again. Her transformation is uh, off screen. It's always off screen because I don't have the money to do it. Lost a bunch, yeah. Um, and the first thing she does is crash the ground around her and then force the fight into a room filled with people. Yeah, because imagine if Titania <laughs> fell on someone. If she's super duper strong, that might also mean like that she's very dense or otherwise heavier than she might appear. She could hurt someone. And Even remember, if she's a regular, like regular, you know, weight. That happens in this if, fight. Like, yeah, she get does. Rid of superhuman, like you could, you don't know what. Like, you could hurt someone. What are you doing? And there's no she's drunk excuse either. She, she, no, the she's drunk effects drunk don't work when she's as She-Hulk. Soon as, she's, as soon as she's She-Hulk, yeah, that's it. Also, this dress even... was... Just everything... Well, I mean, everything <laughs> scales. <laughs> like, it doesn't... You don't even need the clothes to actually, like, scale, because it always is fine. Well, no, anyway, it, was, so. it was weird, because when she's wearing the dress earlier, she's holding it like it's gigantic. Like, it was made for her to be in She-Hulk form. But yeah, but I was going to say, who provided these dresses? Because it wasn't the... the... Exactly. Presumably the bride, like, so it would have to go get the, measured out. The bride yeah, provided it for She-Hulk, but yeah. doesn't want it to be She-Hulk, right? Okay. It's weird that this is in the episode where they specifically, like, have her wearing the dress that's supposed to conform to her size, and this isn't that dress, but they don't... It, how do you fuck it up? I you, don't know. The last episode and this one were about that, like, specifically as a plot element. Mm -hmm. Also, bridesmaids' dresses are terrible. Like, they're they're not just ugly, they're also, like, cheap. All of them? Or the well, I, I, I just in general, they're they're pretty bad. But it doesn't. Titania doesn't have to be super dense, by the way, because she's like, even if she's a hundred like her molecular structure. <laughs> molecular structure. Oh, yeah, even that, if she's just a, even if she's a regular <laughs> regular weight like that you would expect, she you still hurt yeah. someone by throwing a person at them. You know. Yeah, it's it's like, one hundred and thirty no pounds. Are. Like, Dude, the, geez. But he's running we don't care about collateral damage. It looks so bad. And then just that God, kick. And look at the awful. momentum exchange. It's like, oh, we're back. We're fine. Like, what? Well, you know, if you yeah. kick someone who's flying at you, and it, it's enough to make them stop and go back, it means you won't move at all. That's yeah. just basic yeah. physics. Yeah. As you know, you'll just stand without, yeah. It's as if you never touched. It's an elastic collision. But it's it's really nice and easy to do if the person you're fighting isn't The really fact there. that you've got a crap. Dude, this is a Hulk. Like, do you remember what Hulk does? <laughs> like, how strong he is? No, she's that, a better Hulk. She doesn't and have she's to worry about, about She's at least, I mean, she seems to be about as strong, and you're all just sort of, like, standing here. 
Man. It's, <sighs> and also that Jen doesn't seem to care about getting this fight away from these people who are no. in very no. serious danger. He's having too much fun. On. We are trying to have fun. So how, how does her getting punched in the teeth by Hulk not cause damage, but later when she falls on her cheek, she it like trips, her face yeah. Up. I can well, explain yeah, this. Right. The, it, this, yeah. punch, this punch loosened maybe, them. No. Maybe she <laughs> actually <laughs> is wrong. very dense. Oh, oh, I see. God. Like, yeah, there it is. Where she punched it into a civilian. Like, oh, yeah, nice. what did he do? What was his flip? Look at his flip. Oh, and How I'm pretty he... sure that guy gets pushed down like in a minute as well. He, uh, he's not having a good day. Going to slow mo on this one for ranks. He, yeah, so, he gets destroyed. Boom. How's he? The, how's that guy not paying attention to the fight he's either? Weird. He's like looking at his phone or something. <laughs> Why did he get taken well, yeah, out? Well, well, because, he's, he's just, because he's planted he's just, here for that specific purpose. He's just standing there holding he's looking it down. <laughs> Everyone's looking at the like, fight. What, like, what else could you be looking at? My wait dude? a minute. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my eyes are having trouble with this. Did, he's yeah, teleporting, right? Yeah. I, look at, look I, at the framework. Why does he fall like that? <laughs> because. <laughs> yes, what? What? Watch how the top of his body throws itself backwards. Yeah, and he's he changes Instead places going... too. He wasn't there, and now he's over here. Like the, they both move. This is more where they were. And yeah, then he like just... he should be flying into that table. Yeah, like in terms of, but he just sort of like stands still. He stops her completely. It's like he gets punched in the face really hard from the right. Not that. Yeah, he, was... he gets he gets hit from straight on, but yeah. he falls. Backwards. To the right and left. It's weird. Like, oh god, it's weird. Well, it, it's like he was supposed <laughs> to. He was flying to the table, but they couldn't. Like, he, he would die then. So he's just like, we'll just fall backwards. That's you they didn't want to ruin the delicious cake, which yeah, is yeah, I yeah, can yeah. appreciate. It, they, they like the, the, the momentum of it would have caused so much more damage. But once she reaches him, he's sort of just like, yeah, ooh, I'm fine. Don't worry yeah. about it. Because yeah, I think maybe yeah, they realize yeah, halfway through, like, oh, this is bad. Actually, that she helped causes yeah. this. But the most inaccurate part of the scene is no one is yelling "World Star." <laughs> World Star. Also, his pan is weird. Not his pan. His tray is really weird too. What goes on with his tray? What goes on with flying? It? It's flying like, off to does... the side. Does it hit that woman? Oh no! You no, know, like how does his tray do all that? Like it. You'd have to try. It's dynamic. The, the, all these things fall around. Is that around. even a real tray? Dude, I'm willing to bet he didn't exist right until she got punched. And then they were like, Spoof, there he is, and then... Cause it looks... Wong teleported him in, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> that would be in Wong's character. Wong! Damn you! So, um... Yeah, that guy is... Showing... Uh, yeah, the bottle uh, just showing bounces. his weird reactions. Yeah, well, because I guess he's going to be important now, going forward. I don't even know, but... What an epic, epic thing. This, all the episodes have been leading to this, guys. Titania versus She-Hulk. Even the old lady's on her phone. She's, she's with the kids. She's with technology. Voice or anything. <laughs> like, the one guy in the back didn't give a shit. Did you see him? Oh, my God. He has the look on his face like, what is happening? <laughs> the guy by the doorway is like, this Oh, that is guy? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at him like back it. there. Yeah, on the, like, I'm getting paid. <laughs> it's, yeah, he's just <laughs> I'm making that it. Disney extra money. I'm just trying to get over and get that cake. That's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> I'm on this side of the room. The cake is on the other side of the room. There's a Hulk in a crazy fashion lady this is between just, me and the cake. Mm -hmm. It's a bizarre I need to play scenario. the field. Well, and Jen is like standing there smiling. She's not concerned about that guy that she just knocked into the no, table. No, why would she be? She's like, Fine. whatever. He got paid. Oh, he looks a little bit more spooked and concerned now. There go. There he is. Oh, man. Oh, wow. That cake. He's worried about that cake. <laughs> <laughs> he's really. Cause what did she trip on? Oh, he's ice, back to ice. not giving a shit. <laughs> it's like yeah. the dance floor thing. What did you trip on? No, it was ice from the guy that got the ice. Yeah. Now yeah. I need to know. Yeah, it was ice from sure? the champagne holder. Yeah. yeah. Are you sure? What is this what? guy doing? He's like rubbing his hands together. Like, <laughs> 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 this is thinking his about them okay. beans. He's like, yes. <laughs> if, <laughs> He's concocting a plot. <laughs> if one of them falls unconscious, she's coming home with me. <laughs> 
So yeah, uh, she flips out because everyone's recording her while it, she fucked up her veneers, and then she's like, "You only have fifty followers," and then pushes over the guy that she hit earlier, and then steals the cake and runs away. Beep, 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 beep. I don't, I don't know what they want me to feel anymore. You know, oh, that's right. She's that's why that guy it's had the fall cake. so weird is because they couldn't destroy the cake because she uh, didn't steal it. Then why did they have the cake behind there at all? Yeah, just move the cake. The cake could anywhere in that it. room. It oh, could have been by the guy who out. really wanted the cake. Yeah, steal it though. Yes, they grabbed it on the way out. Yeah, it could have been to the side. You know, it didn't have. Could have been on the other side. Listen, surely, yeah. Listen, they they only filmed her putting down twelve dollars once, Rex. Okay, that's true. God, so, the CGI is so bad. It I mean, is so it's bad. Yeah, it's very much. It does give off Fiona vibes every once in a while, like. It does, yeah. Like, it's, like it's so inconsistent. Like sometimes it's all right, and then sometimes it really doesn't look real at all. Dare like totally. To Fiona, not a queen. Well, Fiona will probably look about this good in the newer Shrek movies. <laughs> yeah. Are they making more? It's just that the whole Live world will Shrek match remake? her, so that would be oh, why. Oh no! Oh, sorry. Yeah, we got the we got the big payoff. She's She Hulk in the wedding when she said she <laughs> wouldn't be, and she's pulled attention away. Even though the more pressing matter would probably be the fucking fight, but you know. Really or the guy with the the guy with the medical emergency on the floor yeah. still. Yeah, that would be something. <laughs> if she, if she doesn't want a superhero to draw attention away, why would she invite Titania to the party? Did she? Titania was an ant. She was an and one. The yeah. groom's oh, okay, the groom's okay. friend brought her as an and one. How, what, a, what a coincidence that she, well, randomly she, came, she came here just yeah, to fuck with She Hulk. Really though. Was there though, so she, clearly yeah. she was chill with that. She was happy, remember? Yeah, right. she didn't seem to complain. Yeah, you know what? That's actually yeah. a really good point. Titania showing up at all is just an attention hog, surely. Kind of distracting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Super famous. But she didn't celebrity. seem to care, she seemed to love it, which is reflected here where she says, Oh my god, I love that you're She Hulk. And because she's drunk. So I it guess. all was chill in the end, I guess. It was all cool. It worked out in the end, yeah. You should just be She-Hulk. Yeah. It's so terrible because the whole setup of this episode is like, oh, she's treating Jen like shit. Jen needs to stand up for herself. And then there's no payoff because at the end, there's no like resolution of that conflict. So is she drunk and well, doesn't recognize her? Her? No, she's... The resolution was no big deal, basically. No, but like, no, like, Jen stands up for herself and says, like, yeah. you're a bad friend. Or, you know. uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the arc is meant to be. <laughs> there isn't one. Back yeah, the plot. one. Yeah, remembering that she did show up as She Hulk originally, was berated for doing it as being too distracting, and then the, the this bride comes back and she's like, "I'm so happy She Hulk's." At my it's like you knew She Hulk was at your wedding. You told her not to be. Yeah, I don't, like she's oh, drunk here in the scene, right? She's I don't know if be? that. I guess. Where's her damn husband? Right? It could be that they're trying to say she recognizes now is not the time to complain about it. She should celebrate it. Like, optically, it's the better choice. Or they could just be like, no, she just really does like She-Hulk, and that's a more honest POV coming out because she's drunk. I don't know. We, we don't know. There's not enough information. I yeah, I don't know. Also, you're right. We never, see the we never see the groom, do we? Never no. not, yeah. Why would they have the groom steal attention oh, away do, from Has the, the wedding happened yet? Or I don't what? know if the that, wedding even happened. Like, has it happened yet or not? I don't know. Who knows? It's, it is bizarre that we don't see the groom, though. That is legitimately very strange. Um, I assume this is the party after the ceremony because you, you're I not sure that it was, right? Yeah. Yeah, because you have the well, ceremony. It, it was boring. You had to sit through that bullshit. Common, and you then have a party beforehand. Party yeah. Yeah. Now they're using a Safari browser, I guess. So there's, there's, on... a, there's a couple things I thought were interesting about this. First of all, the website design is hideous. Like, what yes. is this? What is the navigation of it? It doesn't look like there's any options. You just see five trending things and that's it. Oh, they are the web. What do you mean? We are the web. So that's pretty cringe too. But it says at the top, Intelligentsia <laughs> trending videos. Now, what is this top 10 best travel destinations? Like, that could be a video, sure. 24 hour loop of countryside driving. Yeah, that's a video. Slutty she hulk. Okay. It's like that seems like it would be images, but fine, I can it maybe. Seems like buy. that'd be number one. Yeah, but then you got yeah, we're recreating speed. famous artworks. Like, are you sure these are videos? Seems like these are pictures. It seems like they're really into travel, um, art, and just relaxing scenery. Yeah, I know it's slut. funny, right? At the <laughs> best travel <laughs> destinations, it's like, gosh, these people need to be stopped. Oh, is this just Cozy.tv? I don't know. I, I don't exactly know what they're trying to make fun of, like I said. 
Yeah, I thought I thought they're sort of trying to say that Intelligentsia was some kind of 4chan man baby well, place, so, but it's just like fair, random stuff. This is the public viewing one. They eventually sign in, oh, and that's when they find all the spooky one. stuff. But we'll do oh, the the public wow. facing one first. So this is how people found out Nick about him. Profile and we'll show you all the horrific conspiratorial stuff. The, well, yeah, because the they try to sign in on something and they don't let them, and then they eventually sign in. But so this is the account they create. Username: She Hulk underscore sucks. Nice. <laughs> and then first name anonymous, last name lol no, city internet, country no way. Choose your interests: Bigfoot, Bitcoin, USA, exercise, protein, UFOs. <laughs> Protein's pretty. If fun. you're into being healthy, <laughs> fuck you. I just. <laughs> It just sounds so, like, disconnected. Because you can see how they grab these tags, but the simultaneously is like, oof. And so you got, um, I'm super into cryptocurrency and elk hunting, even though my last GF dumped me over it, but, like, she was so gross, she was 30, ew. Oh, like, dating girls in your 30s. It's a nightmare, because once a girl turns 30, Which, she's worthless in the eyes of civilization. When you, when you get that... That many references to it, you're like, uh, writers, I'm sorry, you couldn't who hurt you, you know? Like, I, well, yeah. Cause, yeah, I mean, what else is this? It's just bleeding in. I didn't get, I didn't, the, is the elk hunting and the UFOs is supposed to be like a Joe Rogan thing. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's so random. Like, is elk hunting a big crypto thing? I've never heard that before. <laughs> like, I hunt the elk with my cryptocurrency. So, here's the evil vision cancel She Hulk. We yes, are the web, still there, yeah. She Hulk should be cancelled. She discriminates against anyone she doesn't who doesn't share her pathetic man hating worldview. If she were a man, she would be cancelled already. Think about it. The question: oh, they're they're what, are the, what are they referring to, though? Like the fact no that she like detected. knocked a guy, like Titania, into a guy and gave him a concussion. Oh, is that what it is? Well, then they'd be right. Yeah, that's, that's wait. Not. No, this is. This is in Slash Cars. I just want to point out that's Wait, the what? subthread that it's in. So they're really just pissed off about the car she smashed into. or the No, wait, that was Mr. Immortal. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I can't figure it out. I yeah, because Why cars. the fuck is it Slash Cars? <laughs> like, and why is Slash cars, cars? Why is that the number one thing on there? Because the trending channels are She-Hulk, Images, Heroes, Movies, Memes. But the number one viewed thing, the it's top cars. post is Cars. <laughs> What? <laughs> What's the deep cutting joke? I don't understand. Deep but yeah, so you don't know who you're making fun of. So this is the thing. Consider all the episodes you've seen. What do the public know about She Hulk? It's like, well, she saved a bunch of people from being killed by Titania. It's like, all right, what else? Mm -hmm. It's like, um, well, she's had a few cases you could be considered pretty public where she's had to stop a crazy magician from ending the world. Um, she got that uh, guy released from prison. She's, yeah, with Blonsky, she got him on his parole, She um, and she sought out a trademark against... So, like, you could say that she stopped... Uh, I, I guess, like, what... She she represented men and defeated women in court. This one, I, I was about to summarize it that way, pretty much. It's like, what do you mean she's man-hating? Like, where are you... Because she kind of... She says some really cringe shit, but those scenes were private. Like, they're not... They're not so, like, in this world, what are they trying to cancel her for? Because she's a woman. Yeah, being a woman. But, but like, the, this, so this is where it gets to be like, just, oh, this is just cringe. Because, like, you do Why would they. They wouldn't hate her yet. She hasn't said anything publicly that's, like, really stupid. Like, or, or even can be interpreted one direction or the other. She's barely got a public presence at all. So, why. Yeah, is there a website equivalent of this for Black Widow? Or was there when she was alive? What about a uh, Gamora or. Um, the Black Widow site was way hotter. <laughs> these. I was about to say, like, every, all of them, right? Is, why is it only She-Hulk that's getting this treatment? There's loads well, of female heroes in that, now. In that one scene, uh, we saw about two or three Black Widows. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Good. I oh, like man. that. Thank you. Why is their logo a Hulk with a crown? I'm not sure. Hulk is king and they like Hulk, Hulk they don't like She-Hulk. But when you like were Hulk, it's not just that one but thing. you still dumb, and then her eyes are crossed out. That's a really great meme. That's a death threat. Okay. I don't, that's it. Our heroes, yeah. or, or I guess the equivalent of the that's heroes. The separate. I, that's a meme from the boys. 
No, it is. Yeah, these are the corporate memes. They don't know how they work. They, they, they've seen memes, but they don't know how to make them. They're like, when you were Hulk, but you stupid, and then show a picture. <laughs> we did it. Um, okay. I didn't realize memes were so difficult. So the next post, someone just shoot She-Hulk. Why hasn't anyone just done this? It's not that complicated, bro. Kill the bitch already so we can move on. I'm so sick of hearing about this bitch. Yeah, that's really, that's... I it mean, seems excessive. <laughs> I just... Why do they want to kill accurate. her so much? What's going on? Why has she annoyed anybody? She doesn't do anything. Also, how do you shoot She-Hulk? Well, the same way you shoot with a else. gun, obviously. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> idiot. So we got some more guilty memes. Of, guilty of dressing like a man, that's true. Oh, when you were Hulk, but you're still dumb. <laughs> they did that one already, but they thought it was such a banger, they repeated it. <laughs> they're so clever. Wants Once, equality, still wants you to pay for dinner. Yeah. True. Got him. That's a good true point. That. Where's yoga pants? Mad when you look. Oof. Yeah. So this, Where did this she wear site, yoga pants? I don't know. How do we SWAT She-Hulk? Do standard police weapons kill her? Can we just SWAT her and get rid of her? Eight reasons why She-Hulk needs to die. How do we kill She-Hulk? What the fuck is going on? These people, I've, like, I've heard of swatting. I've heard they, of that. They, they think that on like re some place like Reddit, there's just all these public death threats against <laughs> these celebrities or something. Incredibly that's just, popular like, one posts. Away to see, like, killing this fuck? woman that no one knows anything about. Like what, what, thousands I, of upvotes. Like what the fuck? Like I said, if she had said something publicly that was super controversial, I could maybe understand crazy people posting this. But like, I just don't get it. Why are they so angry at her and not anyone else? Eleven thousand upvotes. I, I know, get. Right? Wow, it's very popular. How do you keep this a secret? Uh, but, uh, yeah, I guess it's just because she's a woman. That's the angle that the show's going for. Yeah, if She-Hulk and the real Hulk got into a fight, the Hulk would totally kick her butt. No questions there. Yes, the people talking about murdering her would say kick her butt. <laughs> but it's, it's also true as we watched. Like, that, that actually happened in what the you... show. That Hulk, Hulk pieced her up. Um... In the first episode, they got in their fight at the end. Did she win? I thought, if anything, when there was comparisons of their abilities, like, she outclapped him. Um, she managed to, yeah. like, beat him. Well, with no, a she had to do a, a bunch of little claps to beat his one big clap. Yeah, but... I he, guess it was a draw in the end, maybe? I, I suppose, yeah. You, well, we couldn't say that one is stronger than the other, necessarily. I, I interpreted that he wasn't trying, really, at all, to hurt her. Which, well, you should have interpreted as they've nerfed I mean, he them, throws okay. a rock into, like, space. <laughs> what makes you think <laughs> like she can't do that, you <laughs> sexist? Should have thrown her into space, space and <laughs> saved us from this damn show. Could have saved yeah, her. Hulk could have been the hero. But he chose to be the villain by letting her live. Um, so it goes oh, yeah, on. He was, he was the bigger man, okay? The bigger it, go, it goes on and says, I don't know what I'd even do if I saw them fighting, though, lol. I might have to get in the ring with them and beat up She-Hulk myself, because she's not even strong. <laughs> so how old is the person who wrote that? Like, it was old? me. It was me. Sorry, guys. It was me. <laughs> Good God, it's so embarrassing. I guess uh, that's what they're going for. But they, they, they were embarrassed. They made these characters embarrassing, but not in the way that they no. wanted. See, this is the thing. You probably thought I meant in universe. How old was the character that wrote it? But I'm actually asking, how old is the writer? Oh, thirty-eight so, yeah. with. With 15 cats. So they're like, don't tell her about intelligentsia, it's scary. And then she's like, I won't, and then does. Nice. Because uh, there's death threats and it's all, it's all spooky. Wait, but then, the scene where she tells her, it's, she's not talking to anybody. Well, she's, she's in the car. She's her answer machine, I thought it was the idea. Yeah, it's a voicemail. Oh, oh okay. An idiot rags. Pay attention, this is she home. Yeah, I... I don't understand technology. I saw her driving, and I assume that's all she could be doing with technology. technology. Um, so yeah, uh, they're, they're eating chips, her and uh, Guy, and then it turns out they're being watched by an evil organization, which is why, by the way, I think that he could be evil. He could line up. But it's his camera or something. I don't know. But, uh, I mean, he only has one IMDb credit, though. I see. So, yeah. Uh, the, the, they're planning on injecting her with the old... I guess, vibranium syringe to get her blood. And that is the end of the episode. Thank God. I do like the very comical radioactive sticker on the box. <laughs> well, how else are they supposed to know? 
It looks like they got it at the dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure you understand. Look at all the bubbles underneath it. They probably did just slap that on right before just they hit record. Like, mm. So, we are caught up to She-Hulk, which we will not be in literally... Actually, right now, I think? I think the mm -hmm. newest, newest episode comes out like right now. So, so much for staying ahead. Yeah. So much for staying ahead, huh? Well, I'm going to run off to watch it immediately. Oh, of course, dude. Oh, my God. I it might be Daredevil's episode. Yeah. Daredevil. Probably not, though, if that clip was any indication. It'd be something else. Abomination episode. Again. Right, yeah, that's actually a good point. Probably. Yeah. So, Daredevil's probably eight. And then you have your bombastic finale with some really cool action scenes. Abomination wow. throws Daredevil, uh, and they team. They wouldn't things. Nah. Avengers. With writing in this show, they might. Da, 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 da. Well, they might save Daredevil to be like the very end, like the season two teaser. Daredevil's gonna be in it. Nah, Ooh. he'll have like a whole episode. You think? Okay. Yeah, there's enough stuff in those trailers that indicates that he'd be like an episode, like that'd be a whole episode with him. Mm -hmm. So, I, I imagine that they'll bring him back if they can. Because, I mean, again, they Wait, know that there's a good chunk of people who'll be watching it just to see him. Yeah, they're, they're as aware of it as we are. Dude, after the Grace Randolph thing, it's just over. We lost. <laughs> it's we done. did lose. Yeah, that the, it's like, man, there were no Easter eggs in Andor, so, like, I'm not really sure, like, who this is going to be. How am I supposed to? to talk about a show with no Easter eggs? Yeah, how am I supposed yeah. to give a shit about a and show? And for those of you who are complaining here. about this... Like, for those of you who are upset about this, remember, in in Rogue One, there was an Easter egg. It was the Death Star. It's not like that was just the plot. That was an <laughs> Easter egg. That's an Easter ruined. egg. The discourse on media is ruined. It's ruined, as Stewie would say. Ruined. ruined. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, ruined. A sad, rough experience but hey we we got through both episodes and and a summary of it which i think came to six hours by the way so nice uh, was there anything there's anything only we didn't left. mention that either sitch or rikita want to talk about hmm? Hmm? From uh no i mean i i got hung up a long time ago on just the the lunatic depictions that <laughs> they have of that they caricaturize women worse than i could and and like I have a pretty good imagination, but they they exceeded it. <laughs> and Nothing then, the, and then the and then the like the way they 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 picture men and uh, and and the interactions with them. It's like here you have you you set this guy up as this quality guy, and then you're like shitting on him two seconds later when he's like, hey, we had a nice time, but you know I'm not super into this aspect of you, which you completely did not tell me about up until just now. Um, but I, ho I hope everything goes well for you. And it's like, what a piece of shit that guy is. It's like, Jesus, woman. You just completely he lied to him. like our protagonist. He's a fucker. Yeah. And all, all of these people are terrible. Like, all of the women in the show are terrible and insufferable. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get how you can, like, write a pro-female show and actually have it be this terrible. Yeah, and I really wouldn't want to champion it. You want to? You, this is one of those ones where you're just like, just, just let, let, let go, this guys. one go. Yeah, let mm -hmm. this one fucking go. This is a fuck up. Um, it will not be looked at back upon fondly. Do you think it'll get a season two? People won't rewatch it. Yeah, I, I could see that happening. I think it'll get a season. I two. could also see it happening, which makes me sad. Yeah, yeah, I guess nowadays. I don't anything. know that anything needs to be that successful, right? As long as it retains subscribers, that's the most important part. Well, well, the good news is Reacher. Them, them, I guess. Reacher got a season two, so that's actual good news. There are some good things out there. Remember that. Well, it's not all on fire. The slog through the sh the sea of shit to find the the couple gems. Yeah. Hey, like, you know, I know they ring, shoot rings of power, right? Everyone's liking that. Oh, jeez. That's true. That's true. That show's really great. I right, really like. Are you excited um, for us to break that down in a couple of days? Take even no, I'm really not. I mean, as you can tell, right? Me, yeah, it is going to take longer, and this was already pretty fucking painful. <laughs> have you, have like, you guys watched the new episodes yet? I haven't seen six. Yeah, I've seen five. Six is out tomorrow, right? Oh, wait. No, I haven't seen five, and then six is tomorrow, so I need to watch 
yet. Oh, I have to yeah. I have to see them both. So woohoo! Yeah, don't worry. I can I, I can watch them again with your eyes. I gotta do my notations. Hooray! Yeah. It makes it easier. It's you're like alcohol. It makes the. I, mean, I will better. say, in a sense, Rings of Power has been getting more interesting to talk about. The worse it's getting as a show. <laughs> yeah um, well it has that. been getting worse so in a sense yeah that does make it whereas like she hulk is a pretty painful show i gotta say i uh i really don't like it I, it's frustrating i enjoy rings of power's badness more than i enjoy she Hulk's um, badness. i i would say that i enjoy rings of uh power's badness more, but rings I, of I, rings of I was hulk? about to say rings of hulk yeah um but <laughs> i think um I mean, I, I think Rings of Power is boring. I've said that. I find it pretty yeah. boring. Yeah. Uh, but the longer it's gone on, the more it's started to sort of have problems that are, I guess, like... It's it's beginning to contradict itself more because it's established more. So that it, there's more to talk about. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would say that both of these shows are very hollow and vacuous and don't need to... Like, they're both... They're both vacuous, but in different ways with... With uh, Rings of Power, it's like they didn't have a story they wanted to tell, but they needed to tell a story anyway. And with She-Hulk, it's like you have nothing to say, really. What you've created is utterly vapid, and nobody's going to rewatch it. It will come, and then it will go, and then that's that's like the end of it. It'll, it won't be talked about fondly. Mm -hmm. It won't be rewatched. It will it it is it is perhaps like... The, the, the Marvel stuff has reached a new level of disposability that they didn't even have before. Um which I think they've had for a while in terms of disposability, but like Thor Love and Thunder and this in particular are just incredibly disposable. They just exist to like satiate you for some period and then and then it's gone, but you're yeah, not really expected like to have a lasting... Yeah, it is. It, it's like, it'll tide you over and keep you, ideally, right, for the Marvel, will keep you invested enough in Marvel, that you'll continue to, you know, pay to watch the movies and retain your Disney Plus subscription. But as for any lasting, people rewatch Iron Man. People rewatch Avengers and Guardians. Guardians. Of Galaxy, yeah. um, I mean, obviously, we have a perspective on the Winter Soldier, but people do rewatch the Winter Soldier. People rewatch the older films, but I don't see anybody just on a day going, man, you know what would be really cool to rewatch? Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. <laughs> or, you know what TV show I'd really like to give another spin? Loki. I just don't see it. Um, and and I, good art endures, but like nothing that's being made endures because it's not, it's not really the purpose it serves. The purpose is to be as... as... Uh, gripping but not in a positive way as attention grabbing uh as it needs to be to serve the purpose that it has right now and once that's over who cares and it's uh it's it's really damaging the uh the material Goodness i can't imagine watching i can't imagine watching that show <laughs> at all <laughs> right oh loki after what we said yeah well loki and and rings of power like Either oh god, it's such yeah, a great it's um, buffet waiting for you. We, but I mean, it's it's a nice little contrast when you got House of the Dragon that is a, a story with characters oh, and careful. and or at least based on the what. Bitch isn't a fan. Are you not? <laughs> we you were in the car, Wolf, Frankie. We talking about. <laughs> I I don't think I'd watched the show by when no, you no, were critical. No, no, no. I mean, I mean you. You were literally in that call with me and Muller when we were arguing. Oh, about right. Yeah. But when was that? What episode were we up to? Uh, I don't know. What was it? Episode three at that point? I think three. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, now I remember. Yeah. That's true. But we'll, now that we're six more, we got three more episodes. We're double the way further in. How do you feel about my, it? My feeling is the same as it's always been. It's an okay show that I think is propped up by how bad Rings of Power is. Nah. I think it's a meh to okay. We don't need to have that okay. conversation. Well, uh, this, is, this is one of the times where I was sent several messages about how bad your House of the Dragon takes were, and I was like, is this a lie or is this true? And then I checked the VOD and lots of the comments were about how you and Adam are wrong, so that means uh -huh. it's true, okay? Something that had wrong. been pretty painful, what? though, as somebody who likes that show is, I've noticed on Twitter it's like, man, the discourse surrounding that show just kind of baffles me. I feel like we're not well, watching the same show. Well, I will say that a lot of my mehness about House of Dragons, it's not that it's 
like a bad well there's some there's some giant fuck ups i think that i we, we didn't talk about because it wasn't out yet like uh you know Kristen cole beating a guy to death in front of everyone and everyone's fine with it but mostly my madness about it is i just i want a character that i either can root for or find interesting enough to watch and i just don't i don't get that so you don't you don't root for for Cirrus? you don't like you know, like, oh, well, man, he's going to die. So, I mean, I don't know well, what everybody's going to do. Like, that, like, what? I don't know if we want to uh, table it for another time, possibly. Yeah, yeah I, I, guess sure. we, I guess we'll we should, evolve. But... Uh, but hey, I mean, you know, it just makes sense that Andal's the only mm-hmm. other one we haven't really said anything about. There's a fourth episode out. We'll, we'll, we haven't seen yes, that yet. We're checking that out. Yeah, I want to check it out. You and Adam hate that. I as want well, to check right? it so, out. Uh, I like the concept of like the beginning of it, but then I'm, I feel like it's just going to go, I feel like it's going to become terrible. I like, I like in the beginning how not star Wars it feels, but it now feels like it's just going to be all like, Oh, you have to join the rebellion and fight the empire for the 20 billionth time. And it's just, it's, we've seen this all like a million times. I don't need another, I don't need a, a prequel for a prequel essentially. I not super thrilled with those arguments. <laughs> Do you like it? You know what? You know what, Sitch? It's, well, it's, it's we're we're glad. You I, it seems like it's uh, yeah, more complaints about it conceptually rather than like what it is, and also like to some extent, I guess judging it like it it almost can't exist as it is because there are other stories that are bad that try to do what it wants to do. Wait, wait, wait okay, hold on. Wait, so are you guys liked? It? I was I was told you guys hated it, so I was. Oh, who no, told you that? Cause, cause no, we like okay, I like Adam it. lied to me. Because uh, like it's it. really funny. Um, Everyone's lying. Because we actually, other. me and I have gotten a long argument. Because because basically, I watched it and I was like, oh, you know, there's things I liked about it, but overall, I thought it was okay. And then he he like pointed out all these flaws in it that made me like it less. And he was like, oh, everyone's saying it's terrible. You know, I was okay. listening to all these people. So, Wait, well, I've been what, tricked. What you pointed out what such as I'm curious because they're um, all they're all okay. Well, like like one of the like one of the one of the big ones is. Um, you know, when uh, they're they're in the third episode, when the cops are like, they just randomly arrest the girlfriend for no reason. Like the entire town is running away from them. And this guy's like, oh, this girl, she's running away from us. Arrest her for no reason. Oh, yeah, while sure. comrades we, are uh, dying. And then her idiot yeah. boyfriend just basically commits suicide by cop for no reason. Uh, yeah, that's that's um, yeah, we I'm pretty sure we all agree on that one. <laughs> no, I mean, the uh, things I liked about I liked that I liked in the beginning. I liked the beginning a lot in that. Um, First of all, I like that it was like a weird cyberpunk city that didn't feel very Star Warsy. I like that there's like this weird Star Wars sex brothel, which I didn't expect to see on a Disney Plus show. And I liked how the I liked it's the inciting incident enough a lot. you could show it to kids. They just think it's a right. bar. What is the conceptually like? But I liked the inciting. I liked his first fight because when it first starts to happen, I thought, oh, you know, this is just gonna be the other scene in the movie or the TV show where. The bad guy gets to beat up, or the good guy gets to beat up the asshole guys in the bars to show that he's a badass. But then it subverts that because it's like, nope, he accidentally kills this guy, and then the other guy's pleading for his life and he shoots him in the face. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is this is a refreshing. This is not what I would have expected in a Star Wars show. But I just he liked it. It wasn't even a dead woman, and he liked it. That's I know, good. but I'm just I, I'm worried because then when they have Skarsgård come in and he's all like, you have to join the rebellion. You know, it's like, oh, like I like the things that are not star Wars about it. And it feels like it's going into all the star Wars crap in the future. That's I that's the empire and the rebellion might... are literally like unavoidable with a character whose destination is joining the rebellion and fighting the empire. I know. Cause it's a prequel. I know. I know. But, but what I'm suggesting also, is like, that's not cause it sounds, it's like Grace Randolph where she's like, I want random bullshit no. thrown in that star Wars. The, the stuff that they can get away with, I think, is the stuff that should be there. The Empire should uh, be mentioned, you know, and the resistance no, we'll has say, to come maybe, out. Maybe, uh, maybe table because Rakita, you you have to, uh, you gotta, you must, you need to depart. Well, I do. Like, yeah, that's not even I badly also... timed because uh, the EFAP is going to have to end for several reasons at this point anyway. So, oh, yeah, so okay. I think it lines up. Um. Well, you know what? Well, yeah, the, the first thing I'd probably want to do is say, hey, Rikita, thank you so much for joining us and for being a fabulous guest, and I apologize. It's been so long since I managed to get you on here. Oh, well. Regrettable. Thank you for having me on here, and uh, as a makeup for penance for not having me on sooner, just have me on again. Well, I was going to say, are you interested in coming on to cover the remaining three episodes of She-Hulk? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a monkey's pull, yeah. Uh yeah, probably. Just let me let me know. Uh I guess I'd be in a couple like what, three, four weeks, something I'll, like um, that. Um I'll be able to send you a message before tomorrow about what day it'll be. I'll figure it out uh calendar wise. I just gotta figure out when the episodes are out by then. I would be I would be down in theory. So as long as the scheduling works out, man, uh, count me. Yeah, oh, well, you shall exchange DMs. But before you go, do you want to quickly tell people why they should run over to your channel and subscribe and listen, gleam and flume? Everybody who's here likes things that take forever. Uh, that's <laughs> what I do every single night. I do uh, live streams from eleven p.m. Not tonight. Uh, but 11 p.m. Central Time to 2 a.m. Central Time at the minimum. Sometimes they go, you know, till 3, 4, 5, 6 in the morning. <laughs> it really just depends on the subjects and the guests. But uh, we talk law, we talk culture, we talk politics, we talk uh, humanity, and we have a lot of jokes and laughs. So if you're into that type of stuff, come check it out. Sweet. Well... Um, I guess as well, Sitch, do you want to, do you want to mention what you're in and up to before? I yeah, everyone knows what I'm about here. He has awful media takes and cringe wow. politics takes. As, as you can see, as you've just witnessed, he has terrible Sitch, you know what, when they you say... Can, I, I just put up my indoor video today. You can watch it and cry about it. I we can never. talk about it yeah, at some stage. Yeah, yeah we can hold you accountable. For the things that you've said about the show. We will punish you for your takes eventually. Uh -huh. It's going to happen. Uh -huh. Unless you line up and I'm, I don't I'm know, curious, for whatever I'm reason. Curious, I mean, I guess we're out of time. I'm curious to what you guys like about it then. Because it feels like you like sure. different things about it than I liked. But Maybe. Maybe. But I'm sure we'll get around to it eventually. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, all right. I'll try and get your uh, your link in the description as well for the re-upload. I'm going to try and stitch these things together, I think, at this point. Uh, Rags, Frank, is there anything you guys wanted to say? Not, uh, no, no, I don't think so. Well, don't all right. have anything yet, nah. Um, it's a little unfortunate that we are once again adding to the backlog, but as EFAP fans will know, you've been getting almost a, a lot more episodes recently because we had a lot more things to cover, which is ill-timed of all times of the year to do because I've had loads of extra work to do with getting the Halloween stuff in motion. And that's on top of the fact that I want to do my... My yearly like spooky game stream as well as I want to play all the God of Wars before Ragnarok comes out. I've got all this I'm trying to build this giant calendar that I can apply all of these things to as well as just getting on with regular stuff. So um, Wednesdays, I think that was the last Wednesday additional EFAP, but I could be wrong about that. I'll have to check the, uh, the calendar, but you know, Wednesdays will turn back into us trying to catch up on Super Chats now. Um, but I've got them all saved, and we will definitely get to all of them. We will catch up again. It's going to happen. Uh, maybe this time it'll stay that way for a little longer than a day. But, um, yeah, we're going to head out at this point. Thank you all so much for keeping us company, for the kind donations, and for, of course, the, the back and forth about good old She-Hulk, a legendary show that we, like I said, we got three episodes left. And once they're out, well, we'll see you again. Until then, goodbye, everybody, and good night. Goodbye. See you later. See ya. Peace. See you later. Bye -bye. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs>